Hello, I'm Grandmaster Alejandro Ramirez here to give you the action of Game 5 of the World Championship match between Magnus Carlsen and Jan Nepomniachtchi. Today was a game where the challenger definitely had his chances, but a couple of inaccuracies did not allow him to fully convert. Let's jump in the action and see what happened. Today's game started again with the Spanish. Jan remains faithful to a system that's given him some good positions. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, a6, bishop a4, knight f6, castles, bishop e7, rook e1, b5, bishop b3, castles, and a4. And so far we're following the game three match between these two players and it is actually slightly surprising that it was Magnus Carlsen that decided to deviate before his opponent. The normal lines in this position run along the moves b4 and bishop b7 and they're certainly the most popular moves. Bishop b7 was the one that Magnus essayed a couple of games ago. It was a bit surprising that he chose a different path and that he chose a path which is relatively untrodden. Rook b8 is a move that the world champion has employed before. He used it against none other than Jean Christophe Duda in the World Cup game of this year. However, uh, despite getting that draw, it was surprising that Magnus was able to repeat this variation considering the fact that a lot of engines did not really appreciate the move Rook b8 and because it would no longer come as a surprise to his rival as of course he had used it recently. However, after rook b8, Jan did not seem surprised at all. He very quickly blitzed out a takes b5, a takes b5, and h3. And it is very likely that this is the move that Magnus didn't really fully consider in his preparation. Previously, we've seen variations with the move c3, after which Magnus has played the move d5, takes, takes, knight takes e5, knight takes e5, rook takes e5, and c6. Again, with this kind of martial gambit type of compensation in which it's true that black is down a pawn, but you can see that the development that white has on the queen side is less than satisfactory and very quickly black can try to play something along the lines of bishop d6 and queen h4 and start pressuring on the king side. Now is this full compensation that still remains to be seen, but Jan was not interested in this at all. Instead, he played the move h3, which is a typical anti-martial move in another move order. If you go back to the position here after castles, many players no longer try the move c3 because after d5, pawn takes, knight takes, we get to the martial gambit that has been essayed over and over and over again through dozens and dozens of years. And the current theoretical debate has more or less ended with the result being that black is fully okay. In that scenario, after castles, many people try the move h3 simply to avoid a martial gambit. And in this case, after inserting the moves a4, rook b8, takes, takes, h3, this makes, again, a lot of sense. The sacrifices with d5 don't really make as much, as many waves as in the other variations, simply because you will have access to the move knight c3 later on, and this is a much more harmonious way of developing for white. Therefore, after h3, Magnus played the more sedate move d6, but this didn't stop Jan from blitzing his moves. c3, quickly Magnus played b4, d3, and this is a curious little move. I like this in the Spanish, that you have the ability to play something a slightly more positional with the move d3, or try to go for the throat with the move d4 right away, trying to expand on the, kick on the center immediately, pushing the pawn twice, or two squares. But in this case, I think the move d3 is actually a little bit more dangerous. The reason is that this bishop on e7 is actually rather bad when the queen side opens. In many variations of the closed Spanish, it doesn't really matter that the bishop on e7 can't transfer over to the queen side. But because in this kind of positions, the queen side is opening so quickly, it's going to be a difference that's very, very felt. If you play the move d4, instead of playing on the queen side, you're more essaying an attack in the center, and in the case, the bishop on e7 might have a more useful role, especially if you imagine that the pawns on e5 get traded. For this reason, and for some tactical issues as well, the move d3 is superior in my opinion, and after pawn takes c3, pawn takes c3, the world champion had a decision to make. He can no longer just develop normally, because his pieces are actually rather bad. This knight on c6 is very heavily controlled by this pawn on c3. You can see that the pawn takes 
care of this knight's activity. And unlike the Chigorin, you cannot put the knight on a5 because the rook on a1 would simply take it. And unlike the Briar, you cannot retreat the knight to b8 and then maneuver it to d7 because you already put your rook on b8. So this knight on c6, it's a little bit of an issue. You kind of have to solve it at some point. And if you play something normal, let's say with like rook e8 and bishop f8, you'll be running into issues immediately. Rook e8, bishop a4 in many cases will be quite annoying. And white has very harmonious development in this position. He simply wants to play the knight to d2, maybe to f1 and e3, or he wants to develop the bishop to e3 at some point. And for this reason, Magnus decides, okay, I need to solve the problem with the bishop. I am going to break in the center with a move d5, which I think is well-timed, but does not fully solve Black's problems, as we we're about to see. Nepo was unfazed by this decision and is still played quickly. Knight bd2, after which Magnus replied with the logical sequence, d takes e4, d takes e4, and bishop d6. This bishop is an interesting one. It's more or less a big pawn. All it does is really defend the pawn chain. But on the other hand, it does solidify Black's position, which is not an ambitious one at all. Black simply is sitting back saying, my position is solid, you're not gonna be able to rip it apart anytime soon. I don't need to go crazy, I don't need to activate all of my pieces. I'm going to be more or less okay. However, I think that the issue in this position, as I was talking with Grandmaster Hans Niemann about, is actually the bishop on b3. This bishop on b3 is rather powerful on this diagonal, and it's very difficult for black to challenge it. We'll see that black would love to play a move like queen e7 and bishop b6, but it's not going to be trivial to do so. Let's see how Nepo tries to squeeze this position out. I believe that he has already a very, very small advantage in this position, simply because of the fact that his pieces are more active. The bishop on b3 is better than its counterpart, the bishop on d6 is more or less a big pawn, and black is playing for being absolutely solid more than for any kind of counterplay. After the move queen c2, h6 was played, which is a very logical move. You can't really allow this knight to come to g5 in the variations where black decides to put a rook on e8. And now the maneuvers. Knight f1, I think, is a great move. And in this particular position, the engines were showing equality. And I was very surprised about that. Why were they showing equality in this position? And it was an absolutely, to me, stunning way of removing this bishop from b3. I was having trouble trying to figure out a way for black to defend this, uh, this square on e6 for the bishops to get traded. For example, a move like queen e7 can be met with simply knight e3, bishop e6, and already after knight d5 or even knight f5, black's position becomes extremely awkward. There's no good way of capturing the knight because pawn takes d5 will come with a tempo, the knight doesn't have a good retreat square, and e5 will be targetable. So, I thought the black was worse here, but the engines come up with a very clever plan. Since the e-file is not a very convenient way for black to exchange these bishops, whether with queen e7 or rook e8 or queen e8, the engines are suggesting is that put the bishop on d7, put the queen on c8, and then, and only then, put the bishop on e6. The queen on c8 is actually much better placed because it's not as vulnerable to this rook on e1 in the case that uh, the e-file opens up, and it also, in many cases, hints at a sacrifice on h3, which in many cases might be enough to hold a draw by forcing a perpetual. Bishop d7 would have been a great move, but it's no surprise that Carlsen wasn't really able to find it, and instead plays a logical move. I was talking earlier about the problems of this knight on c6, and he decides to solve it immediately. Knight e7, knight g3, and knight g6. The knight transfers to the king side and is now in a position where he can put pressure on his opponent by playing the move knight f4. However, it's not easy to execute this move because this bishop is always eyeing this square and there will be a follow-up, although maybe not immediate, of the move e5. Bishop e3 was played, simply removing the bishop from the last rank, and queen e8 is an important move. The reason? Again, Carlsen needs to exchange this bishop on the light squares, and he's preparing to do so. He plays move queen e8 with the idea of bishop e6, and I think that this was a critical moment of the game. Jan Nepomniac, he certainly thought that he had a small edge in this position, or at least an edge, and he must have tried to figure out the best way to continue and keep that pressure up. I think it would have been really important for him to keep this bishop on d3 alive and not allow Magnus to challenge it immediately. There's a couple of ways to do so, but I think the most pressing one was with the move c4. 
The move c4 immediately puts pressure on black's position, intending something along the lines of the move c5, which after which the bishop doesn't have too many retreat squares. And in the case that black challenges the control of that square by putting his own pawn on c5, he runs into a couple of issues. The move bishop a4 would be very dangerous in this position. Now that this pawn and this pawn are here, it's very a different scenario. You don't want to trade bishops with the, dark, uh, with the black pieces because if you go bishop d7 and I trade, the knight could come to f5, the d5 square is weak, the rook will be coming to d1 and then pressuring down on this, da on this file and things would start to look really ugly for the black side. Not to mention, the bishop on d6 really does not appreciate the move c5. And if the queen moves to e7, then this bishop maneuvers to c6 where it would jump to the d5 protected square. Difficult for black to ever take it and claim equality and white is simply in the driver's seat. You can compare the power of a bishop on d5 compared to the lame bishop on d6. Instead of that, Jan, I think, was unable to really appreciate the position fully and play the move rook ed1, which is certainly an inaccuracy. After this move, black is able to exchange the light squares bishops, and although he retains a very passive position, it's still a very holdable one. After bishop e6, bishop a4, bishop d7, Jan spent a lot of time here trying to figure out a way to continue, trying to figure out a way to put pressure on his opponent. And even though it's certainly a position in which every grandmaster would prefer to be white, why? Because you have a little bit more adva uh, space advantage, the knight is coming to f5, uh, the pieces flow more naturally. It's difficult to say exactly where the penetration squares are going to be or what the huge difference between piece activity is going to be. And indeed, after the move knight b2, which was played after a long thing, bishop takes a4, queen takes a4, queen takes a4, rook takes a4, it was like a vacuum cleaner came to the board. A lot of pieces have left, the space advantage is less significant, and Carlsen had no problem defending this position. It is certainly true that he's still under pressure. The bishop on d6 is not as good as his counterpart on e3, and the weakness on e5 and c7 are certainly easier to reach than the weaknesses, or let's call them weaknesses, on c3 and e4. But this isn't really an issue. After the move rook a8, exchanging even more pieces, Rook a1, rook takes, rook takes, rook b8. Carlson simply appro uh, approached this position as if he was in a, a turtle, simply just going into his shell and saying, you're not gonna get me, and it worked perfectly. Rook a6, knight e8, king f1, and knight f8. And look at how he's playing. Knights all the way back, no shame in putting the pieces on the last rank, but it's impossible to penetrate in this position. The bishop on d6 is solidly defended. It's really a bastion of protection. It's defending c7 and e5. The knight is maneuvering to e6, where it's going to have a really nice square, controlling c5, controlling f4. And even though after knight f5, knight e6, knight c4, white's position looks menacing, there are no really concrete threats. The rook comes to d8, again, solidifying this bishop, and slowly Carlson is going to come out of that shell. He's gonna play the move f6, he's gonna play the move king f7, and eventually he will be ready to use the rook in an active fashion. And indeed, that's more or less what happens. Nepo tries to expand on the king side with f3, f6, g4, king f7, h4. But it doesn't really accomplish very much. The move g5, which is a natural break, does nothing at all, and it's very difficult to execute. As, a, as soon as you put the pawn there, black will be happy to take twice. So Carlson simply retreats his bishop to f8, removing it from the vulnerable square. It is not needed neither to defend the pawn on e5 anymore, as that is the job of the f6 pawn, nor to defend the pawn on c7, because the knights are very solidly defending on that square. So after king e2, even the move knight d6, removing the final knight from the back rank, Simplify the position further, knight c takes d6 check, bishop takes d6, and now if you take on d6, basically white runs out of pieces. There aren't enough pieces to put any kind of pressure in this position, so Nepo at least tried to move h5, making sure that this is a permanent weakness on g7 that can be attacked by the knight on f5, but it's simply insufficient. There, is not, there are not enough pieces to create any real problems. White, uh, black's pieces on f7 and e6 basically solidify the entire king side, and there's no way to make any kind of progress. 
after the move, bishop f8, although visually white's position is preferable, the truth is that this is just an equal endgame, and Magnus simply activates his final move, uh, rook with a rook a5, king e8, rook d5, and rook a8. Coming down on the a file, uh, trying to harass the white king, trying to get behind the pawns, and by this point, it's obvious that the game is going to end in a draw. And indeed, it did with a threefold repetition after rook d1, rook a2 check, rook d2, rook a1, rook d1, rook a2 check, rook d2, rook a1, and finally, again, rook d1. I would say that both teams are going to be slightly unhappy with today's game. Certainly, Team Carlsen cannot be happy that, uh, that Demponiacci was able to get a position where his opponent was pressured, where he had the space advantage, where he had the more pleasant game, that if anyone was going to be better, it was white. On the other hand, Team Nepo must feel that this was a good chance to put real pressure on the world champion, but it didn't feel like he was in real danger at any point, and that most of the chances were left on the analysis board rather than on the real board. Certainly, Magnus happier with the draw, and with a rest day coming up, it'll be interesting to see how Team Carlsen tries to solve the problems in the real Lopez that he surely will face three days from now. We'll see what happens then. Until then, let's enjoy the rest day. It's Expo 2020, the world is here as well. If everybody in the world loved everybody in the world, what a glorious world this could be. It's the culture, it's the music, the artwork. If it's the people. Deutschland by now. This could be. I was just looking for myself, and then Expo came, and it makes me emotional. This Come on and join us. A new world has just begun, and it's right here at Expo. Hello everybody, it's live broadcast from Dubai Exhibition Center. I'm Grandmaster Anna Muzicu here with five-time world champion Vishwanathan Anand and we are about to start commentating on game six of the world championship match between the world champion Magnus Carlsen and the challenger Yanni Pomish. Vichy, what are your expectations for today? Hi, thanks Anna. So, we had a rest day yesterday 
Yeah, and it was good. <laughs> yes, uh, I think for the commentators it was especially nice, but uh, I'm sure the participants were tired also. Uh, Magnus gets one more shot at as wide. He suffered a little bit with in the fifth game. Um, some critical moments and some moments where he had to defend passively. He joked at the end he only made two active moves in the whole game. Rook two, Rook one. Rook two and Rook one. And uh, so hopefully there's a little bit of wounded pride there and he wants to uh, put uh, some pressure on Jan today. Make uh, Even if he's not sure if he wins, at least make Jan work very hard. And this is important because in a match, you don't want the trend to go against you. Sometimes uh, before you actually lose, you will have several difficult games. So it's important to fight this trend. And Magnus is as experienced as anyone. And he knows that uh, uh, he's got to put some pressure today. Hopefully they've come up with something interesting because Jan's openings have been very good so far. Uh, I don't see an obvious way to break through, but uh, there hopefully, is no obvious way I hopefully they have found uh, some interesting idea to try. Um, it's a guessing game because you don't know what will work. Uh, something which you think might work might be unsuccessful. Something else which you didn't expect to work might work. You never know, but you've got to try every day. And that's what they're going to do today. It's like during the match, it's always like that. Yes, sometimes you surprise your opponent, but sometimes you are surprised. And uh, well, as for the match, new openings are prepared, like uh, Nepo prepared Petrov, mm -hmm. uh, which he didn't play so often. And also the Catalan we had in the previous game where Magnus had uh, white pieces. Not like in the previous game, but in his first game with white pieces. And uh, yeah, I don't know what to expect today. I am more leaning towards, uh, I think... Uh, Magnus will try d4 or c4, some closed openings, not e4. Uh, but we will see, uh, we will know this, the answer to this question very soon, so we will see which first move Magnus will make. Uh, here we have the view of the play and how really beautiful venue of the championship and uh, the photographer, they're already <laughs> waiting. Yes, they're all swarming over there already and they're waiting in the cabin because they will have to be, have to leave the... Uh, playing area uh, after five minutes. Yeah, or I don't know if it's 10 minutes, but they have to leave pretty soon. So they want to maximize every minute. Oh, yeah, that's a very reasonable and very, very logical. Uh, so, um, and what about your expectations, E4 or D4? I, I think D4, C4, Knight of 3, something in that direction. Some unusual... Uh, Something to change the course of battle because Jan's super, I mean, really well prepared. And um, Magnus has this big advantage. Like some players, uh, he's able to play e4, d4, c4 equally. Jan is able to play c4, but I still feel it's his second opening behind e4. Yeah, I think he plays, he it plays like English three times less, fre less frequently than, than e4. e4. Right. But for Magnus, so it's it's still, not the case. Magnus, totally the same, so he can punch in every direction. And uh, that's his big advantage. He should at least try it today. We shall have good news for today. Just look at the screen and uh, we are already live also in the playing hall, not only here. I think ah, it's good, good news. Yes, uh, hopefully we can um, make them hear something. I am not sure they can actually hear us, but if they do, hello to, to all the viewers who are watching us in the plane. Oh, they actually, they waved us. Ah, so they, they waved, good. <laughs> no, but I think the, the, ca the it should be soundproof in the <laughs> inside, but anyway. Yeah, I hope the player, they don't hear us because we, right. sometimes you come up if with If the photographer waves, then something is wrong. <laughs> so. Yeah, sometimes our ideas are interesting and promising, but sometimes we are also like a little bit blundering. Yes. So, uh, let's see. Uh, the game is about to start. Uh, usually the game starts at uh, 4.30 uh, local time. And uh, before that, there is always an introducing of the players. Mm -hmm. Morris Ashley is doing it in a fantastic way, introducing the world champion and the challenger. And the players are coming like the real stars. I really like it. How about you? Yes, very much. And Morris uh, is a pro. He's been doing this in all the St. Louis events, I can remember, in many world championships. Um, he used to do a lot of the Intel Grand Prix. So he has a lots and lots of experience doing this. And he tries very hard to bring in styles of introduction from other sports. So, you know, he's out there and uh, trying to make it very exciting. It's uh, very nice to see him.
Yeah, moreover, from this championship, uh, he's always making uh, videos for NBC. You may easily find it by Googling in YouTube, just uh, uh, write uh, chess NBC. And after each game, there is a very interesting and insightful recap. So I really recommend you watching that. Did you see any of this? Yes, I saw a few. And uh, uh, again, it's they make it from a different time perspective. We are more live. They do it in a different way, but nonetheless, uh, it, it's all like watching the match from uh, in a time machine, and that's very nice. Yeah, also, of course, in the Fidi Chess YouTube channel, uh, it's maybe even easier way to find it. And one more recommendation for you is the videos made by uh, Alejandro Ramirez. They are also very interesting ones, and uh, he's talking directly about the game. If we compare the videos, it's like NBC videos are more about the atmosphere, mm -hmm. about how the players feel, some parts from the press conferences. But uh, when you're watching the uh, when you're watching Alejandro's videos, you can also see them before the stream starts. Uh, they're about the game and uh, like the most interesting, the most critical moments are covered there. And uh, I also like them very much. Yes, he summarizes everything. So he takes all the uh, confusion uh, while the game is going on, distills it into a final thing and says, this is what happened. <laughs> then you get the final verdict. and. That's a nice uh, video to wrap up with. So if you don't have time to watch our coverage for five hours or so, you can just uh, choose a 20 minute uh, recap by, Alexand uh, by, by you Alejandro. You know you're not supposed to say that, right? Uh, yeah, but <laughs> I think it's just uh, a nice thing and I yeah. really like these videos. Uh, so it's just a few minutes before the start, maybe I think just one minute before uh, Morris introduces the players. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and I'm really yes, waiting it be a minute now. for the start of the game. We'll see him walk in there to the center with his mic, and then <laughs> we'll hear what he's saying. It will be Magnus' third game with the uh, white pieces. In the first one, he chose d4, and it was Catalan. In the second one, he opted for e4, and it was Petrov. Uh, but so far, I have the feeling that uh, Jan is putting very serious problems on him. In my opinion, Jan is dominating a little bit right at the moment. I, I partially agree. I don't think it's by much, but if the direction of play has been more favorable to Jan so far, um, and uh, that's why I feel it's important for Magnus to set that right. At least put some, uh, present some real problems, make him ha work hard, make him sweat. He, it's, he's got to hit back because generally in a match as one person feels more and more comfortable it gets easier for them so you want to avoid that yeah, because it's like one game you're under pressure and it's like okay i survived and second game you're under pressure but you're getting more more and more tired after a couple of games yes. if you have to to defend and uh, yeah magnus defended in a brilliant way especially the last game i think he had real problems uh but yeah luckily for him he managed to escape so, yeah, it's also like Jan had three whites and uh, Magnus, Magnus had only two, so it was a disadvantage for him. So let's see how he will do today. Uh, I know that usually Jan is coming something like 20 minutes before the start of the game and Magnus comes much later. He, he just arrives and he's basically going to the playing hall. Uh, how was it for you? Did you use... Oh, actually, we can see Magnus is already over the board waiting for his opponent. Uh, but uh, how was it for you? Uh, how much in advance you prefer to come before uh, the start of the game? In all, in all the matches where I stayed away from the uh, venue, uh, which is the majority of them, I would leave the hotel half an hour before to allow for traffic and other things mm -hmm. so that I would arrive in the venue 15 minutes before. Perfect. Then whatever security check, whatever you have to do, uh, I would be in my cabin by 10 minutes before at least. And uh, my wife would wish me luck 15 minutes before. <laughs> I'd go to my cabin and then I'm alone. No team, no nobody. And then and you sit there, you just let your mind wander and then the game starts. You go. So. Uh, we got an update that uh, Maurice is starting, so... Uh, Your Excellency, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Maurice Ashley, and it is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to Game 6 of the FIDE World Championship Dubai 2021 
between world champion Magnus Carlsen and the challenger Jan Nepomnesi. It has been a terrific match so far. The score is tied at two and a half points each, and we expect a tremendous battle today. To introduce the players, first, with the white pieces, from Norway, world champion Magnus Carlsen. And playing with the black pieces, from Russia, the challenger, Jan Nepomnesci. We have some special guests with us. First of all, the, pres the president of FIDE, Arkady Dvorakovic. And two special guests accompanying him. First, the governor of the Hantimansisk Autonomous Region, Natalia Komarova. Apparently, she will not be accompanying us, but she is there in the VIP suite. So instead, we will introduce from Moscow, the host city of the 2022 Olympiad. A few surprises. Looks like some novelties. Welcome, Natalia. From Moscow, the host of the 2022 Olympiad, the mayor of Moscow, Sergei Sobyanin. And the mayor will have the honor of playing the first move. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And with that, let the game begin. And the game has started, and uh, D4, D4 was the first move, more or less uh, what we predicted, mm -hmm. Knight of Six. Uh, Knight of Three. Oh, we're going to see some London today. Or maybe at, what is it, uh, Neo Trompovsky, if you don't do it on the first move. Like Bishop E6, G5. E6, Bishop G5 well, on the third move. I, I, normally, Bishop G5 would be the Trompovsky, but if you play Knight of Three first, then, well, you can always attach Neo to any name to make it work. London, no, Catalan. No, okay, three. good. So how long he will postpone with C4? Yeah, that is the interesting question, but it's not relevant against Magnus's current repertoire. Sorry, against Ian's current repertoire. So what we are referring to is if black went here, white went here, and black committed bishop e7, white could play the Catalan. Without allowing bishop But e4. without allowing a couple of side variations. However, since Ian is going to play bishop e7 anyway, or we think he is, this move order isn't that powerful against it, but nonetheless, it's interesting. However, Magnus is offering Ian the possibility to broaden the scope of battle. For instance, in this particular move order, this move is quite reasonable to get the bishop out. Um, he could also play c5 if he wanted. So uh, g3 is kind of also giving black the choice to go back G6. to the Grunfeld, which would be whatever, the Fianchetto symmetrical Grunfeld. I'm out of names already. But anyway, Magnus has played g3 and is giving Jan the possibility to go anywhere. Usually, when you give someone too many options, it's just you're not really desperate to get one of them. So, I don't want to overstate this point, but um, it's not like Magnus has some knockout idea in one or the other. Look at Jan's face expression. <laughs> it's like, what do you want with this move order? 
Yes. Is there anything else he could do after e6? Uh, bishop g2, bishop e7, maybe b3 first or... Well, it doesn't make sense, right? I don't think any of those moves are particularly good. Well, he can castle, uh, but after a castle, castle, I don't know if he can do anything besides c4. Yes. B3 is a very distant second. After B3, After maybe C5 can be tried? B6 or C5. I see people even experimenting with A5. So, lots of things, yeah. G3. <laughs> but Jan is taking his time, so uh, that's a bit surprising. Maybe he's just thinking, uh, what, what's, what's Magnus' idea? Why didn't he play C4 immediately? Yes. Essentially, he's move ordering him from lines which he doesn't want to do anyway, or didn't want to do anyway in game two. So, kind of a mystery why he goes for this particular move order. Or maybe, actually, Jan was going to play some line, not bishop e7, but let's say bishop e4 or d takes e4 earlier. Uh, then it's not clear what he should do. Yes. And already we have the first move. Jan is taking off his jacket, which he normally Third does move. later in the Third game. <laughs> it's quite early this time. And it's the sign of what? <laughs> I'll tell you after the game. <laughs> Depends on how it ends. Yeah. <laughs> but nonetheless, Magnus is clearly doing something with a new move order, so it's worth, it's worth your while to put in two or three minutes. Just think of your options. And... Uh, but it is interesting that if Magnus was desperate to lure him into a Catalan, he would not give him so many choices. He's telling Jan you can go here or there if you want and saying, I think it's pretty clear that Jan is not going to play the Grunfeld in under any circumstances now. He's prepared. After E6, you're not going to play No, <laughs> but uh, he had the chance to play G6 yes. and he didn't want to. So. so E6, Bishop G2, Bishop E7, Castle, Castle, and if we see C4... It would be the transposition to the mm, uh, to the game they uh, had uh, a couple of rounds before, like uh, the game too. By the way, I used to play this move. Sorry, this is that's a terrible move. I used to play castles. Uh, here, I have tried this move. Just a second. It seems like to stop C4. B3. Okay, I used to ah, play this move mm -hmm. to stop uh, B3. I mean, to stop C4. But um, apparently you can play uh, castles, castles. Is it B3 is done? He has gone B3. So we were just speculating whether this is the thing, but we said it's very infrequent. Let's see. It's like he's going for a long battle. Not really he's trying to get uh, some serious advantage out of the opening. He's not going for sharp line. And uh, he played B3... Yeah, it's just some way to, to get the play in position. Yes, Magnus is just looking for a, He's looking to play a game of chess without uh, highly specific theoretical targets. Uh, even his move order, you can go here, but you can go elsewhere. You know, feel, uh, feel free to do anything you want. I think he just wants to play a game of chess. That's one luxury of being uh, having the white pieces, that uh, even if you don't get the advantage, you still get a game. That's one luxury of being the world champion and knowing a lot of systems like uh, where it can be good, where it can be bad, and how that can we well. tr transpose to, that to each well, other yes. if needed. Uh, Jan replied pretty fast to a C5. Well, B3 is a serious line. I mean, it's not very common, but uh, uh, even uh, I recall doing some prep for it, so... I think Kramnik was a fan of such setups. Yes. Not exactly in this position, but in a similar positions. If you if you can't remember who has played an opening, you can usually say Kramnik. <laughs> He'll have at least one game there, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> that, that's a good tip, I would say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Safe choice. Yeah. Useful name to drop in. I think Kramnik <laughs> played this once in some rapid tournament. Should cover you for almost any eventuality. You're out of danger. You can't go around the same. Nope. Okay, Kramnik played it. <laughs> <laughs> blitz is even better. He played it in some blitz tournament. It's but even better. But you know, we don't have so many rapid in the blitz tournaments comparing to the classical ones. So I'm not sure like saying he played it in the blitz is safer than saying he played no, it. No, it is very safe, I think. Uh, <laughs> if you look at 
Look, if you if you take World Rapid and Blitz, where you essentially play what um, uh, 21 plus uh, 15, 36 games, okay, we'll and play then you we'll take uh, all the three ch Grand Chess Tour events, which are <laughs> but he's not playing there. <laughs> no, but he plays at least one of them. But the point is, the number of Rapid and Blitz games every year is at least 100 or two, given all these uh, events. And in the pandemic, it's so it's almost 80 percent. Online is included in the list. Yeah, of course. We can count it. When you look, at these are real tournaments with uh, you know real uh, stakes. Yeah. So people will use the best openings. Okay, what happened in the game? D takes C5, bishop takes C5, and C4 now. Opening the diagonal for the G2 bishop, which is uh, the best piece uh, in white's camp in this position. Okay, so why is he doing it this way? Imagine that he went bishop B2. Black played knight c6, and you played c4 here. Black could play d4. And, well, it's a kind of position, but it's easier for black to play e5 and so on. However, in the order that Magnus is doing it, which is c4, if you play d4, then white has this move, which is a serious extra option. He may also choose to play either after knight e5 or... I think he could play bishop a3 maybe. So there are a couple of extra options for white. Maybe even b4 here, just as an additional option. I think it's better to do it here than when the knight is on c6. Mm -hmm. And b4 is also. So c4. But then what happens? If I go knight c6, does White really have an extra option. If I capture this, then I think black can capture with the pawn. This is called the Tarash variation with the isolated central pawn. Uh, isolated because there are no pawns on either side of it. And um, most people don't like to get a Tarash, but I think this is one of the better ones because... Um, because instead of B3, because of usually people play C3, or people has, has, uh, Yeah, he has committed B3, and I don't think it'll be very helpful. Yeah, it's always good, good to make these comparisons between the openings, and the more you know, uh, the higher the chances are that uh, you will be able to compare them better. So here it all came from the Catalan, but now we are comparing uh, the lines in the, uh, in the terms Tarashev. difference. Uh, do you have games in the database? Like, at least in the one we have here? Well, I have included two moves, so let's step back a little bit. I've included three, in fact. And exactly here, there seem to be no games. But after knight uh, c6, let's see when the games re reappear. Nope. Maybe after c takes d5. Now e let's d5. Uh, let me make bishop b2. And oh, we have, have a lot of games. Nakamura Dominguez is one of them. So, if they don't, ap if mo if games don't appear, and then one move they they appear, you can say it's a transposition. They have come from a different move order, but essentially come back to the same position. So, presumably d4 is one of the main moves. D takes c4 is apparently the main move. Um, but if you go d4, let me look at uh, some stats and see if anything interesting is happening here. Honestly, I think black is doing great. If I play e5 and queen e7, let's say. Um, yeah, the bishop on b2. Maybe, as you say, maybe well they, they'll like just have to bite the bullet and play b4. Right now or after a3, a5. But I think better better to do it now if you want it. Yes, I think you want to have uh, these. So if black took here, for instance, white will take here. And then white's knight can come there and... Essentially, white is putting pressure on that pawn, which doesn't allow the bishop to develop very easily. Sometimes we can sacrifice it even maybe here with bishop d7. Mm -hmm. But uh, but we have to calculate all these lines to be sure that it's working. So c4 on the board. And uh, does Jan play Tarsh? I don't remember any of his games. I don't either, but um, you can play this kind of Tarash. 
Yeah, he can uh, easily it is, compare uh, that uh, this uh, this variation should be in his favor comparing to the main line. Yes, it's a shall we say it's a more limited variation because White has already pre-committed B3. Jan only has to decide: Am I okay with playing the the Tarash after B3? Whereas uh, if it was in the normal move order, then all of White's alternatives would have to be considered. Yeah, just a few seconds uh, before we had a very interesting angle where we could see that Jan was playing with his pawn. Yes. <laughs> Typical habit of chess players, of many of us. Sometimes I'm also doing that. Not since the beginning of the game, but uh, like w when it's closer to the end, then, <laughs> then I start. Yeah. I don't do it uh, because I have the feeling it will slip and fall down and I have to pick it up again. But anyway. <laughs> Is this the only reason you are not doing it? I never got never got into the habit of doing it. I remember Boris does it a lot. Uh, Boris Gelfand. Boris Gelfand. Uh, Vladimir Kramnik will sometimes keep some pieces and game, but he won't twirl it around. So each one has their own idiosyncratic. D takes C4 on the board. Okay, which is the main move after Knight C6, I think. But here is uh, D takes C4. We still don't have a transposition. So if White takes. There are some very solid ways to play. You could just go bishop d7. Then your bishop is threatening to come to c6. Um, Magnus didn't recapture back. He went queen c2. OK. I think that makes a lot of sense. Because as I mentioned, b takes c4, bishop d7 looks very solid to me. And here we are. So he doesn't want to change the pawn structure. He prefers to keep his pawn on b3, and this way the structure is better. As we don't have many islands, better to keep the pawns together than they are not that weak. But having the queen on c4 is a bit unusual, because uh, you're making a lot of moves with the queen uh, in the opening, and then, uh, uh, well, sometimes it can be easily attacked. So that's uh, a drawback. Let's try a few moves. What if I do? Bishop d7. What would you play? I can still postpone taking on c4. And go knight bd2. Yes, now after knight e5, maybe you have bishop d4. Mm -hmm. That's what I was hoping for. Even though you still have bishop b2. Yeah, it's not the, the end of the game, but, but it's uh, not what I wanted. Yeah. Okay, let's say you don't play bishop d7. What uh, are you looking at? Um, Okay, knight to six is just the usual way of developing. I think Probably I want to take here right away, because if I play knight pd2, maybe it gives you more time for other moves. Knight bd2, maybe I have time for e5. I mean, I don't know how long you can keep this going. You can play bishop b2. A very rich position. Again, it's dynamic. There's a lot of central tension. And you can easily be worse if you um, allow white to use that Catalan bishop, the one on g2. In case you're wondering, it's the, called the Catalan bishop or the Catalan opening because it was played in Barcelona at some point, somewhere in the 1920s, I think. Uh, in Life 1929, actually, yeah, ah. uh, the expo in Barcelona. <laughs> ah, that's right. Yes, so it was a Because expo after game move. two, a uh, famous uh, Spanish journalist. Uh, Garcia Leoncho, he actually mentioned that the first time Catalan was played, it was played by Savelle Tartkover, mm -hmm. and it was played uh, at the Expo in Barcelona. <laughs> so it was echoing from Expo Barcelona to Expo, where we are now in Dubai. Life was so good then, you could make a new <laughs> move on move four and get it named after you. And you now didn't you have to barely prepare for hours. For hours <laughs> and now I, I've spent so much time studying the Catalan and there's not a single Vishyanand variation. <laughs> <laughs> but 
again, I am very surprised at this position. We don't have any games here, and the players are playing so fast. They also prefer this one? Seems so. Maybe a double round, but it may, like he might have looked at this once, and uh, or it may have turned up in blitz games. So Jan remembers something. It could be any number of things. Um. Jan played queen e7, by the way. Mm -hmm. I think probably a good move. I don't know if you really want to invest a pawn with bishop b2 here. So I'm guessing White is going to take on c4. No, not yet. He's gone knight bd2 or what? Yeah, knight bd2. That's a whole pawn. For I mean, it can't. I don't think Black could have made such a big mistake to allow this. So that is. But let's investigate it. If Black takes on b3, knight b3. No, not knight b3. I'll just go to d6, won't I? And how do you get the compensation? I'm not promising you compensation. I'm just promising you <laughs> one or two moves. <laughs> but, but Magnus is promising us some compensation. Yes, I go bishop b2, I like think. No, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Actually, even here, if black plays e5, I don't really see what white has achieved. So maybe you're right, knight b3. But I thought knight b3, bishop d6, I slip away. And um, what's your knight doing on b3? I mean, normally there'd be a pawn on c4 and you can push it. But yeah, you've, <laughs> you've gone and blundered your pawn. <laughs> okay, wait. Uh, we play knight f to d4. We are pretending we didn't blunder that pawn. Should I play e5? And you go knight b5, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> That looks half serious. Um, <laughs> half I mean, serious? Well, I mean, I would like to play this, but what happens if you take and capture that? Now you're forking my bishop and my rook. You can play queen b7. Queen? queen b7. Ah, queen b7, you take and mind yeah. Okay. So, knight f d4, okay. I mean, I could make some move like this. Well, not being my top choice, it's at least it steps out of the way a bit. Maybe you can play knight a5 then. Just leaving your knight there to put some pressure. Now that I think about it, I want to see if I have any alternatives to bishop d6. Actually, I agree with you now. I think knight b3 uh, at least forces black to react on every move. It so continues the game somehow. Yes. <laughs> I think you're right. Knight b3. Bishop d6, I don't know, bishop b6 maybe, at least then it's out of the way. But then white can play a4. a4, that's what I wanted. And allows this one to also come e5 out there. maybe is coming, in or bishop b3. Uh, in the beginning I thought that you can play bishop d6, knight, uh, knight d4, and then knight c6, and uh, try to sweep mm -hmm. uh, all the pieces of the board. But the problem is that uh, I think that white can take once and then play knight, e knight a5. I mean, I would then do that. Or maybe you saw something else besides knight of five. To be honest, I was uh, thinking why not take here. If you go rook b8, then attack the bishop a little bit, rook d1. Just a little bit. Just <laughs> a light touch. <laughs> bishop e5? Uh... Ah, it kind of spoiled my idea of playing bishop uh, c5 somewhere. Maybe bishop e3. Take. No, 
shouldn't be enough. Rook B1, and then you, I think you're probably equalizing with Bishop B7, right? Yeah, that was like the main idea of Knight C6. You're trying to give the pawn back, but you're developing your C8 bishop. What was the biggest problem in this position? Oh, we're getting some light here. That's actually not so good because now it's blanking in my screen. <laughs> uh, this doesn't look easy to believe either. I think you just play queen c7 and what's going on. Sure, black may even be better. Possibly. So far, knight bd2 was the last move. Yeah, good question from Leonard. Uh, Magnus didn't leave the board after making his previous moves. So uh, do you think he has to readjust to this new type of the positions? I wouldn't say it's so new, but it's just another opening. Yes. I. I don't know if it's that significant a moment yet. I mean, if he doesn't leave his board uh, over the next few moves, then maybe we can draw more conclusions. But for the moment, uh, uh, feels kind of obsessive to wonder if that's significant. Sometimes when you make a move um, which leads to interesting play, you want to sit and get into the uh, feeling of... Uh, a normal, I mean, a real game where you're playing this idea and not just that you had it at home and trying to get into full concentration. There was no instant answer from Jan Nepomeshi and uh, finally Magnus decides, okay, yeah. <laughs> let's have some walk, yeah. stretching the legs. <laughs> I'm really curious for like how long they will keep on playing so fast. Because up to now, uh, well, Jan By spent the way, everyone, if you're wondering what the game actually looks like, that's it. <laughs> so we were deep <laughs> yeah, in our analysis, position. but this is the current position. Yeah, on the screen, uh, our viewers, they can see like what is the live. Uh, next to the live, this is the live board. Uh, the position that is uh, in the playing hall and on the bigger screen we have the position which we are analyzing and uh, just uh, try to understand the ideas behind the moves and uh, uh, show our own mm -hmm. <laughs> perception. <laughs> Not be two, no games in the database, no. so there was no transposition. And what else can it be? I would, well, b6 is not impossible. If black manages to play bishop b7, knight d7, black is already okay. Ah, wait. Here, I could do knight g5, bishop b7, and bishop b2, and suddenly you have a very awkward situation. Ah, oh, I, I, <laughs> I don't have time to play knight bd7. This is the problem. B6 looks risky to open this diagonal and you really have to calculate everything very, yeah. very precisely. So B6 um, runs into that. Something like Knight C6. By the way, what do you usually Did you play try? E5? I, I thought maybe I, if I maybe bishop d7, uh, but I wanted to ask like, well, here your opponent is sacrificing the pawn. He played 
all of it like very fast so you know he knows uh, he will know what uh, what will happen if you take it uh, so is it better like to take and to play according to your opponent's analysis or is it better to, to make just some random move and uh, step out of, uh, of all the preparation it depends how many good moves you can find in the position because um, it's unlikely that a person playing this line if Doesn't he has know checked anything. It, no, if he has checked it, that he has checked only the acceptance of the pawn. He would have checked yeah, three true. or four of the top continuations. If there are only two good continuations and the computer evaluates the others as worse, uh, you would even focus on those two so you'd know what to do against all the decent lines. And um, here it seems like there are some options. Like at, least from, nice at least from at least from Jan's reaction, I think it's uh, we can be optimistic that this is going to be interesting. Um, he he's, he's, he's normally he blitzing. Look so happy, yeah? No, he's normally blitzing, and in the Petrov he blitzed way in the uh, in until game the four. End. He blitzed almost till the end, and uh, I think we should be happy that he's thinking at all. It looks a bit similar to game two, where Magnus came mm -hmm. up with an interesting idea, very rare one, uh, which was knight to e knight to e5, eight more knight e5, and uh, here once again a very rare idea. But more or less, uh, it's always Magnus who who is first to surprise his opponent, and then it depends how the game goes. And then it depends <laughs> if Jan is surprised or not. <laughs> because yeah, like uh, the last game, game number five, uh, yeah, uh, Magnus surprised with rook b8. Well, kind of surprised because it's considered to be a sideline. Uh, but uh, Jan knew it very well. He was prepared, and he got a very comfortable position. Uh, better. And uh, it was just the question if uh, Magnus would manage to equalize uh, or not. Again, we see that all strategies are only good if you apply them a few times. So imagine that Jan now decides, hey, I don't have to check the main lines anymore. He's never going to play them. I'm only going to look at the sidelines. Then he's much better prepared for what Magnus is doing. So while you may think that you're surprising your opponent every time, um, always going off the beaten path, uh, Eventually, your opponent will relax too. I think I told you what uh, happens against me in Vasily. And also, I know that Levon had the same thing with Vasily. Vasily tries to surprise... Vasily Ivanchuk, by the way. He tries to surprise you every game in the hope that you have to work harder and harder to catch up. But of course, what did we all do? Swidler, Peter Swidler, Levon Aronian, myself. Uh, the day before we played uh, Vasily Ivanchuk was a rest day for us. We stopped <laughs> preparing. Levon would take a book and lie by the pool. I'd go for a nice walk. Because what's the point of preparing for a guy you'll never predict? So you enjoy yourself. So it doesn't I always tried, work. And I it. actually predicted some of the openings. We should have consulted you <laughs> then. <laughs> yeah, I played a couple of games against Asli Chuk, maybe, I don't know, five or six. And sometimes I was successful <laughs> with predicting the opening. That is very impressive. It's very hard to surprise uh, Vasily. Maybe because I think Vasily himself is surprised when the, the position finally appears on the board because he had no idea what he was aiming for before. He just comes to the board and thinks, I feel like doing this. It is one of the tragedies of the World Championship that Vasily didn't play one because uh, we would have had so much fun trying to predict what he wants to do next. And you know, I don't know who, but some top player many years ago, he said that... Uh, uh, in a match, it's uh, it's good to play one opening once. It comes like a surprise. Then you may repeat because uh, it's kind of maybe still a surprise as your opponent thought, okay, you played it once, maybe you'll play something else. But then it's not that great to play it uh, for the third time. But I think this trend is changing. In what way? That people... Uh, do not play the same opening more No, than that once? actually, yeah, with, with black, they do play the same opening mo mo more than three times. I mean, if they are comfortable, they can just uh, prepare one opening and just continue playing it uh, during the whole match. Yes. So he has, in fact, played knight c6. But that looks somewhat good to me because uh, then white has achieved this thing of capturing with... Uh, did we have it here? Something like that. Um, no, it was after uh, Queen e7, knight bishop. I understand, but suppose black played e5 now, we would get into the same thing. Seems like until uh, this very end, the very end. Yeah, yeah. So knight, yeah, this knight c6. Yeah. And then, I mean, maybe I could take, uh, we'll go with bishop b2, but let's assume that he goes uh, knight takes e4. Let's see Magnus' reaction first. Yeah. 
No reaction? Okay. <laughs> Let's try this. Let's uh, go down this and see what happens. Bishop b2. If you play e4, then I play knight g5. Then now I'm winning this pawn because you can never play this move because bishop takes f6 and then queen takes f7 mate. Mm -hmm. So you would, whichever piece you capture by, I'd simply take the pawn and give mate. So can this be played as a sacrifice suppose I did that what would happen oh then bishop a3 must be very strong okay let's uh, knight b4 maybe queen d2 is winning I don't know somehow it looks like all black pieces are, sta are starting yeah. to hang. I don't like it so much. I however. think this is the easiest. You just take your extra pawn and say thank you very much. Maybe there so. is even something stronger. Yes. Like, uh, I think I preferred queen d2. Bishop c5? Yeah, but... Uh, okay. So many no, my point is uh, we have minimum with a pawn and it shouldn't be worth... Uh, so if I can't play e4, what can I do? Maybe is this one of the positions where you play knight b4 first and then see where white moves? But I think the problem is queen b1 again, because of e4. Then we put the knight here. And the same attack on h7, because we have the bishop ready to remove a defender, and the queen and knight teaming up to attack the h7 square, so that e, po e pawn is going. And if this has happened, what are the plans are there? You can play bishop d7, but then it's a clear advantage for white, because this pawn is holding back Black's bishop is very passive because this pawn has not had a chance to move. And now I simply uh, play bishop b2. And this is slightly, slightly better. Clearly slightly better, whichever you prefer. But if black plays something like just rook a c8. Then a rook fd8, bishop e8, and some kind of rook rook. I think Wait a minute, rook d one wait a minute. Rook d one what do you play? Because if you do this, then this plan again, comes up again, right? G5. This move is so annoying. And if you ha play g6, then I, don't I can g6. take, take, and it's and huge, isn't it? It's going to go very bad for black. So you can't play rook d8. Maybe you have to play h6 or something. But then white has a nice grip on this e5 square. This pawn is never going to come up the board. So... Why is Jan so calm? What would he have after knight c4? Somehow I can't make e5 work, but I can't see what to do without it. Yes, not so easy. Maybe we can try e5, bishop b2, e4, and then uh, sacrifice this pawn. Let's try that. Bishop b2, e4. Let me go knight g5. How do you sacrifice the pawn, I guess? I thought about bishop f5. Mm -hmm. So giving the pawn, but then trying to get this bishop pair. Uh, but the problem may be that uh, after bishop f6, queen f6, you can take with the bishop. And I'll have to trade. Actually, I was oh thinking no, of taking with a pawn. Because if knight e4, rook e8 might be very good. But then I worried bishop. that um, uh, bishop e4 might work again. Knight d4, queen d3, yeah. True, fg5, I go bishop takes f5. Maybe knight e2 check and rook d8 somehow. I could actually start with knight e2 before fg5. I'm not sure I'm gaining something with that. <laughs> Just an option. Something like this, yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that might be the beginnings of an idea. Let's see if we can flesh this out a bit. So I play knight takes e4. 
How do you exploit the pen? You play knight d4? I think I have to do something active. But if I just do it directly with uh, rook e8. Is the second rook e8 now or rook e8 after knight d4 or after knight b4? Also, wait one second. One? Yes. <laughs> what about if I do this move? Knight e3, attacking that bishop for a second. No, that's not so funny. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, just well, after knight e4, I had some ideas, and then after knight e3. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see your idea after knight e4. What are you going for? Okay. Uh, hit me. Hit me with your idea. <laughs> so after rook e8, uh, there is knight cd2, and uh, I'm concerned that my bishop will be attacked. So I'm thinking how to do it that I play rook e8. Um, before we attack the bishop, so maybe, maybe instead of rook e8, mm -hmm. um, knight d4 first. Or? Yeah, knight d4 first. Okay, that has the advantage that my queen has to go here. So I play queen d3, and now. And now your great idea, yeah. <laughs> Which one? Maybe, maybe knight b4 instead of knight d4. Uh huh. Nothing to be done. I grovel. Oh, and are you winning material like this? Uh, first, I thought and about should I be concerned? What if yeah, I do I knight d6? I didn't want to take this exchange. Mm -hmm. I was going to play rook f8. Because, yeah, you win the exchange, but then uh, white is unpinning and all the light squares are weak and also white okay. has a pawn. Then for I go that. knight bd2. I protect my knight. Now the next one I can also already play queen b2 or queen c1. So maybe you shouldn't uh, be so kind and let me keep my exchange. Yeah, but it's better to, to play bishop d4 now than on the previous move, or am I mistaken? I don't know. Uh, you, you d uh, maybe knight d6 is quite unpleasant, or maybe I can just take this. Ah, you could take with the queen? No. Well, maybe yes. We went a bit far away. From where? From the truth. <laughs> Do you feel we are, we've lost the plot, Anna? I have the feeling Minus is not thinking <laughs> in this direction. But maybe he maybe he does. Look, I always said I enjoy sacrificing other people's pieces. So I'm gonna go with that. But let's get uh, let's just get back here and see. Is there any other plan we see? But it has to be bishop b2, right? I can't see an al alternative to bishop b2. I mean, I can play e3 maybe. Threatening bishop b2, but can but you then we just get a better version, right, with bishop f5. Okay, can we can we look at my brilliant knight e3 idea for a second? I thought bishop g5 idea, but you can first check yours. Bishop g5 here? After e5, bishop g5. e4. So if you capture, I want to take with the pawn and put the pawn here and say that I'm doing fine. Well, I can say it. But um, what will you do? Will you go knight of t2? Because in that case, I wanted to play knight d4. Of course, maybe you take here now. This is a kind of flag for what? Mm. 
also it seems to let's try this again e4 So knight e3 idea after knight g5 bishop f5 Then this move knight d3 maybe I think you have to take and hope that this uh, pawn compensates for your weaknesses. But I, I might be able to take and even come back knight h3. My first idea was to take with the rook and play queen c3, but then queen e5. Respect. On the other hand, maybe if I play queen. Yeah, I don't see anything yeah. after queen f5. This was the problem. Enough compensation, but whether you have more is uh, doubtful. Okay, let's take the pawn again. Uh, Magnus has played knight c4. Mm -hmm. So we're wondering whether Jan has looked at e5. But it would, if he has not prepared this, it would be strange to be charged into e5 because as we can see, there's a lot of complexity in the position. But you have a very promising opening in yes. terms of uh, getting an exciting game today. Actually, Magnus's strategy has paid off. I think he has gotten an interesting position, something which he can play. And look, he has every opportunity to prove that he's a better player. So this is what you try. that uh, You try to get an unbalanced position and show that uh, you cannot play your opponent. That's the dream anyway. And so far, Jan has always managed that very well, even when he's maybe surprised like game two. He's reacted well, calculated well. Let's see wh how it goes here. Yeah, in that game, he found a really nice plan was, uh, and a very nice defense was mm -hmm. queen d7, f uh, f6, queen d7. Uh, and he was even better. Yes. After, after a couple of moves. So let's see what he prepared here. Will he go for an active e5? Or will he try something mm, a bit more passive and uh, try to hold it this way? The problem way. is I think the passive ones are really passive. So, <laughs> But yesterday, uh, no, the day before yesterday, yesterday was the rest day, but the day, uh, the day before yesterday, uh, Magnus had a very passive position. Yes, by no means is passive bad, but um, this is passive very early on with, uh, which a po with a position where all the pieces can still do things. Magnus, by the time he got into a passive position, it was... <coughs> The only question was, can you bring any additional pieces? Because white's pawn structure and pieces are also kind of fixed. He didn't have a lot of... Uh, thing. Anyway, it was much later in the game. I think here, uh, at least we can look forward to a fantastic game. This is uh, very promising. So maybe let's go a few moves back. Why? I prefer to start from here. No, I'm <laughs> we'll go anywhere you want. Where do you want to go? <laughs> Just to the yeah, position we this have now. This is the actual position now. Knight C4. So we are here and we are wondering whether Jan will play e5 or not. Uh, also, after e5. So let me stop dancing one sec. Yeah. Bishop b2. If knight d4, just kind of crazy move, I take here, you capture. Then white has these extra moves like this, b4, attacking the bishop, bishop takes b4, bishop takes d4. I think knight d4 is a terrible move, but this is a good illustration of the uh, Catalan that these bishops uh, put pressure like that. The, uh, to be honest here, I think bishop e6 might just be fine for black, so maybe we should go rook fd1 or... Uh, yeah, rook fd1, rook d8, and then try to do something, knight a5 maybe. Or 
Can we try rook a c1? Threatening knight a5 if the need is, right? Uh, yeah, that's what I was going to do after bishop e6, but uh, what I was going to do after bishop g4, I don't know yet. <laughs> maybe still knight a5 works. Wait, maybe knight d4 is not such a terrible move after all. Let's uh, be sure about this before we... This knight d4 doesn't look convincing. No, it doesn't, but now try to refute it. And <laughs> suddenly it fights back. Especially against the engine. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, well, I'm not even, I'm not even going to ask the engine. It's going to spoil all our fun. Maybe let's try rook ac1. Because here in this line, um, if uh, bishop g4, knight a5, black can't take a uh, bishop e2. But I, I can do this anyway. Because I can just uh, play bishop d4 or bishop d6. No? Yeah. Don't say anything here. So how to do it? That's what I said. I mean, I started off saying knight d4 is a rubbish move, and suddenly I'm trying to prove it, and this is very hard. Um, Some ideas with e3. Yes. I could do e3, f e3, knight e3. Wait, let's try something else. Rook a d1. Okay, a rook d8. So you're just going to double the rooks? Or queen d1 or rook d1. If for example, bishop g4. Okay, let's try this. Yeah, it's always the question if we should play h3, bishop h5 yes. or not, because then there is additional idea of bishop g6. So, okay, the pawn is hanging. Because even though we are taking on e2, then we'll have problems with the b7 pawn. Wow. Then played b5. I saw that move, but I thought it's like b5, knight e5, <laughs> line <laughs> over. I must admit, I just uh, did not consider this move or take it seriously. Oh, just a second. There is a tweet from Erwin Lamy, a strong grandmaster from the Netherlands and the second of Anishgiri. And he writes a smart practical, practical choice by Nepo, not cut the not the capture or the sacrifice pawn. I think he intends to meet knight c4 with b5, knight c5, knight b4. That's actually what he did. b5 was played. And bishop b7 next. Uh, perhaps b queen b2. Maybe we can show this line on the board. So b5, knight c5, knight... And black simply steps away for a second. Knight... The queen runs away. Queen b2. b1, b2. And then uh, Lamy is suggesting this one. And I don't remember what it was. And I think uh, Elvin's point is you can drag the bishop here and see if that gives you something. Okay, let's try to digest all this stuff. Knight c5, knight b4. Let's 
Let's do queen b2, bishop b7. Is that necessary? But what an approach, b5. Well, the thing is, we were having difficulty finding a decent move here because the thing is, what are we going to do with that bishop? So we were trying to do it through e5, but then bishop b2 was putting a lot of pressure. By playing b5, uh, B5 is nice. So. Yeah, very good move, I feel. Mm -hmm. And if knight f to e5. I thought knight d4. Knight d4 and bishop b7. That's what I. If that works, that's great. Yeah. So knight c5, knight b4. Now, where can we step aside with our queen? We can go here. And yeah, after bishop g5, g6, now we can take on f6. Okay. But black well, takes with the pawn. G5 and six, yeah. So the difference is that the with the queen on b2, black could even capture with the queen. And uh, here, yeah, here black has to, to take with the pawn. Now it certainly looks good for black. Mm -hmm. I mean, at least it looks like a good solution to black's problems. And Lummi's idea is very specific. He wants to... Perhaps he even uh, checked it with the computer. So that if he did it with the engine... Yeah. The <laughs> But let's have some fun and figure out what's going on. If I do this, you take on G2? Take and check. But ah, you don't recapture. Correct. I want to do knight G4, let's say. Oh, then just a second. Could I do that after knight G5? Can I throw it that way? Am I amusing you nicely, Anna? <laughs> yes. Great, I'm so happy. <laughs> You're doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I take. And then I go knight g4. Uh, how many pieces I have? You're two pieces uh, no, up. No, no, not so many. Two pieces up. <laughs> You're a rock star. Maybe it's not enough against you. <laughs> Wait, can you do knight bd5 here? Yeah? Because if I take king g2, still can be pretending that everything is pinned, you have this move, queen b7. And you will have some discovered checks escaping from this line. And so if uh, you try okay, hang on. queen Let's try d2 bishop or... G2. Me. Oh, you think uh, it can go further here? It came very spontaneously, but, <laughs> but here it makes are. sense. I mean, you take on h6, take on f6, right? So let's try this lummy idea. There were some ideas of knight is real, bishop is. One second, hang on. I just want to try this. Bishop h4. Are you threatening to discover? What I mean is that if you go rook c8, 
then I'll do this. And using the pin to make more in more material. So what else is here? Could I play hit six? So we solved the bishop g5 problem, and we just want to play bishop b7 next move. It looks a bit strange. I mean, for black. Just working in everything and then playing h6. <laughs> yeah, but it shows the extreme. Um, I mean, we generated a lot of analysis here. But it just goes to show how, how hard this position is if you don't take extreme measures. You know, black does have to uh, take extreme measures. Of course, I don't know the evaluation and uh, uh, Magnus, but you can't. Ask, he couldn't have asked for a better position. It's a rich position, full of opportunities, and uh, Moreover, it looks like the trend is for, for white. It's a it's a nice position for white, and black seems to be the one going to extreme lengths, not to be worse. Um, and invariably, as you escalate, as you keep uh, making even more complicated solutions, if you compare this with the Petra, for instance, the moves there were very simple. But here, black is having to find very co creative solutions. And we can see that, uh, uh, at least for us, it's going to be a great game. I'm, and you hope what we for have seen, no, what we have, uh, yeah, I hope for this game. And what we have seen so far is only a, f uh, a portion of what could happen. We are going to have uh, lots of interesting lines today. Today is going to be a good day. And also, his opening choice was quite safe. I think he he doesn't risk much here. Knight c5 seems to me to be almost forced, but Magnus isn't playing it yet. So, what else is there? That could conceivably work. We briefly checked a knight f to e5. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else? Well, the knight is hanging after all. What about knight a3 is nonsense, of course. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see a better move than this. Queen and that before is also quite forced. Yes. No queen b2 or, or even queen b1. Queen b1. Then there is one interesting idea, which is bishop g5 hit 6, bishop. Uh, instead of bishop f6, what happens if I go bishop h4? Well, I think then black would even start with this move, forcing your knight back. Because if you took like this, I could play g5, and I get uh, this bishop and uh, for two, I get both bishops for a rook. So by taking on f3, I transfer the weight a bit, and then if you play knight f3, I could I could force you to I could call you a bluff, so to speak, with g5. But I can also simply develop my pieces and uh, bring the knight back and so on. And you think that this uh, bishop pair is not that dangerous here? Not with that one bishop sitting on h4. Uh, on h4 yeah, okay. I think that's the key. If the bishop was on b2, it's, it's a bishop a pair, story. but here it's quite likely that we'll be end up with actually opposite color bishops. <laughs> Seems to be more likely. Like so after bishop f6, mm -hmm. queen f6, correct. correct. We don't know Some what applause happened. here, <laughs> but I think we but can... Let's uh, take a nice uh, first break now. Because uh, and let's see what happened here. And see what happened as well. <laughs> but uh, 
uh, very nice uh, position. I, I'm sure Magnus will be now working quite hard for the next few minutes. So let's rejoin the game uh, in a few minutes and uh, uh, await developments. Okay, we are going for a short break. For a short break, and we will be back in a couple of minutes. Stay tuned.
and uh, welcome back everyone it's day six game six of the world championship match between magnus carlson and jan nepomyshi grandmasters anna mozichuk and vishwandan anand are here with you today and uh, we can see that magnus still hasn't made a move after b5 that's surprising yes um to, uh, to me it looks like knight c5 is almost the only real move seems like he has but just played uh, it Maybe he was waiting for us to come back from yes, the break. Exactly, he was waiting for the commentary to resume. <laughs> <laughs> but um, equally, sometimes you want to just get the whole variation in your head. Nobody <laughs> likes to play just the first move because oh, it's obvious and thing. But um, the game is getting very intense. And so he might have spent a few minutes working out what his next move is as well. Um, yeah, but again, so like I said, knight c5 is fairly obvious. He could have done it a tempo as well. So I think uh, he perhaps consider some other options. Maybe he checked knight f5 first. Is that possible? I thought about some ideas of sacrificing knight, like uh, bishop g5 or something of that kind, considering that there is uh, uh, there will be a pin after I b takes about c4, that, queen but c4, but I couldn't find it. I thought about this one idea, b, b, bishop b2, bc4, ah, bishop f6, my, uh, and, then the idea and was if queen f6, then you do queen takes c4, and uh, the pieces are pinned against each other. But the problem is, what do you do after gf6? Um, Anna wanted to do knight g5 here. Is that right? Uh, I just yeah. thought about that. I, I didn't react to that. And I, I think here the easiest is to play knight d4. Queen c4. Queen takes c4. That is a problem. Um, Maybe it's not a problem. Or is it knight d5? Ah, knight d5, yes. That is very nice. Because now when you take, you take and I take, this piece is hanging. Uh, night before was night the answer before. So they're both here. And we think queen b2. There are some arguments for queen b1, but we think uh, queen b2 is uh, likely the, the move to go. You don't want to block your bishop, so that rules out queen d2. And anyway, you'll just, you're walking into something with the uh, rook. D8, yeah. D8 it was somewhere. An so I think there are only two real moves, C3, I mean B2 and B1. And to me, B2 looks like the top move, so... If we want to put our bishop to G5, then Queen B2 looks more mm -hmm. reasonable to have the rooks connected? Yes, the only thing about queen b1 is that it keeps the pressure on h7. So some of these tactics with knight g5 and something could work there, but I don't see it here. Uh, let's let's just play around with it a bit anyway. Queen b2, what would you play? Bishop b7? Uh, you, you wanted queen b2 or queen b1? Queen b1. Let's just try this before we go back to queen b2, I said. So. Oh, okay. So we Bishop b7. Yeah, we discussed bishop b7. And if a3, maybe just a bishop uh, e4, intermezzo, forces the queen to b2 now. But now the knight can go here, maybe. Good for grouping. Mm -hmm. And now suddenly white is behind the development. Yeah. So I suspect it's going to be queen b2. And the question is, are you going to play bishop b7? Are you going to play h6? My idea was h6. Once I saw how many problems you have with bishop g5, so the idea was to step aside. And uh, well, bishop b7 looks more natural, but there was this idea of sacrificing on on g5. Yeah, if you go bishop b7, then we're pinning you. So I'm threatening knight g4. Magnus is back. It's a good sign that maybe we'll have a move soon. And then we considered uh, some crazy lines after h6, bishop h4, g5, and sacrifice on g5, all of that. Yes. But, but I think h6, bishop yeah, h4, this are the other idea was just to reduce the pressure on f6 by 
giving up the bishop is possible. Yes, Anna, I like the two knights. <laughs> it's just our joke because in almost every game he's just trying <laughs> to keep his knights and then uh, he just plays wonderful with them. <laughs> Taking so much care of the knights. Yeah, sorry, a little running joke between us, but anyway, here we are. It's actually not even a joke. Yeah, that's Many true. people Might are praising your knights. skills and uh, your uh, yeah, your knights maneuvers. Uh, did we check Bishop F3 here, or we just mentioned that uh, this is possible? I think we did some. Uh, was the queen uh, on in B1, queen B1, I we think. saw the line, but the same logic applies here. Because now, if bishop takes f3, then g5 and this bishop is trapped suddenly. What has Magnus played? Queen b2, okay. Something else he could do? Could he take on f6? Queen takes. Even g takes f6 is possible. Okay, we spell our pawn structure, but uh, but what did we get in return? <laughs> Some knight g4. Okay, okay wait a minute. Knight g7, knight g4, king g7. All right. Now, well, I'll play h5 there, right? But I wanted to see if I can um, attack. Basically, I have a free attack on your position, so I can do that. Yeah, I don't like it so much for black. And taking with the queen look, looked much safer. Yes, queen f6, and then the question is, can we do something clever here? Because I'm threatening knight d7, so I have that. But I'm pinned in the meantime, so if I can move my queen somewhere, then I have that move in the position. I don't think it's a3, because you will use the opportunity to exchange a pair of knights. So what could it be here? Maybe rook a c1, or queen c1? But queen c1, you have rook a c8. That looks nice enough. I think a knight d7, bishop f2 check works. Bishop b7 without h6. Okay. So it is bishop b7 now. I thought that if you play h6 first, maybe a3. Mm -hmm. And the question is kind of where to put the knight. Because uh, right now, after bishop b7, a3, you can go back with knight c6. Yeah, but uh, what was holding you back here? They started to play fast. <coughs> so Magnus has played a3, in fact. So he's a3. not interested in the other plan. He's just playing a3. He's not in interested in sacrificing his pieces. We are interested in sacrificing his pieces. He's not interested in sacrificing his pieces. Yeah, but actually bishop g5 is quite principal, but uh, bishop f3 might have taken the sting out of it. And uh, now what should he do? Knight bd5? I like knight c6. Mm -hmm. If uh, knight c6, bishop c6, mm -hmm. bishop g5. Head six. Take. And it was very interesting now <laughs> where we will play some rook hand game or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, we thought that this. Uh, that the bishops are bunched up on the C file, but in fact, black has an easy release <laughs> if bishop takes f3. So let's see if there's a better way to do this. And after rook c5? 
Oh, should we add her? Well, I have to take this. You will take. And let's say I play a6. Or maybe if I play rook fb8. Rook d1. Rook b7. Maybe white keeps something by putting the rook on d6 and, and just bringing the king up or something, yeah. Okay, let's see if I can do a better job here. What if I do rook a c8 or something? Doesn't look like white has achieved much. Actually, I liked Irvin's idea better, even though maybe it, it is possible. Maybe they don't work. Rook FC1. Rook FC1. Ah, but wait, Bishop F2 now. So maybe it simply nice doesn't work. Okay, I couldn't play Rook H1, so I thought maybe I can bring another Rook. That's a nice point. Because we take the check and take this. And when you take this, black can start with this and nothing is going wrong here. Yeah, and after Rook C6, uh, black takes Rook C6. And there is a check on C5 there. Uh, okay, so this is... No, like Knight G5, Rook C6. Yeah, black can even do this. Or this one, yeah, this one also the same. Because black has a check at the end. This is not going to happen. Rook AC8, this is where we are. And Jan looks pretty relaxed. So after a3, knight c6 is interesting. Let's see if knight bd5 is actually wrong. I mean, it black also has nice pieces. So why should it be wrong? Maybe his idea was to play bishop g5 here and then sacrifice on g5. So that he he keeps his G2 bishop alive. Mm. Admittedly, I thought I wanted to go. Uh, I can go h6, bishop h4, mm -hmm. and I thought I might want to step out like this, but then I see rook c1. But what about queen d6? Basically, that noise is from people playing a live chess game over there. But anyway. Maybe we can have another board here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but knight c6 is nice if you want to exchange a couple of pieces and... Uh, knight c6 is kind of easier. Yes. You have to calculate less. But if Jan believes uh, that... Uh, well, his position is at least not worse. Then he ju he can just keep on playing, and uh, after knight bd5, we have more pieces on the board. Okay, there are just two moves. I think we can agree on that. Yeah. <laughs> I think we will. He will not speak about knight d6. No. What would you prefer? Knight c6 looks slightly 
Uh, I mean, it looks like the direction I would choose as well. It's also a bit more predictable, right? Because when you're coming to the game and you're playing the match and uh, you're playing the game with black pieces, you're usually um, okay with making a draw. Right. And after knight c6, it's... Uh, it's likely. It's likely. It's a pity that bishop g5 was not played because then you could consider again all these interesting lines and tax sacrifices on g5. Yeah. Uh, and today I have quite many viewers and also many people playing on the yes. live. Yes. <laughs> the live board, yeah. Knight c6. Okay, so he has gone back here. What about the time situation? Well, it's more or less equal. Magnus has yes, seven minutes, seven minutes more, extra, but, but uh, doesn't say anything, nothing critical about it. Now it's really very complic uh, very difficult to, to complicate the position. Yes, but the disadvantage of the knight on c6 is I think if I go knight d3, where will you go, bishop b6 or d6? I thought about bishop d6. Maybe I can do something like this. Because these, uh, squ the square is quite loose. Mm -hmm. So if you played head 6 for instance, bishop takes f6, queen takes f6, queen takes f6, gf6 and maybe rook of c1 or uh, knight d2 first. And the knight is now threatening to come to e4, so you'll have to play f5. And maybe rook fc1 uh, is a solid edge for white or even b4 with the threat of uh, knight b3. So we can also, it doesn't have to be sacrificial. White can put pressure in, in a couple of ways here. So 93, I think, is a reasonable try. And if after bishop g6, bishop g5, black makes uh, some useful move, maybe uh, yeah, bring one of the rooks more toward the center. And apparently uh, there is one very interesting advertise and uh, let's watch this. Mm -hmm. So here we can see that it's official uh, store, online store of the World Chess Federation where you can buy different things related to this match. So there are pens. Uh, there are notebooks, uh, there are posters and many other things. I uh, just go to www.fideworldchampionship.com and uh, you will find uh, many of the merch. Yes, and uh, apparently for those of you in colder climates, even a scarf is possible. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see the scarf there. I saw mugs, I saw uh, chess boards, I believe, uh, shirts, of course. Uh, and... Uh, Ah, uh, yeah, there is a scarf. No, no there is conf confirmation. There is a scarf. So, pants, of course. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Okay, so knight d3. Still, what? I think, a decent advantage. Maybe the, uh, knight bd5 was... Uh, Again, what the question is, what happens if white plays knight d3? But here I think I'm better equipped to weather um, 
something coming on the C5 square because you're not able to exchange the knight on F6 so easily. So I could play here. If you went bishop G5, uh, sorry. Not that Bishop far. G5, Mouse yeah. slip. <laughs> Head six, bishop takes F6, knight takes F6. And black has solved this problem with the knight coming around, so. Suppose black went bishop b6. Yeah, let's try that. If you go bishop g5, let me play rook d8. I don't provoke you with head 6. I try to play knight d4 right away mm -hmm. so that I can exchange some pieces. So does that work? I think this is the best. Uh, this is a better way to to do that. My idea of putting the bishop on d6 was that after bishop g5, white uh, cannot play rook a c1 mm. because the pawn on a3. Uh, so will what a a Anna is indicating is that this will tie down white at least one of white spaces to the defense of this pawn. But uh, we now think this is where we are leaning right now. How is a4? I thought uh, you would take. And then I play rook a4. So that the rook might be able to do something there later. I have stopped knight d4 now for now. And uh, if you move the rook, I don't know, something like queen a1 and bishop a3 or bishop b2. I thought bishop g5 might be unpleasant. Maybe. But now I play h6 and then? Bishop h4. You're still at this. Bishop b6. He has gone bishop b6, so. Okay, after a4, b takes a4, rook a4. I thought that black might even play just h6. And then rook fd8, rook ac8. Well, okay, let's try h6. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you have to move your rook, I think, yeah. right? Because uh, bishop a3 is now a strong threat. So let's say you move there. I could do this or I could go here, kick your queen away, and then drop back to attack your knight. Yeah, queen a1 was a deep idea. Yeah. The problem is what happens after b4. Because somehow things have gotten committed now. My bishop, you will even follow up with a5 then. And this could be a serious advantage for black in the end game. Depends on... Who gets, if whether white gets to the fifth rank or black gets to the third rank. Uh, so, how would we deal with this? Maybe now we switch bishop back to this plan. You want to go bishop d2? But then I just play a5? Okay, and what I, which idea did you have was bishop g5? Just again, uh, if you do this, I take. And try to bring my knight to the square. But the question is what happens if bishop g5, rook fd8? Because if I take. You might just take and you're fine, right? So that's a pity with A4, B4. Okay, 
Maybe you can hear us, but we have lost uh, the screen for a minute, so I'm sure it's being fixed. Maybe the viewers can still see it, so ah. I'm just waiting <laughs> to know what's happening. And if A4, A6, how are you going to exploit it? Well, <laughs> maybe I should give up and go rook a2, queen a1 now. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit too much, just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. All right, so I can do it without this. I can try bishop g5. Because the reason I'm keen to eliminate this knight is I want this knight to be able to move then. And this is the square I'm fighting for. It reminds about Queen's Gambit uh, accepted. The so series or the opening? <laughs> the opening. Yes, what about the opening? No, just very often you have the C and D file open. Yes. And uh, from time to time, in uh, like there, uh, white is also fighting for the C file square. Yes. But I think here, if after rook fd8, I don't see very much. The problem is black is interrupting this plan of moving the knight by threatening knight d4 himself. So bishop b6. And Apparently uh, something was played because there was the click of the... Yes. try to find out by actually watching our own <laughs> stream just a second yeah so I, I don't see a good plan here for white 93 looked good but uh, if anything it seems to me that black is slightly more comfortable now what do you feel? Bishop g5, rook fd8 played. Okay. Look, Magnus could also make a solid move like this, rook ac1. 94. I don't know, to be honest. If I move the knight, you can take and queen b7 check. Yeah, and then on pennant. Or maybe even head 6 here. Yeah. Looks very nice for black. So bishop g5, rook f d8, and I'm actually starting to feel slightly uncomfortable for white now. Because I don't see what my next move is going to be. I started to like black's position after b5. I think even. b5 okay. was very strong. Yeah, b5 was powerful in knight b4, bishop b7, and stepping back. After bishop f6, are you going to take with the queen or with a pawn? Because That's a good point. I, I don't even need to take with the queen anymore, do I? I can even take with the pawn because I'm doing, uh, there is no kingside attack here. Yeah, because if you're taking with the pawn, then uh, you're controlling the c5 square better. Hmm. I mean, if I take with the pawn, then I think I want to do this and try to play e3 somehow. I don't think e5 is the move, but knight d4 could be a move. Even knight e5? Why? Why oh, I don't need that one. Okay. Yeah, then. 
No, uh, yes, as well, because you keep the option of bishop d4, right? Seems difficult for white to pose problems. Yes. Is Magnus worse now? I don't know the objective evaluation, but I'm having difficulty coming up. I don't think Magnus is really worse, but. Uh, if I had to evaluate, I would say that it's more or less equal. Mm -hmm. But uh, in practical terms, I'm <laughs> not able to come up with a good move, yeah. But then we come back, if we are like playing the game, then we come back to our hotel room and the engine is like, no, here you are wrong, there you are wrong. And <laughs> well, that's more or less a given these days. Even the even the good games you're proud of, they tell you you made a lot of mistakes. So, uh, But I, I think black has a very natural plan with knight d4 and uh, it's very hard for white to uh, stop that. Okay, bishop so Magnus has played? actually played bishop f6. Now we'll see right. if he wants to take with the pawn or the knight. Or the queen, sorry. So if he takes with the queen, then we trade the queen. So play rook c1 and knight c5, at least that's easy. It still looks uh, quite equal. Well, let's but see. But maybe g takes f6 is. is even more ambitious. Yeah. Let's say you go rook a c1. I can play knight a5, right? Asking you what you're doing here. I am going to not to give it to you. <laughs> Knight d2 maybe is possible. Uh, well, if I'm okay with the draw, then even knight c5 is possible. But if we want to continue the game, then yeah, knight d2 looks like a move to do. But knight c5... There's still some problems with that pawn. Yes. If we play b4, we are weakening the c4 square a lot. Somehow this just looks... And I think the fact that Magnus basically took the knight without any provocation suggests that uh, maybe Jan is just doing absolutely fine here. Magnus looks like as if he's not that very happy with his position. Not even happy at all. I think uh, he's had this realization that maybe his position is not that great and it, his plan has backfired. But where did he do, uh, where did he go wrong? If he did? I don't know. It's hard to tell right away because of the strategy of playing offbeat lines. Uh, suddenly, it can also go wrong very quickly. <laughs> so. so the first time he started to think was after knight c6 when white, uh, when black declined. Mm -hmm. Uh, the offer of the sacrifice pawn, and uh, well, just uh, just a few m moves after that, uh, it seems like black uh, black has a very comfortable position. Yeah, in fact, he is just taken. So now, let's see if he takes with the queen or the pawn. Both look quite decent to me. Um, but, but actually, if you take with the pawn, if I take, if I go rook a c1, what did you achieve? What did you achieve? I achieved that knight c5 is not a threat. <laughs> yeah, but let's say I play b4, or I go rook c2, rook c1. Uh, can I try some knight d4 again, or first rook a c8 and then uh, knight d4? I'm trying to protect this knight so that I can play e3. Um, that's the problem, this rook facing down this knight. On the other hand, if queen f6, queen f6, gf6, what would we play here? Maybe knight d2 is a good place to start because we stopped this uh, knight a5 and other stuff. But if you play rook a b8, I don't know what my next move is. 
I even thought about knight d4 for a second. Uh, like bishop b7, knight d2, and then rook b8. Yes. I think that is a problem. Because after bishop e4, you have this move f5. Mm -hmm. That is unpleasant indeed. Yeah, so that even doesn't work. I think it's possible to do it like this, rook ac1. Because of knight a5, there is knight d2. And black didn't achieve anything, so. I think it's a better version for white. Yeah. But how likely is it that uh, this game will not end in a draw? <laughs> <laughs> it does look like it does look like it does look like black has equalized, doesn't it? I think a few moves ago we were getting exciting with our own variation, excited with our own variations. But no, it's some sacrifice. Jan has been very clinical. I think good old No, actually it's Urban, Magnus who Urban, deviated Urban gave from our Bishop C5 hope. ideas. Urban gave us some false hope. But it's true that Bishop H4, Bishop F3 does seem to be a problem there. I saw the pin games, yeah. Like the small G5 and all the sacrifices. That was not, absolutely not necessary. Oh, there is another tweet from Fide. Have you noticed that Magnus Carlsen play plays his white games in a light suit and black games in a dark one. No. Wouldn't you do the opposite? <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, if there was a color combination, I haven't been paying attention. Uh, that's an interesting observation. I hadn't really picked up on that. But the colors matches better like when you're uh, changing them. Like if you're okay with white pieces, then dark suit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that I think. Well, basically... Oh, Yanis kept the queens. Okay. Oh, okay. And uh, how do you choose uh, your outfit for the game? How long does it take you? Or you just take it? You, you don't care at all? I don't... Well, usually my wife picks out something for me and that was it. So that was what I was doing when I was uh, playing these matches. But if you mean more recently, then I just... Open the closet, pick one out and go. But are there some clothes that you prefer more than the others? Yes, of course. I have my lucky shirts and so on. Uh, you have many of them. <laughs> it's tricky. Some are good, some are lucky, some are unlucky, and some have switched. Mm -hmm. They used to be lucky, and now they're unlucky. And <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you don't have this, this thought like, oh, what will I wear tomorrow? Because I have them, to be honest. <laughs> like, it's not like a, a, a one hour... <laughs> No, I, I have that problem Dilemma only for three what? minutes before I actually put something on. Three minutes? I don't think about it the previous day. What ah. am I going to wear tomorrow? What a time management. I'm more worried about what am I going to play tomorrow. So <laughs> that no, worries me more. No, for me, sometimes I think, like, okay, maybe I should wear this. Maybe I should iron that. Oh, maybe I, uh, maybe I should change. <laughs> so usually in the evening I decide, and then, and then in the morning I usually don't change my mind. Good for you. Yeah, good for me. I wish you could, we could do that with the openings as well. <laughs> you decide what we're oh, going no, to play and, and not change our no, minds. No, with the openings it can go different ways. Sometimes yes. I'm like, okay, in the evening I'm going to play this opening. And then in the morning I'm looking at the lines. <laughs> no, 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 not like that. Absolutely. Okay. Um, Rook A C one is a decent kind of move. Is Jan really going to play E five or something? Try to push White back. But it's a very interesting moment because he he kept the queens on the board. 
So maybe he's hoping for more than just equality. Montreal. GF6 and then... Um, Maybe knight f4. Mm -hmm. But then e5, actually, and you, your knight is getting pushed further and further. I was just wondering about this. Are you going to h3 or h5? Probably h5. <laughs> <huh>? <laughs> Probably h5. Rook c1. Yeah. And then if I do knight d4. I don't know. I wasn't sure of this. It's an extra option because you also ah, have knight d4. Sorry? No, then I thought like I can uh, pr protect, but well. Yeah, knight d4 was another problem, but uh, sorry, I think we've gotten the wrong one. And rook c1 has happened. Actually, there in that line, after knight f4, e5, knight h5, knight d4. You want to go knight h4? Uh, no, I thought about taking on d4 and playing queen c1, <laughs> queen h6. <laughs> that, might be <laughs> that might be just winning, actually. Yeah. Uh, no, but then, okay. The very least rook d6. Then I can play e4 and bishop e5 and e5. Or something. But at least too scary. <laughs> yes, well, it's you did succeed. You Hang did on. Succeed. Uh, where is this line, though? Yeah, uh, so instead of KC1. Uh, yeah, uh, one, one up. Yeah. No, no, not queen of six. No, end game. I can read here. Yeah. Knight h5, knight d4. And Anna wants to take. I, w I must admit, that will be a bit of a shock if it does happen. <laughs> but luckily, I have this move, which may be just... But it w that was careless indeed, not to see this very nice move. Like queen so H6 maybe H5 five. is just... Knight H5, maybe I, I don't play... Thing, but now suddenly you realize queen C1 is a threat in every position. So perhaps just knight D4 and equalizing, or knight D5 and equalizing, right? Anyway, knight, uh, knight f4 was not played. Um, Magnus preferred rook a c1. Mm -hmm. And what did you say about... Oh, like we discussed some knight d4 or rook a c8, if I remember correctly. I think knight d4 slightly misses the point. Because I can take it and simply step aside. On the hand, black is fine there as well. So why not do it? But maybe we can also wait with rook c8. Yes. <coughs> also, e5 idea you mentioned. Ah, yes, yeah. No. There's e5. If I definitely looked better after knight f4, maybe it also works here. Mm. Maybe just e3 here, no? Bishop g2. Ah, king g2, queen d7, king. One and I thought you wanted knight f6, so maybe knight g5 is coming. Ah, you prefer it that way. Well, I think knight h3 is a big problem actually. Checkmate is always a bit of a problem. <laughs> Unpleasant. Unpleasant, yes.
yeah a rook a c8 rook f or e5 might be just a, a very decent line so we have an interesting moment here black could play e5 if knight d2 are you going to play knight d4 anyway i'd probably have to right but then what are you going to play knight e4 And I'll just compare my nuts to your nuts. <laughs> 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 my nuts are in some trouble. <laughs> okay, I have a check. I have a check. Wait. <laughs> Let's yes. give you a check. <laughs> but by now, my legend has grown so much that I'm going to take the knight. And then after bishop b7, I'm mm. going to play rook b8. And then how to say the queen? I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I could have played e4. That's uh, yeah. good as well, but and then when your bishop moves, I play e4. This must be winning. <laughs> That's well, it's a, uh, you'll get a pass pawn, yeah. e5 looks uh, decent, doesn't it? I don't see immediately what white is going to play. Okay, let's try a bit harder here and make this work. Do I want to play e4? Do I want to do What about knight e1? E4. Hmm? E4. If I have the place of to go after E3. So Nine to six. Also, I could make a move like this. Mm -hmm. If you come like that. I mean, I wanted to go. And I was getting excited of knight f4 and knight f5, but I think you're going to make some joke about my knights again, so I will try to come up with something else. It's actually a very, com very unclear position. Let know. me do that. So that means you, you find something better. No, wait, actually I've got better. a better idea. Actually, let me do queen b1, because you cannot defend with knight e5, and you cannot play f5, so you'll have to move your knight to some funny square. Whereupon I can <laughs> maneuver my pieces better. <laughs> and then I have to make my <laughs> to move my knights to, s to some funny square, which is already excited. Yes. <laughs> How is she going to do that? <laughs> no, but e5, e4. I mean, I think you should do it if you're really sure it's going to win. But maybe there's something better here. I just wanted to, you know, keep the knight in one there. Mm -hmm. It's a pity that something like queen a3 doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, after e4, also I have this move. Though I don't know if e3 is e3. getting unpleasant. Yeah, yeah, I know e3 is getting unpleasant. So I have to d4. So e5 was not played knight d4. e5 is intriguing. I wonder how good it is. 
And what Magnus was going to play after e5. Mm. e5 did look very interesting, actually. Let me. Now it feels like after 94, some pieces will be changed and and yeah. traded. <laughs> Okay, shall we take a break now? Because I think once a couple of pieces get traded, we're going to move into the end game phase and we can maybe. And we have to prepare for that. We can <laughs> come back and resume the commentary once the dust settles. Okay, yeah, not a bad idea. I don't mind. So, uh, take a short break now. See you shortly. It's Expo 2020, and the world is here as well. If everybody in the world loved everybody in the world, what a glorious world this could be. It's the culture, it's the music, the artwork. If it's the people. by now. I was just looking for myself and then Expo came and it makes me emotional. This Come on and join us. A new world has just begun and it's right here at Expo.
And uh, welcome back everyone. During the break, we had to sign a lot of autographs and uh, it's really nice that we have quite many viewers here and quite many people came to support us and uh, to watch the sixth game of the World Championship match between Magnus Carlsen and Jan Nepomniachy. Uh, during the break, quite many moves have been made and uh, we saw that uh, there were many exchanges. So the position simplified. And uh, yes, we were quite excited about E5, about the move E5. Mm -hmm. uh, which was here. Which was, yeah, just we a couple of moves We were starting ago. to think whether maybe E5 was a good try. Uh, but here we are. But instead of Ian that, yeah, went to the clinical solution, which is to exchange these pieces. Captured, captured, had to step aside, whereupon this piece was exchanged, the Black Queen checked, and very nice move, powerful move, putting it in the center. And if you see that Black is controlling 60, 70% of the board. However, White's position is extremely solid, so How nothing much happening. How did you calculate it so quickly? I gave an a rough estimate, Anna. <laughs> okay. Ah, <laughs> oh yeah, because bishop on d4, queen on d4, and pawn well, on I d5. Well, I just counted uh, white pieces control exactly one square in black's half of the board, c5. Not a single other square. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I added e3, f3, g4, uh, and c3, and so on, and kind of threw in a <laughs> 60, 70. If you'd like some exact calculations, I'd be happy to entertain you. <laughs> but I think our viewers <laughs> can do it and then send the results. But as I mentioned, it's uh, an extremely solid position, so there's no real uh, thing. Magnus has, in fact, already uh, played queen c2. So he, what he's saying is, if you go rook a c8, I'll take it. It's check. And then bring the rook back. And I'm very happy to be with the two rooks against the queen. So that's not going to happen. And in fact, black's space advantage is a bit, um, it's empty because he's controlling a lot of empty squares and uh, black is going to be pushed back. So I s feel it's still about equal, but... Um, oh, what's white threat? Peep <coughs> Knight f4, exchange, and maybe double on the c-file and see something. Actually, if he had wanted to go on a bit longer, he could have done queen d2. Which is also an option, because you keep the option of the queen going out, or maybe over here. But I don't think white has anything objective here. So queen c2 is a decent move saying, are you, how are you going to fight for these squares? Maybe black just will play a5. Because if he plays a4, then this pawn could be fixed in a dark square, mm -hmm. which could be advantageous. So a5 seems like a reasonable way to play here. I also thought that if white played queen d2, then rook a c8 was an option. Yes, but um, I can play rook f e1 and then shuffle my queen around maybe somewhere this way, that way. I, I don't believe that white's better, but it's a starting point. Okay, let's go back to queen c2. The model has been played. Mm -hmm. Now a5 was Wish's suggestion. And uh, my suggestion, if I can come up with some, just a second. <laughs> Bishop b6. If rook fd1, then rook d5. Uh, so because if I start with rook d5, I thought that maybe you can play knight b4 or knight f4. Mm -hmm. And if I make it this way, then after rook, f rook fd1, I play rook d5 and then I double the rooks. Okay, let me play rook f e1. A couple of plans, I could play queen c6 on next move, mm -hmm. and after rook d5, I could play exactly that, queen c6. So, 
but again, now it's white occupying empty squares in black space, so they're not actually attacking many targets, but we're fighting for good squares for our pieces. Bishop b6, good move to step back also. Um, would you play f5 or? Might be. Well, first rook f1. Oh, I mean, f5 here. here, something like that. But this Sorry. is a nice idea because it allows the rooks to move out. So the rook will, black will double on the d file. And that's also a very nice position. So I think both of us agree that black is uh, doing well here. Well, definitely enough for equality. So. Yes. It's hard for me to believe that black could have more, more but yeah. it should be equal, yeah. Which means after that initial excitement, the game has come back to its usual course. But um, maybe let's check your idea a five and what's happening if uh, Y doesn't allow it and play a four. Well, then two plans. One is to play b4 and put the bishop on c3, so fight for space. I also have a question. If you take on a4 and play rook a c8 now, uh, because now there is a different opponent, a4 may be weak. Mm -hmm. So Anna is claiming that uh, uh, this pawn will now take some defending. Okay, anyway, I think I will come back to c2. Bishop e5. Rook uh, fc1. But I admit it's not easy to see how the rooks are going to get out and play. Yeah, so it's more or less a draw after queen a4. I'm not even 100% sure. I suspect you're right because uh, when my rooks go out, you'll come queen d1 check and get some counterplay. But um, if uh, I get one rook to c7 and a7 and then the other one can move around, maybe I can do something, right? Yeah, but what is not in danger there? Let's no, I... Let's put the question is way. whether black is in any danger. Because yeah. with two rooks against a queen, um, white is not going to have any problems with one pawn. It's just a question of getting the rooks to the A-file and how much uh, counterplay you want to allow. Okay, let's just see what's happening after b4. Now I want to put the bishop here and... So maybe white should play knight f4 to get you to capture this. And then if you go bishop c3, I can always play e3 and then bring the knight here and kick your bishop out, which might hold the balance a bit. But even here, I don't see any real advantage for white. Also, I can make some move like rook fb8. And if you go queen c4, I just play f5. Everything kind of protected. And Why uh, did you put that rook on b8 and not the other one? Because I'm hoping that I'll win your a-pawn and then this rook will be <laughs> pushing an a-pawn, right? But I... <laughs> 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 uh, but of course, uh, rook a b8 is nice as well. Okay. <laughs> a5. A5. Let's see if he will also keep the rook on a8, hoping that he will take the pawn on a4. <laughs> if he is, he's full of optimism, just like me. So. Uh, but now knight d4 was not the move full of optimism. That's true. E we were hoping, really hoping for e5 here, yeah, but... So 
So if white doesn't do anything, then a4 is, uh, is common. Even that is probably fine, but you wanted to try queen c six, but then you just take the c two pawn, right? Uh, yeah, knight f four, queen e five. Don't you want queen e5? Ah, you're saying this is much simpler. Yeah, sure. Keep the pawn and you're fine. Sure. No, doesn't work. I can he try to trade everything with knight c5? I don't like it. Well, but if he thinks that let's say, okay, I don't have any advantage with white, and let's just finish this game. This is going to be a a, a draw because you will do this. I'll play rook c1, and then the simplest would be to take here. And rook d1. No, I take here. And I thought this way I get. Uh, Ah, rook a1, rook, okay. Rook a1 and I liquidate. Yeah, there are so, so, many, be, yeah. so many ways to, to make a draw. It feels like Magnus is about to make a move. I think I would expect either a4 or, or yeah, maybe knight c5. Just saying, mm -hmm. okay, let's have. Let's have a rest. Well, knight c5 is an acceptance that nothing is happening. A4. But if you don't really believe you're better anyway, then why play it? How does it feel when both players kind of realize that... Well, we are both happy with the draw, but we still have to make some moves because draw offers are not allowed before black's before black made its uh, forty small. And right now we are on move number twenty-three, uh, 23 so we are far from there. And uh, well, a threefold repetition is also uh, quite difficult to reach. You you go by the position. If the position is equal and there's nothing going on, then you then you prove it. You make moves that continue to maintain equality and uh, wait for move thirty, <laughs> so to speak. So. But here you have to to wait for move forty. Uh, so you have to wait seventeen moves. Is it actually forty or is 40. it thirty? Wasn't there some confusion with Leonard before? Uh, we had we all discussed that. So I was the one who read the regulations and it's ah, okay. forty. All right, so Leonard was wrong. You're right. Well, 17 moves is hard to... I think you just keep making moves, and if the position remains equal, then your original conclusion was true. And if one player is uh, inaccurate, then he gets into trouble. Mm -hmm. But um, you can't try to look for four draws and <laughs> 17 moves later, so you just have to... I don't know what else we can expect. Uh, rook fd1, a4 really looks unpleasant and no need to allow that. You know, if uh, rook fd1, a4, I can really believe you can win my a3 pawn and then <laughs> rook I'm not, I, Suddenly I'm wondering, is it so clear? Because if I go rook fd1, you go a4, I'm going to take it. You okay. take with the pawn, right? Uh, yes, because if I take with the rook, there are maybe some issues on the d file. Yeah, and I just want to try and put the rook over there. Also, the threat of a4 may be stronger than actually playing it. You might want to just uh, 
keep the option available, but not to necessarily play it right away. Because rook f d1 actually is, uh, has a threat, which is that the knight is now defended, so you can play e3. The before the rook okay, maybe and the show queen it later was because attacking. I only have the live board here. Yeah. So we're gonna come back to this line. And rook f d1 has not even happened, so now Magnus this is the current position. Yeah, now Magnus has picked up his pawn and he's playing around. So. So who is doing it better, Jan or Magnus? <laughs> That's not clear, but um, I think you can see there's a general code of conduct that you can only do this with captured pawns because Jan plays with the white ones and <laughs> Magnus is doing it with the black ones. Maybe because you put the captured pieces on your side of the board. How do you, okay. how do you place your knight, Anna? Do you place it, is it facing forward or sideways? Forward, yeah, but there Good was a big, big, big discussion about it. Yes. <laughs> For example, how we find she puts it uh, like, like that they are uh, watching each other. Yes, but that's wrong, isn't it? I mean, the knights should be facing <laughs> in front, not at each other. <laughs> like are they going to charge sideways? Maybe Vladi will come up with a new variant where they do, but for the moment, I think they're going straight. So uh, you're putting them like this way, Absolutely. yeah? Absolutely. Uh, towards your opponent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like Kasparov is very fond of the sideway glance. <laughs> so he'll turn his knight this way and set it up facing each other. <laughs> each player has their quirks. I haven't observed Magnus really, but. Uh <laughs> Leonard is coming up with some really deep question. If you are white and your opponent's king is on h2, okay, would you still put your knights forward or towards h2? Uh, well, I mean, it's just like how you put it in the beginning, and then I think you keep the trend. <laughs> yes, I mean, uh, they're always looking forward. Um, if my opponent's king is on h2, I'd be busy trying to mate him, Leonard. <laughs> I would not be concerned about how my knights were looking. So, so there. And you know, there was a very interesting discussion during the previous game on chess.com. Uh, like, if uh, you have something like, I don't remember how many dark squares bishops and all of them <laughs> put on the dark squares, uh, like 15 dark square bishops and white has only one light square bishop, uh, is it winning for white or not? How can it be winning for white? You mean there's no squares left for the king, yeah? Yeah, it's like, I started to think about it. And uh, well, I kept on thinking about it maybe for for a minute, and I realized that if you kind of take some kind of opposition, uh, for example, like king e6 uh, against king on e8, then somehow you're threatening the checkmate, and it may be dangerous. But if the king comes to g8, uh, then it's very difficult to get your king to g6. Maybe you can actually get this to it. <laughs> is this part? Of, is this part of your preparation for <laughs> Kazakhstan, uh, Anna? Uh, yes, I want to know your mm. opinion. I think. I think it will help me to improve. In, in Kazakhstan, okay, <laughs> right. I will work on it tonight. <laughs> okay. And I will let you know. <laughs> Magnus has been thinking for quite a while. Yes. So he's, co he's considering some other options, or maybe he's also thinking about a tweet. <laughs> <laughs> Very unlikely. I would hope he's not thinking about the tweet, but anyway. Mm. It's not so clear. Things can still go wrong. I mean, you have for to be whom? careful for both. Mm -hmm. um, I can easily see if black's too ambitious, something happens. You still have to play the game very carefully, but obviously, to me, the position is equal. So. You know, actually about this uh, knight placing, I think that Magnus is doing it the way, like, towards each other. Ah, towards each other, okay. Maybe that's how you get additional 50 points. No, I should remember this, but I've forgotten where he puts it. You didn't uh, pay attention uh, to uh, such an important thing. You played two matches with him and, and you just uh, cared about the opening lights? Apparently. Uh. Unforgivable. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he's gone to FD1. By the way, look, look at his knight in this three. 
I mean, it's definitely not looking towards the king. Uh, no, now I can't discuss mm. it anymore. <laughs> no, but that's because the computer board is made to look like that. So we should actually zoom in on this. No, uh, but it board. was zoomed. It was and zoomed it was on sideways. the board and it was kind of sideways. Oh, look, look like that. Look. You see? But this knight is looking right. It's looking at the G3 pawn instead of looking at the B3 one. So he cares about the G3 pawn more than about the... No, then this means this knight went from... Oh, yeah, yeah. L let's calculate. E5, D3. Yes, it went knight B2, C4, E5, D3 and never so changed. So it was the B1, yeah. It was the B1 knight. It never changed direction. It kept so looking at the same side. The knights, like, if you place them in the beginning, then you don't change it. <laughs> and this is just the confirmation. Yes. And the other knight, unfortunately, got exchanged. So this one continues to look to the right. Okay. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense, actually. <laughs> what did he play? Ah, he played rook fd1. Yes, while we were, <laughs> while we were discussing this <laughs> important no, but topic, we discussed he actually rook played <laughs> some chess. Let's take we a look. Actually, uh, it was your idea, rook fd1, and then if yes. d4 takes, takes in rook b1. I mean, rook fd1, also the point is, I, I noted that you could play e3 now because the knight is defended, so that's an improvement. Uh, Jan uh, didn't play a4. He played king g7, maybe? He played, a uh, yeah, look, yeah, he played king g7. Why is yes. the king on g7 better than on g8? I don't know, I don't even understand king g7. No, king g7, after knight h5, it's a check. Yes, so, I mean, if I, if... If somehow my knight goes to f4, the king has just walked into its uh, flight path, if you like. Maybe he just wants, uh, I don't know, some kind of But, now, but <laughs> now I can't I play e3. Can't I play e3 here? Where do you, you'll go to e5 or to uh, b6 or something. I wanted to take on e3, then I realized that it doesn't really work. Well, knight, knight f2, f2 already two, yeah. keeps the piece, yeah. And but I my had point this is, idea if you like go here, after e3, you go bishop e5. Is it the end of the line, like after knight f2, rook c8? I go queen e2, and I'm very much in business. Sorry, you wanted to play rook no, c8 no, here? I, I don't believe so much. Okay, rook d8. And I mean, first of all, what's the big deal, I would say? I just yeah, okay, you can take it, yeah. But why not take it? Well, if you take this way, then I can take on b3, but sure. if you're... And I'll play rook d3, and yeah. you're not going to win the second pawn. And I can combine to attack your f7 pawn. The rooks will combine and do something. Yeah, that's yeah. sad. So e3, bishop e5, queen e2, and now I'm threatening knight c5. Isn't this nice for white? Or uh, maybe you play bishop d6 and you're fine because you've the bishop is controlling all the squares my knight has. But king g7 seems to be a very unusual move. A bit surprising to me. Hmm. All right, but he, what he is threatening is rook a c8. That's his threat. Because uh, had he played rook a c8 on the previous move, then capturing here, and here is a check. Whereas now, he is actually threatening rook a c8. So that's maybe the point of his play, but easily but I can play e3. But after e3, yeah, it's not a question anymore. Yes. Just to mention that uh, rook c8, queen c8. And in the current position, he would have queen takes e2, but here he has to respond to the check. So that's the point. So let's see e3. What would black play? Black can say play something beautiful like bishop c5. Except I would take and take here, and I'm looking kind of empty on this one. Uh, sorry, king g7, e3. 
But I think this move is reasonable. Six. Then my knight is ready to go in this direction, right? Maybe to h5. <laughs> it was your idea to give that check. <laughs> just a reminder. Yes, yeah, just to remind you. I can play e5. Yes. But so we can in the light squares. But maybe it's not that bad here. I can go knight uh, c5. Also, don't forget, I could play knight e1. I'm attacking b5. And uh, this knight might one day, and this day may never come, it might come to f5. No, but the, I mean, I'm even more worried that the bishop is completely useless. Yes. I think this makes more sense to me, because after bishop e5, you can't do anything yet. You have to move your queen. Queen e2 is the most natural move. And then after bishop d6, we have a kind of equality, because you're immediately attacking this pawn. And knight f4 is not possible. Yeah. So that's, to me, the way to go. Bishop e5 would be good. Of course, Magnus doesn't have to play e3, but then the question is, what did he achieve with rook fd1? If he... Okay, playing knight e1. I don't like it much. Just uh, queen c2, knight c2. And Bishop, Bishop c2. c2. <coughs> If you no, that's just a very strange yeah. way to proceed. I agree. So, uh, let's go back. It really looks like the most logical move. Yes, but this, I think bishop e5 and bishop d6 actually kind of neutralizes Yeah, I like this idea, yeah. which I suggested bishop e5, bishop d6. Somehow we are running out of ideas. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can show that knight f4 immediately was not possible. Yes. By the way, the trap in the position is that this move is not possible because I can take and this discovered check. No, this is not a discovered check. It's just a check. And... Is this an X-ray? I think that's what it is. It's an X-ray. So rook takes D1. Okay, I have one more idea. Wait. E3, bishop D, bishop E5, queen E2, bishop D6. And why not knight C5 here? Yeah. If you capture. Yeah, and I do, I think. Yes, I just capture here. And suddenly you have to worry about these pawns. So maybe bishop, bishop e5, bishop d6 is not so spectacular after all. Black would like to make some beautiful tactic like this. Unfortunately, it doesn't work because the knight, the knight uh, yeah. and I defends the uh, rook. So that's not possible. And if I do it like e3, bishop e5, queen e2, just uh, rook c8. Rook ac8. Mm -hmm. Then I play knight c5. You take? I take. Well, obviously I'm forced to do queen d1, but now what do you do? Where do you go? I mean, you're in considerable trouble now. Because I'm also threatening this discovered attack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think e3 is a decent move. So 
still prefer bishop e5 more. Bishop? Uh, bishop e5, but after queen e2, I haven't found the move I really like. Mm -hmm. Also, maybe we're trying too hard. I mean, maybe black can make any move and it's body equal. Like this position. And just wait I find it hard to believe that it's any serious danger, simply that it could be unpleasant, but maybe b4 is already equal. Before I thought rook c4. Ah, that's true. But, um, ah, that's true. I, I saw it after rook d1, queen d1, yes. I can't do b4. And if I played rook... Oh, what is Magnus uh, like trying to do? Instead of e3, he wants to play something like what, rook d2? Or? I uh, that's what he seemed to indicate with his hand. Oh, I didn't see. I thought e3, bishop e5, queen e2, or rook a c8, knight c5, and just uh, queen f5. Isn't there a pawn going at the end of that? I can take it immediately without taking on the item. Well, uh, th okay, then yes I take on no. d1 and take on g3. No, you actually you don't because uh, if you do this, yeah, I don't. I take here mm -hmm. and check. That's true. I could play bishop b2, but that's already risky. I think after rook d1, rook d1. No, first I take on d1. And then go bishop b2 yes. here. And if b4, you're actually not winning the pawn because a b4, a b4, and bishop a. Ah, you, but you make a draw no, like this. Yeah. No, I, I, oh, no, I have, have one more intimate. So. so watch this. Bishop takes b4, but I get to make this move with check and I remain a pawn up. So. Anyway, I got the feeling that Magnus was trying to do some rook d2. Let's see what he's doing. Let's say you go rook d2, and now he wants to play queen d1 and disentangle like that. You think that's getting somewhere? But my problem is now if I play b4, I, my bishop c3 will kick your rook even. Well, you can take and go queen uh, before. Then rook c. Rook c8. I'll take it. Sorry. And uh, what's happening, bishop c3? Rook a2 or rook uh, c2. If you do that, I'll, I still have this move defending everything. Mm -hmm. That's so important. I, yeah. And what is better? So, is he going to go rook d2 or is he going to play some e3? He seems reluctant to play e3, maybe because it loosens the knight. So... There is another tweet from Ben Johnson. Swidler and Kramnik are foreseeing some life in this position if e3 and queen e2. <laughs> what is the temperature of other broadcasters? Well, we got very moderately excited by e3, queen e2, and then we tried to go with bishop e5, d6. So I'm happy to have Vladimir Kram Kramnik and Peter Swidler supporting, think, supporting yeah, us. Supporting us. I think, I think that's direction. reassuring. So I cannot check engines, but I can check. What tweets. My, we can, what my we can are doing. check tweets. Thanks, Leonard, for bringing them up. Yes. I mean, I'm only looking at Rook D2 because I thought Magnus <laughs> did something like that, but uh, we don't know, so we'll see. But that's w uh, that's once again is saying that 94 is was not that necessary. Yes. 
I mean, E5 is messy, but it seems like black should come out okay. The problem is when you have two pleasant choices, and then you have to decide on one, and uh, it's always the wrong one. Not always. Sometimes you're lucky. I prefer to check in the in the direction of E3. It's more direct. Mm -hmm. So after E3. I, I don't even know. A bishop b6 we didn't check, I think. But I didn't like it much because of queen c6. What do you mean we didn't check? We checked bishop b6. We checked bishop b6? Ah, okay. We, we checked pretty much. And we had queen e2. And, and this was the point. Was so that uh, knight f4, knight zero more knight f4, h5, and... Well, I actually prefer bishop e5, and uh, let's try to find something there on bishop e5, mm. queen e2. Uh, what if Rook A B eight after Queen A two? Rook A B eight. Can I go Knight C five? Queen F five. I go e4. Also, we had a similar rind, right? We had it with rook ac8, but then you could take on b5 immediately, and here I tried that. Uh no, I think we had this line. And if rook d2, I go rook f1. Uh, this one we didn't have. No? Okay. Maybe you calculated it. <laughs> no, uh, I thought we had something with the maybe queen b5, bishop here. I move, but luckily I have this trick. And then you go rook d5, and I went b4, something like that. Uh, no, it was a similar uh, line. No, it was on the rook on c8, not yeah. on b d5, yeah. Anyway. Here we are. Magnus is going to play something. No, but um, I think he, Magnus, understands that uh, there's a real uh, uh, small advantage available. But he's trying to be very exact because, uh, you know, already once in the game, it things fizzled out. He doesn't want it to happen again. So he's thinking very carefully because... For me, there's no explanation that he takes so much time over E3, but he just wants to be absolutely sure that. Also, we we think there is an alter alternative, which is Rook D2. We didn't think about that, but <laughs> no. Once his hand hovered there, we couldn't see, and we realized that there is a second good move in the position, so it could be one or the other. But you know, Rook on D1 and Pawn on E2, they are close to each other. <laughs> in what way? Uh, like Rook on D1 and the Pawn on E2, they are close to each other. Ah, so you mean, yeah, you can see it, exactly. And but also, uh, like, uh, rook d2 and e3, it's more like the same movement. Yes.
So Magnus is down to 27 minutes for uh, for 15 moves. For 16 actually, because uh, he hasn't played this one. But he has plenty of time because um, in 26 minutes, Magnus is capable of playing 27 games. <laughs> so I think he'll do okay here. But he, he's capable of playing 27 online games. Yes, and with pre-move and bullet. Yes, that's true. So maybe he can make only 13. Yeah. Which is Magnus doing? Once again, he was about to play something, and then he was not completely sure about it, and he's still thinking. But uh, this is not because he's uh, worried. It's very clear that White has a small chance now, and he's just trying to see how to play. So I think we can now look forward to a couple of hours more at least. Uh, at least a probe in the next two, three mm -hmm. moves. Maybe it fizzles out, but we are not able to see exactly how, so we think there's a little bit of life left in the position. Yeah, because when you're out of risk, and uh, oh yeah. he's you, very you happy. feel like you, you can try some... Magnus is very happy when he is completely really? out of risk and he can just enjoy himself like this. The worst thing is opponents don't realize what risk they're facing. <laughs> <laughs> so. Because the position looks harmless, and then he does his thing. Yeah, for but example, this was a while ago, but still. Yeah, but just imagine if Magnus had uh, the position Jan had the day before yesterday. I am sure that if they switched, uh, then Jan could have dif difficult times. Yes. And this position is worse than the position he had. Which position is worse? Like, I mean, uh, here uh, uh, the advantage is not that big uh, as there. Yeah. Okay. It like does look like rook d2, doesn't it? Maybe. It looks more like rook d2 than e3, but. But I'm not sure. It's also interesting how Jan feels about his position r right now. Okay. Seventh attempt to make a move. How often do you do it like that? Like when you're trying? I've, done, I've done it a few times. More often when I'm worried, but maybe when there's a very small advantage also, I, I hesitate time to time. When I was a kid, my father, uh, he kind oh, so of... so finally he did go rook d2. ...said that I can't do that, because with this I give confidence to my opponent. So I was punished for doing that. <laughs> it's like, okay, if you're going to play something, just play something. <laughs> <laughs> After rook d2, we analyzed b4. Okay. Well, afterwards we changed our mind. I mean, I, at least I changed my mind because I saw this move queen c4 and mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if that was going anywhere. But I could play f5 here and then threaten to go to c3 next move. Because if queen b4, I have uh, bishop takes f2 check. King yeah, takes good. f2, queen takes b4, knight takes b4, and now the rook is vulnerable. So maybe b4 is not a bad try.
Well, I think we have to take once, and then uh, we will think. But do you have to take once? Can I go A4? Or actually, we had overlooked uh, this thing, but I can go knight f4 here. But it's true that in this position, still my B c3 pawn is slightly weak. But after a4, you're not actually threatening this because I can play knight f4. I mean, if you do this, I suspect uh, I'll play e3, knight e2, and slowly push you back, right? I bet if I play f5. Uh, uh, no, before taking on C2. Ah, F5. Then let's say Rook D3. But if I capture here. You take with the queen, I think. But do I have to capture? Maybe not. Maybe you can now, now play e5 or something. But I don't see what black is trying for because white is not worse. But is white better? So what I'm now suggesting is a4. Let's see what is the plan against that. I kind of like that, uh, like that position for black after bishop c3 and f5. The no rook d3, let's say rook c8. Queen D one. Ah, you can't play Bishop F six because I have Knight H five check. Mm -hmm. But how dangerous is this? Let's say I take Rook D three, Queen D three, Queen D three, Knight D three. I don't know. I rook d8. Rook d1. Or king f1 first, I don't know, but rook d1. King f6. Oh, Jan played rook ac8. Yes. We did not see this coming at all. Rook ac8. No, we saw that it's possible, but somehow we assumed to. Yeah. Oh, we tried to do it after b4 or a4. Okay. So now it's either white takes on c8 or queen d1 is another option. Mm -hmm. And maybe Jan's point is that now queen d5 is possible because this pawn is very vulnerable. You cannot defend it by moving the knight because of bishop takes f2 check, king f2 and capture the rook. So you have to um, maybe play b4. Then black might be able to come in with queen b3 or a4 and queen b3 and uh, some tricky moments maybe. And if queen d1? Well, then bishop c3. I don't know if I have knight c5. Probably not. I think this should be completely fine, right?
And if you go here, I'll play B4. But I don't really see an advantage for white anywhere here, but. Rook D2 is a bit artificial, but maybe like he had E3 some more, yeah. uh, reasons of not playing E3. Well, he spent so much time yeah. that he has some very specific problem with E3. But what it is, I'm unable to guess. And Magnus uh, and Jan played the Rook AC8 uh, very comfort uh, yeah, comfortably. Yeah, tempo. So it's move number 25, 15, 15 moves to go to the, to pass the first time control. Nice. And Magnus is down to 20 minutes. He keeps on thinking. Well, he must have calculated rook a c8. But now he's got a kind of uh, recalculating everything. Yes. But I, I I think he spent a lot of time on e3 and was disappointed and then came here. But admittedly, e3 is not big, big anyway. But we thought at least white uncoils. And then uh, there is that ki that king. is not really weak, but when you relax... Suddenly it gets into trouble. I think that's what we can say with this king on g7. So I think we can still come back for an exciting uh, time control. I don't know how exciting it will be, but possibly they'll be in some time pressure. And uh, shall we take a quick break then before that? Oh uh, yeah, and before going for a short break, we would like to thank to the sponsors of uh, of this match of this wonderful event. Uh, uh, so huge shout out to Kaspersky, Algorand, uh, Fosagro, and Chasable. So uh, we are going for a break, which will take a couple, but maybe just a second. Maybe Magnus will make a move, and then we'll see. He's thinking again. <laughs> he heard you. So why don't we take a break and then we'll come back in a few minutes. Okay, let's go for a short break and we'll be back. And oh. <laughs> nope, nope, he's back. <laughs> no, he, he doesn't want us to go to a break. Just a second. <laughs> let's wait. Let's wait for this move. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Queen C8. Well, let's see. Queen C8, Rook C8, Rook C8. Let's wait for Jan's reply and then we'll go for a break. <laughs> and Quinty Five. Okay, here we are. So we're getting closer and closer to the time trouble. Quinty Five is the mode that we anticipated. Now there are not so many moves. Actually, what can I do? Before a four is the thing I don't want to allow. Well, the funny thing is, black isn't actually threatening anything. Because if, if I played uh, ah e three, but then uh, bishop e five, and I am actually threatening to take on b three. Whereas here, uh, if I make some random move just to show the point, well, not exactly not this move, but anyway, um, rook c7, okay, what, just what to illustrate the point. My point was knight c1 is queen actually a, a thing. Ah, there's queen a4. I suddenly realized there's also this one, which is I go to b7 and attack your rook. With but the uh, when the rook was on c8, but in fact it, it is a threat. So let's see what he's... Before played? Um, before. 
So this has been played. Now the question is, will he play a4? Yes, if he, he goes will. queen b3, then I think this knight c1 move that I mentioned is actually troublesome again. So b4, and the question is, is Jan going to play a4? If b4, a4, and e3 now? I mean, I don't know if bishop b2 is possible. Rook uh, c5. <laughs> If I played, a four. No, wait a minute. Okay, what, if I, what if I brought this rook back here? I had another idea there, in the very end, to trap your bishop. <laughs> I have an idea to trap your bishop. <laughs> like with king f one, bishop a three, and king a two. Okay, I play e5. Not that I even remotely saw your <laughs> cunning plan, but uh, let's go with this. B4 okay. is a problem. Yeah, but b4, a4, this is fine. I think if I came back with this rook here, do you have any defense at all to knight c5? What is the evaluation? Suddenly I'm not sure. If you go queen b3, I have knight c1. Winning on the spot. And if you don't, then what is going on here? Because if I can play knight c5, you're, you're gone, right? What, are they going? what is he doing here? b4, a4. Admittedly, I didn't. Understand quickly enough because I thought there must be some queen b3, but. Uh, it's a strange way to. What happens after rook cc2? So now you, uh, now you want to play e3. Or not really. Or maybe knight c5. Or maybe knight f4. Knight c5, probably. Yeah, but let's say I go queen e4, you still play knight c5? Yeah, but then uh, with pleasure, no? <laughs> because if you take, I'll take with the pawn and I have a free pass pawn. Okay, in order to stop knight c5, I can play queen f5. How does that stop? I mean, I'll play e3. Yeah, then y you have to play e3 and then knight c5. I mean, knight e5 is probably a better move now, but I'll play knight c5 simply because you told me it wasn't possible. <laughs> but uh, rook c2, and suddenly I think the white is clearly better now because these two rooks is just a clear advantage for white. It was very provocative to play rook a c8 unless you're very sure. I think. Now, I'm guessing uh, Magnus is really looking forward to a nice touch or something. Okay, queen b3. Let's Knight play. c1. Rook, queen b1. Ah, that's one problem with my uh, I mean, I am already happy that the knight is not coming to c <laughs> Okay, let me go king g2 here. For the moment, you don't have any squares, so let me go king g2. Um, Though already, if you play bishop b2, I'm not sure <laughs> that I'm you really... You take. Yeah, and uh, then queen then, g1, yeah. and then how do I ever improve? Okay, then I play bishop b2. <laughs> well, rook c2, ah, that's true. Queen b3, knight c1. Uh, besides knight c1, can I play... E3 is possible.
Yes, I, I think you just do this. There's nothing really happening here. No, rook c2, queen b3 is going to be good enough. Maybe I should just do this. You go queen b1 check? Yeah. And I go king g2. What's no, yours? I don't go. I, ta I take the pawn. Ah. Really not working out, is it? Okay, so it is not maybe rook c c two. Maybe that's why he's thinking, <laughs> because it's lo it looked too exciting. <laughs> yes. Okay, maybe now we are going for a short break, <laughs> our third attempt, and well, then. The hundredth time. Wait a minute. Let me play rook c seven. Rook seven here. Yeah, because I want to have some knight of four and some lucky mm -hmm. shot at. If queen b three anyway. Uh, then I'm not sure what was your idea. Knight of four or knight c five. Also, wait. Uh, so, if I take on C5. No, wait, what about my favorite move? <laughs> favorite move. Knight rook is better. Yeah, because I, you don't have queen b1. Yeah. So, after rook c7, what do you play exactly? He wants to move the pawn, or? Well, definitely not the C8 rook. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we can rule out the C8 rook moving. <laughs> <laughs> it's not happening. But uh, maybe he will change his mind. Who knows? <laughs> Okay, what's going to happen? No. Okay, just to so the audience can see, this is the actual current position. And if he plays e3, or that's what? Okay, what so let's I see, what did we have against e3? Uh, bishop b2 even we've toyed we around with, right? We didn't have anything against e3. <laughs> okay, it's replaced. Well, we had bishop but d2. Yes, and then this uh, rook c5, queen uh, d7, yeah, and uh, trading the knight for the bishop. Yes. Ah, that's the line I was going to trap your bishop. <laughs> Where? Like exactly in this line, like rook c5, queen d7, king ah, f1. Ah, rook c5, queen d7, king f1 is your point. Bishop a3, king e2, and then yeah, but it didn't work. Luckily, because of <laughs> queen g4 check, and also uh, so the e4 problem is that knight e5 runs. Oh no. Yeah, ni 95 and queen d2. You're on fire today. <laughs> <laughs> no, because that's what I was going to play, sure. then I realized, but we didn't show that. Yes. So. 
But before a four is three. This is the current position, E3. Shall we take that break now? Because I think then we fifth have some attempt. chances. <laughs> fifth attempt, let's go for it. So. Okay, we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Okay.
and uh, welcome back everyone and let's immediately jump into the game because uh, actually what we expected didn't happen in the game instead of bishop b2 bishop e5 was played and magnus replied with h4 so let's take a look at the position and uh, also what are the ideas here can queen b3 be played or yeah so many that's... other things and um, especially important keep an eye on the clock now it's yeah 10 moves and magnus has to make it in six minutes I think which that's means the most important to, thing. Probably, and if you have, which means if you have to coordinate stuff, it has to happen um, in very little time. The obvious move that jumps to mind is queen b3. I think maybe what Magnus intends is this, because these pawns are no longer defensible. You cannot defend the a3 pawn anymore. So if I capture here, you capture. Maybe Magnus wants to do that. Activate the rooks. And in return for losing both these pawns, he takes here everything with check and, and his and hedge pawn is already very going helpful. up. Yeah. Very, very nice move. I did not see it at all. Jan goes h5. This ha has some advantages. When the rooks combine on the seventh rank, in the, like the line I just showed, this pawn won't be captured with tempo. Um, Gives the black king a little bit of extra space. Maybe he's not getting mated, though I don't know what's happening now. If um, if my rook gets to the eighth rank, whether uh, some sort of mating attack is possible. Uh, Still, I'm a bit as, surprised. As things go, it's fairly dramatic stuff. Bishop b2 was not played. Yeah, even on the second occasion. What do you mean? After, uh, after h4? h4, bishop b2. Okay, but if you don't do it immediately, then. Uh, why should you do it after each one? Yes, that is. Yeah, and a good update that uh, right at the moment Magnus has about 30 seconds per move for the next 10 moves because in the first time control and also in the second time control the players, they don't get increment. And it's like you have two hours for the first 40 moves, then one hour for the next 20 moves, and then 15 minutes and only starting from the move 61 the players get additionally 30 seconds per move. But here they are playing without increments, so Magnus is down to actually already less than five minutes, and he still has to make 10 moves. And the moves are not easy. I'm wondering how easy it is for him to go wrong here. But, um, I mean, what are the chances that he oversteps and... Think? But that doesn't seem very likely, I must admit. Uh, but one more important thing, he doesn't have to ride the moves. It's like in all good times, when you're in the time trouble, when you're ah, under five right. minutes, but then you're allowed... You don't allowed have to write it. Then we but had the increment and you yeah, had to do it. But when you have increment, exactly, you have to do it. <laughs> okay, but one thing. Why not play king f1, e2 now? Or am I walking into the wrong direction? Why do you think so? Why do you think it's the wrong direction? So Keep I'm, going I'm just to the closer center. to the checks. But I want to defend that rook somehow. Okay. Is there what any about difference? rook cc2? Yeah. For the hundred. So time? any difference now? If still queen b3. Okay. And I think we are agreed now that uh, this is fine. So let me go rook there. C7. Good. Queen takes b3. Rook. Now let's ta let's take it. Take here. Yes. Where is the checkmate? Play. <laughs> okay, I go. King G6. Yes. Yeah. Um, I can't do this because you will take, and then you will not go to the F file, you'll go to the H file. Mm -hmm. I can't start with a check. A uh, king h2 played. Mm. Uh, Vishy, I think you really have something in common. You wanted to play. I mean, with Magnus, you wanted to play king f1, and he played. You went king completely H2, yeah. opposite direction. Yes, that's what we have in common. That we go <laughs> in opposite directions. Okay. Okay. I think that this, the players are obviously fully concentrated, and what they seem to be Very saying clear. is, white is begging black to play queen b3, and black is keeping that rook pinned. And. Um, that seems to be, I'm not sure exactly what we're missing, but 
Magnus is consistently waiting away from this. Let's try this again for the hundredth time. Knight c5 or knight takes e5, I don't know. Uh, does it help in any way if we take now and rook c7? I mean, it, it's exactly the same line, but with the king on h2. Well, let's have a look. Rook c7. Let me take it. You go rook here. I take this. Uh, mm, a rook f7, king g6, g4. No, then a takes g4. The thing is, it's not possible to mate. You can keep on, uh, you can do this. Yeah, that's what I was going to do. And I, d I cannot come here, but I can possible. go here. And in fact, you don't have the knockout blow. You give a check, I come here. You give a check, I come here. Um, you can loop all you want, but for the moment you don't but have But if a I keep on going, like rook f7, king g6, check. Uh, h5, check. Yes, king g5. Now what, h6? Maybe a3, just to create some confusion there. G3 also creates some confusion yes. there. G3 as well. So, very exciting position and... It will not happen. And Magnus has played King H2. So now he's getting free thinking time, which is... He's thinking in Jan's clock. But... Um, and Jan is pretty safe with his 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. After queen b3, what else do we have? Now, I have knight c5, actually. Let's say you take here. I try to weave some sort of mating net there, but I don't see how. Also, queen takes b4. Queen e2 is also possible there, attacking on f2 and protected on e6. Yeah. So let me play king g2 there. But very tense and uh, I'm again... I'm unable to sense <coughs> what their evaluation is. Do they do both think they're better? Or uh, do they agree in the evaluation? I'm not able to tell. I think Jan thinks he's better on time. <laughs> yes, that is true. And Grandmaster Manatsakan Jan, expert opinion. Sorry for that old joke, but that's basically when you say the bleeding obvious, uh, you say... Grandmaster Manatsa Kanyan, and then you say the bleeding obvious. So that's what that reference is about. Um, maybe it's now time for this bishop b2, because your king has gone even further away. Because now there is no danger of this mating attack. Mm -hmm. So. If let's say rook c5. Queen d7. What's the situation? Oh, now there is this move. And if you do this, you have rook a2, and the bishop is trapped. But uh -huh. uh, I think I think you warned me earlier and to go to d6. Or maybe you can quickly show the difference between these two moves. Yeah, the point is now that if you do this, I take here. And if you do this, I say thank you very much. So, <laughs> maybe bishop b2 is one kind of solution. Uh, 
proxy phi queen d6. I, I don't know if this white can ever be better here. Rook k2, but it's hard to see how white can be better here. I just play f5, and I have the most awesome queen there possible, right? And if you take on h5 first, then f5, the rook is kind of trapped there a little bit. Well, I might uh, even no. I might even help myself to this pawn, right? No, before. Ah, you don't even. Uh, before taking on b2. Because I I can take on b5, I can take on h5. Well, here if you take on a3, I take on b5. Yes, this might actually be. But I, I, I was really unsure you about that. You can do f5. f5 or even e5. Because in both cases, that rook is sidelined. <coughs> And maybe it's just lost for white. Yeah, so this would be an expensive uh, pawn. <laughs> yeah. On the other hand, if you wanted to, after queen d6, if you're not afraid about bishop takes a3, then you can do this and see if something happens now. But I don't see the follow-up. Unless you want to play rook d1 and claim that is something. But so how to play again e5? Yes. I mean, this is... Suddenly black spawns come to life, don't they? So it's not rook c2, h4, h5, king h2. This is the current position. So there is two very reasonable options. One is queen b3, the other is uh, rook b2. I mean uh, bishop b2. And I don't know which. Maybe queen b3 because uh, he had uh, an opportunity to play bishop b2 already. Yes, but so he was maximizing, I mean, playing h5 and saying, delaying it as much as possible. I don't know what that means. But anyway. is it actually going in his favor? Does he need all that? The problem is that for both players is that they will suddenly realize that h4, h5 has some consequences down, deep down some line, but they, won't, they don't know yet for whom it will be favorable. So, queen b3. It feels like for white, because at first h5 can be a weakness. He has gone to b3, and Magnus has gone uh, rook c5. No, he played bishop b2. Oh, he, he went bishop b2, rook, rook c5. Bishop okay, okay, bishop b2, rook c5. So now it has to be queen d6. I think we agreed on that, right? Actually, not true. Rook c to rook a three. I have e five. And if rook a three, then I have e four. So that's not technically fatal, but I don't see any disadvantage as a result of queen d six. So for the moment, Bishop b2, rook c5. Yeah, queen d6. What could black possibly want, white possibly want here? And uh, wh what was the last? Uh, uh, the last thing, yeah, uh, you said about queen d7. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. 
Okay. Well, I had some EFA for yeah, trick, but it's not too relevant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just uh, I wanted to know it in which position and in which more water. Can I try some active options you want to take? Well, I was wondering how good or bad this is. I mean, let's say I now go here. Maybe f5 yes, is just a draw, f5 or e4 is a draw, because if you attack my queen, I'll just go to f1, and you never get any peace and quiet. But I was wondering what happens here. I mean, my reckoning is it should still be a draw, because you go here, I play a3, or queen b2 first, and then a3 or something like that. But um, maybe I just play f5, and then when you do this, I go here. I don't see how you can improve the position. I prefer this one because if you take on a3, then white takes on b5, and eventually we will also yeah, try this one. Also, to be honest, I made a mistake. I should do this first. Yeah. And then. Uh, yeah. No, but then you have this move. And if I play a3, suddenly you're going rook c3, and I'm losing this pawn. So I have to be careful. I think you're right. It's better to. Um, Just F5, yeah? This moment? Just F5 for the moment and ask white. What is it? Oh, not rook a to F5, but... Uh, I think it's here, yeah. rook bc to F5. Yes, rook bc2, and now I want to think F5, or e, I don't know, E5. Maybe E5. And then if you do this... King G1? I want ki oh, King G2, it's with the same idea. King G1, I can take maybe. You take. Okay. And then if I do this, isn't it a bit awkward for you? Because now... I don't have a... Rook D1, wow. Everything at tempo. Uh... So if he takes on a3, he wants to take on... If he takes on a3, what does he want to do? Take on b4. Mm -hmm. And now if I do e5? What's this? Oh, he wants to go rook a5 and uh, bishop b2, rook a4. Okay, and Magnus is not recording. Yeah. Maybe he's just, you know, marking. <coughs> this is the current position. By the way, there were some dramatic developments. Apparently, uh, the computer was very excited by this. We are hearing. Ah, that's Leonard's update. Yes, and this was this very idea. strong. But, but uh, I impossible to sure tell. About it. It. I wasn't, yeah. I, I mean, even here, I think what happens after queen e7, because I'm getting this pawn. I know you're getting a check, but but maybe simply now the knight controls all the escape squares of the king, and so white is able to go with both rooks to the seventh rank or something. Uh, eighth rank, sorry. Okay, that uh, is where it is, but uh, we are past that now. Bishop takes a3. <coughs> and rook takes b5 has happened. Let me play... Uh, you wanted e5. Yes. I like e5 because I can play e4 at the right moment and just tap your rook. If you go rook a5, I cannot play e4 because you'll just cap capture this. But I can play uh, queen c6. 
now I have multiple threads. I'm threatening to come to C2. I'm threatening to come to F3. Um, and if you go rook C5, then I can go to F3. Rook D2? Even rook A1, maybe. Bishop B4, I just go rook C2 and then take on A4. I don't know. No. But do you, I mean, with rook D2, you are not given anything. Mm -hmm. When? Uh, there after queen f3. Ah, that's right. And uh, Okay, Jan has played uh, bishop a3, rook b5. Queen d7. Queen d7. Basically asking the rook where it's going to be. Rook c5. Rook c5. So... Jan will take here, and then Magnus will come here. The rooks support each other, and then knight f4 is coming out of the horizon. Maybe Jan is in trouble now. Or do you think the pawn will neutralize him long enough? So rook c5 has happened. I don't see any sensible move other than bishop b4. Except maybe e5. Because I'm threatening e4, and you don't actually have a threat. Maybe now rook c4. And coming back. Yeah? No, I meant to c5. But then queen b3 already, right? I don't know, at the very least black can go back, so yeah. this is not an improvement for white. That's true. Well, I wanted to go e5, but he's gone queen d7. Ah, because his idea is that after this, he okay. you cannot take the pawn on a4. So that's why he protected it with queen d7. So. But it could be this, uh, it it could be the same. Oh no, not real. So rook c5, and has he played bishop b4 yet? No. So he's oh, considering nothing. between bishop b4 and e5 probably. I do not see a third move, so I think it's just those two. Yeah, maybe just mm, let's put rook, yeah. rook c5 on the board. Yeah. So this is the current position. This is it. Do you feel like white is playing for a win? I think both of them are just dealing with whatever the position throws at them. I don't think... Uh, uh, because it's a very hard position to judge because of this material imbalance. And uh, they, they're they probably coping with events as they happen. That's my reading. I mean, I'm commentating and I'm coping with everything that's happening. So. <laughs> Okay, uh, bishop before is more direct, and after rook cc1, if you just bring the bishop back. Back where, e7? Or? Yes. But then I think the problem is you try to take that one. Queen b5. Rook c7. And if I'm getting to f7, maybe. I mean, you could always go queen a7. Yes, he has gone e5. So this is now the position. Okay, so e5. What has white got?
I mean, this is a textbook example of how difficult it is to control a queen that's rampaging all over the place because the other pieces have to, co it's so difficult for them to coordinate. Uh, yes, if white could trade this knight for the bishop, it would, uh, it would have yes, been of course. great. So less than two minutes for, for the remaining five moves. The first time trouble. First time trouble in this match. Really? They haven't had a... Ah, they, no. been, they got to move 40 once in a, in a not a very exciting position. So this is... No, game two trouble. was very unclear. Uh, but but uh, it's not in time pressure. Yeah. But not in the time pressure. One minute. <laughs> and we are at... Oh, it's moved 30... What? 35. 35, yeah. Okay. But still five, five moves. Five moves in one minute. Even for Magnus, that's... Blitz. Uh, Rook went back. But wha how far back? C C C2. Uh, what is the point of Rook C2? If I go E4, he wants to go Rook 8. No. He wants to go Knight B2. So I'm asking why he didn't go to C3, but he went to C2. Because after Bishop takes... Then the Rook is not under attack. Yeah, but the idea was to move anyway. Uh, what is this next move? Is it rook cc1? That he could do from c3. So I, I'm wondering if there's a point here. Maybe he wants. I thought knight b2, but then. What happens after e4? Then knight b2, and they are, of course, white is completely fine. So you can't do that. So bishop takes b4, probably. And then what? It has to be this, right? I don't simply I don't see any other move. But now you're winning a pawn. If you go bishop e seven, so maybe you have to poke the thing. Or you can go like this. Takes queen f five, knight d three, a three. But I would not play this position because knight is coming to f four. So. I probably have to get myself pinned. Wow, amazing stuff. It's so little. Well, Jan has more time. Oh, he's also down to three minutes. Jan has kept queen the tension with queen d5. Wait, I don't get it. Why didn't he just go rook c3 and get it over with? I guess we'll ask ourselves that after the time control because there's still probably quite some drama. Magnus looks a bit worried. Rook D2. So now black will play queen B3, obviously. Can we try something active with a knight C5, queen B4, rook D7? Well, it's very double-edged. Well, Maybe after queen B1. What is double-edged? After queen Maybe B1? Maybe it's yeah. one-edged. <laughs> yeah. Queen B3. Okay, that has happened. So 40 seconds for, for three moves. So basically less than 15 seconds for each. Magnus has gone rook 8 2. Yeah. Uh, now the threat is knight c5, queen b4, knight a4. Uh, but if uh, Jan plays e4, no, but that must be an awful move, no? So after rook a2, I think you have to take here. And then okay, the easiest the for me is kind this. Of, uh, out of danger, yeah. Well, Even, uh, that is, then we, now we are going to reach the question whether black can draw this. Yeah. I think black can because I will play queen f1 here. Yes, you always... Uh, and because your one rook will always be tied down to the f-pawn, I think I'm going to make it. E4 was played. <laughs> it was not so awful. <laughs> I apologize, but then why did he go to uh, why did he not go to f4? I apologize. Why didn't he go here? I thought bishop before. 
and the fruk dB2 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 yeah E4. Quincy. Ah, Quincy 3. Okay, they reached, uh, they reached move 40. Both of them got additional one hour, which is good news for both. And it seems like uh, Jan played his last move with five seconds on the clock. Yeah. Okay, is White winning now? He went back to the because there were so many moments which we can consider in yeah. the time trouble. Well, now that we're here, let's look at this one. Is white winning? Or not? What are our options? I, I would like to play this one, right? Uh, and then knight d2, knight c4. Yes. I mean, what will you go? e7, b4? If B4, uh, some rook C B2 might be very unpleasant, so you'll have to go here. Whereupon, if I want, I can rotate it around like this. I attack your pawn, you go here, I go here, threatening knight D4, and I get I, to F4. I already now start to understand what you want. <laughs> I just look at this knight, and then I'm thinking, okay, what is the best square for the knight? And then I see, like, how is she's going to bring it there. <laughs> but why didn't he do this? This seemed as ah, quite yeah, okay. simple, wasn't it? Let's come to this. My I suggest. mean, is there any realistic chances for white? I mean, uh, white is going to do this and win the a pawn. But I just go queen c4. And when you go here, I go yeah. and s sit here. You could also do it with queen b1. Ah, okay. Oh, well, it's just the same. Sure. This is even uh, more direct. If I go here, does white have any serious winning chances here? Because if you advance your pawn, you never have uh, safety from checks. And if you don't... And some G4 ideas, how much are they mm. relevant? Maybe maybe it's harder. But what happened then in the end? They are now here. It's not the end, it's just the beginning. <laughs> yes. Of the new time control. Another one hour for 20 minutes. And once again, they have... Uh, okay, they both left after such a in such an intense uh, time trouble. But the players have left the building. <laughs> <laughs> Evacuation. Elvis, I thought. But anyway. Oh, there must have been so many dramatic twists and turns here. Let's go, yeah, let's go a few moves back and check all this, uh, all this uh, possibility. We were so here. Which, yeah, we were here. When queen d7. And then we liked e5, like rook c5, e5. Yeah, we liked but e5. But queen d5 was a very surprising move for us. Because we thought bishop takes b4. If uh, rook c c1, we did not see an alternative. Bishop d6, knight c5. I guess queen e7, knight takes a4. Ah, to be honest, I thought f5 and f4, but I see now that knight b6 is very unpleasant. Okay, so this is trickier than I thought. And if you go bishop e7, then you're kind of stuck proving that uh, this pawn is enough compensation for everything. Still, this position is perhaps better than the one Jan got. <laughs> okay, here we have Alejandro Ramirez giving an internet. He's super excited about what's happening on the board. I can't hear what he's saying, yeah, but I can much. just see it in his face and his uh, White, Black went Queen B3. Okay, now I'm going to... Just switch on the computer because I want to know what happened. So let's see if there was any... How well they played. Rook c2. Did that happen? Yeah, that was played. Oh, and apparently... Instead of uh, rook bishop c3, which you suggested, he played rook. Because the computer says actually bishop b4 is correct. 
Ah, and if rook c c1, but this is so computerish. It wants to play bishop a3, not allowing all the discoveries I was doing. Actually, that is the idea you mentioned. Yeah. Yes, it's I. A similar position, not in But this very one. briefly, and I, I didn't believe it myself. And queen g4. And this is now much better for black. So black missed a serious winning attempt. Um. Queen d5, white well, then went... I don't went know how much we can trust all this. Uh... You think I can trust you? You have a better alternative? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, all these numbers, because uh, sometimes the computer, he doesn't understand very well, uh, like some fortresses, or uh, he can give... Quite a high evaluation in the position, which is actually yeah. just a dead draw. So, drive. as we mentioned that bishop b4, the computer feels it's a dead draw. I'm curious now because I suspect, yes, now the computer says white is winning, but not in the way Magnus did it. If rook dc2, it says white is winning. Oh, but rook dc2 is a very smart move. Yeah. It's basically everything is stuck the queen on b4 and the bishop on a3. And uh, what the computer wants is to do that. And uh, rook c3. Mm -hmm. Well, now the queen doesn't come to f1. I think it's critical. Yes. So um, that was but just at the last minute, knight e4. No, but j and what's the evaluation now? Yeah. Uh, can I still... Uh, could you please still... Sure. Like this position after knight a4? Mm -hmm. If we take on a4? No, instead of knight e4, if uh, rook dc2? Yeah. Uh, then f5. Knight a4. Uh, we take. And you mean this? Uh, this or queen b5. And put it on f1 like we did before. And how to make progress here? Ah, no, it's Zook Swang. I, yeah, yeah. I will go here. And then the king can't move. And, uh, well, but only if I play f6, but if I... Yeah, but why not rook a6? So it's already ah, like right, the king right. h7 yeah, yeah. rook f6. So the point is you go rook a6 here. Yes, so if queen moves, then we bring the king to, to g2. To and uh, Well, I don't d1. know if queen d1, whether that still works. No, then I, I kick you out this way. Oh, yeah. And I take over sure. these files. So this what happens now is you go here. I bring the other rook back. Then they can take Kick you out. Maybe queen and f3. Then, yeah, so I, what you could do is and go queen f3 here. But once again, I bring this rook. Then I take the king out. And I um, then bring a rook to there d2, for instance. There's only uh, one idea with king h7. And if you play immediately king g1, maybe f4. Yes. But, but if I do it this way, you, you go king head 7. Uh, you can still play first rook d2. Maybe I can do rook e1. And then rook d2, king g1, and slowly disentangle. But anyway, this is clear that white is uh, breaking through. So rook dc2 was a big, big advantage. And uh, Jan missed this one. No, not this uh, one. This queen g4 idea. Instead of queen d5, bishop b4, rook c c1. And now this fantastic move, bishop a3. Mm. Apparently, they still did pretty well. It's not like they missed two, three wins or something like that. Oh, it's look at this. It's like the the arbiter, he gave him the score sheet. The to, fill up, he, yeah. to fill up, yeah. To fill up the most he missed in the time trouble. Sorry about that. Uh, knight e4, uh, queen b3. No, he didn't go queen b3, did he? No, he did play queen b3. It and was then white the last one. dc2? No, I didn't do anything. Queen b3 moved 40, ah, then okay. they left uh, right, the board, and uh, Magnus so just here we came. Are. I mean, I still think this is great Close for white. But let's see how realistic that. I cannot go here because this move wins on the spot. So I have to go back, all the way back. Bishop e7, let's say. 
In fact, I, I, don't, I could have 92 as well. Because but you wanted to do it with 93 earlier. Yeah, well, I wanted to get the 92 E2. Yeah. But it has to be said that now there's a pawn on A3, and this is going to distract at least one piece. But after 92, you cannot go to B4, because I have rook C4 winning on the spot. So after 92, you'd go B f queen B5. And then you want to bring the knight to D4? Yes. Or what? I wanted to do that. And then go back to E2 anyway. <laughs> so I'm not doing this thing. But white must have very serious chances now. This is one of the crucial elements in a, in a match. Both the players probably went back. One of, both of them may have realized they even missed things. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is the position in front of them now. So, uh, you ha especially Jan has to, even if he has seen this idea of bishop a3 and queen g4, he's got to forget about it and defend this position because that position's gone. Yeah, but how it's to forget it? But, uh, some, sometimes it still sticks in your mind. Especially when it was like uh, really winning or losing. It's perfectly understandable that you're very disappointed, but uh, if you're annoyed, I think you, you, it's very hard to defend this endgame well. So you have to get a grip and uh, go on. It's very hard. I, usually it's a good time to take a nice break. Five minutes, just sit in your cabin, try to calm down and then come back because... Uh, the dreaded 41st move, one of the most, uh, one of the moves where the most blunders occur mm -hmm. after the time control. Very typical. So, it's like you're becoming relaxed. Finally, you got uh, additional time to think, and then uh, you make something like really bad. Exactly. So now Magnus will give this a good think. Rook d c two. So is it good to spend more time on move 41? At least, I think, two, three minutes to calm down, and then you spend as much time as necessary. I mean, the problem is you can, and I've done this mistake myself, is in move 41, you invest a lot of time, and then suddenly when, when move 50 comes along and you have low time, you're at low time again. So there is no complete formula, but I think uh, rook dc2 and... I think white is for choice, but But it's very impressive, Magnus. I, Rook D C two seems fairly obvious, but he's showing his discipline. He will think, he will uh, mm -hmm. finish his thing, and then go from there. Knight D two, Queen B five. Is there a way forward here? I could easily go here as well. And now my knight is already on e2. So let's try to see this position. What are the prospects? I can go bishop d6, which solves knight uh, f4 for the moment. Actually, maybe it doesn't, because I can play knight f4 anyway. Uh, could you try bishop c1 in the starting position? Or it's still knight d2? Well, then you have uh, knight c5. And I win okay. the a4 pawn, so. I can't go to b4 because of rook c2, so I have mm -hmm. to go here. In fact, you cannot even stop this, because the problem is if we do that, then I take. A rook a1, a rook a2. Well, yes, but if assuming your queen is hugging my two rooks, I go there. Now, any move which doesn't attack both rooks uh, loses, so it has to go to c4. Whereupon I come here. Now I'm threatening to mm -hmm. capture here, and you cannot attack both rooks. So whichever you rook, if you at, if you do this, this rook, rook goes here, it goes here, and then we collect the pawn. If you go to b3, I go rook a1, rook d2. So um, 
if you go here instead, then I go here. Yeah, that's what I meant. And then uh, do that. So it's just not going to work, yeah. So after knight f4, probably black has to play something like king h6. Or uh, there is one other prospect, which is um, bishop e5. And you say, if you take my pawn, fine, you'll get that pawn. But now I'm going to trap the rook on a2. So, um, but what happens with knight d4, I don't know. It's pretty unpleasant. Maybe but that is a great pawn on a3, so. And now it's very difficult to reshuffle no, your actually pieces. Actually, it's, it's still lost. It's still lost. It's. What about if we get into the end game? Like, if we, from this position, if we give this uh, one of the rooks for, for, a3. for, for a3. That's yeah. what I was about to say. That I know um, the knight will go to f4, I win h5, and all that. It's just um, very pleasant, right? I just knight f4, rook d5 construction. Right. And if so I don't know how to, after that I don't know what to do, but, uh, well, if f5, then I can play rook d4, knight e2, rook f4, knight. So we can show the lines. Assuming, just how to see How quickly you built all this <laughs> in your head. Yeah, well. Okay, knight f4, rook d5, I could imagine, but. Let's say this happened, then we are now considering the prospect of, uh, yeah, he has gone rook d c. No, he's gone rook a c2. Brilliant. Uh, so... That means he is looking at very realistic attacks, the either d8, c8, or d7, c7. Well, that is a surprise. I thought it has to be rook dc2 because it controls everything, but here we are. Well, it's, it more or less remains the same time of the position. Yeah. So it's just the question of how they are going to get there. After rook ac2, we, we can also have the idea of bringing the knight to f4 with the knight c3, knight to knight yeah. f4. So but what happens after bishop b4? It's either I don't think he did this to play rook e2. Ah, but then it's winning rook like this, rook b2. Yeah, rook b2. Queen a3 and rook a2. I don't know, winning is too strong maybe. Because I have queen c1, oh, then rook d4 is winning, so... After rook a c2, it might be just a... So black should head back somehow and... Uh, or to f8? Yes. He'll have to play a bishop to f8 to play a3. And this pawn on a3 is the only hope. But now already I can play rook. Yeah. Okay, bishop f8. Instantly. Very good. And Jan is pretending it's all under control when it isn't, but what can you do? It's a tough position. I can almost imagine what it's like. You, have, you know you've spoiled something. You don't know exactly what, but you're 100% sure you've spoiled something. But you have to force yourself to defend this and what is very dreary position. To do? I wish I knew. <laughs> No, because I wish some, I knew. some players <laughs> they they can pretend and uh, you wouldn't even notice and some players are uh, it's really visible on their face that something went wrong. I guess I'm in the I can pretend, but inside I'm killing myself. So that's probably my category. But that's a better category than when you're showing that. Why? I think it's uh, as long as your head is not working, it hardly matters if your opponent knows or not. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, bishop f8, he will at least put a pawn on a a3. And um, there are still quite some technical issues with that one. So we'll see how this goes. There are some active moves like rook c6, but then all the pieces are unprotected, and that's what I don't like about it. Yeah, I'll go a3. You'll go knight f6? I'm not sure. Okay, I have only knight there, but I will not checkmate with a knight. <laughs> 
I mean, already queen b5 is unpleasant, right? Because I control the square, I think. And my rook is overloaded, defending mm -hmm. this knight, and so on. So, bishop f8 is, is good. And that Jan found it so quickly suggests that in those few seconds, he was able to uh, think, or oh, maybe he's just sees the obvious move. So. No, maybe it's just the elimination method. Right. Where you're checking all the possibilities, and then when you see, okay, all the others are worse, so let's play this one, this one and right. whatever happens. But I preferred your move, Rook D6, because that well, was controlling was more, the pawn. Yeah. Mine was more tight. Just keep the rooks hugging each other and then move the knight round and round till something <laughs> happens. Uh, initially, I was impressed with Rook A C 2 because it seemed to think, but uh, after Bishop F8, I don't see the follow-up. What about Knight C5 now? Queen B5, Queen right? B5. Because if... No, even Queen B4 is possible. Because if I went here, which I thought was the move, then queen b1 attacks the other rook and I get a3. So, knight c5, queen b5 as well, I think. Magnus was about to play something. Mm -hmm. How's he going to do that? Do what? Uh, like, uh, move the knight somewhere to a stable place. Yeah, well, knight c5 is still a possible route, right? And we get back to my, my setup, except uh, the other way. So if I go queen b5, you come knight uh, d3, and we're back where we started. And then Well, it's similar. Yes, yeah, so I mean, I get to f4 is what I'm saying, but... another tweet here it comes from Peter Duggars three games in the world championship history is sock win versus uh, two rooks two draws one win for the two rooks Kramings win in game one versus Leco in 2004 draws in Spassky Petrosian and uh, uh, Anand Topalov <laughs> yes, do you know anything about the last game game nine I was I was so winning but I still don't see it I mean it was so difficult with these rooks spinning around there were many wins which were obvious, but I got so confused. But my position was much looser. My rooks had no secure outposts. Mm -hmm. Like here, d4, yes. f4 are all uh, great positions for the rook. I didn't have anything like that. Um, but it was still so winning. But it was amazing. Even uh, after they showed me the wins, it didn't seem easy. And the Kramer's game, I, I actually remember. Yeah, Kramer. Well, that was a textbook uh, win, so... It's like this one, uh, three versus three, right? Yes. Okay. I, I mean, I don't remember that well now, but I remember it was just the simplest form almost, in the, more or less the end of the variation. Yes, it was like just uh, a very good example of uh, how you should play with two rooks uh, when all the pawns are on one side, that uh, the rooks are just much stronger because they are attacking the pawn and uh, the queen simply has no targets. So just uh, you provoke one weakness, then you start attacking another pawn and uh, sooner or later uh, one of the pawns uh, is falling. And uh, unless you can defend the pawn endgame, then, uh, then it's lost.
Let's see if I've played. And that is the current board position. So. Queen B5 is the most reasonable, no? Yes. Okay, if after bishop c5 it's lost and uh, queen b1 is not possible, queen b4 just uh, stays under knight d3. Yeah. Okay. okay, so now I think Magnus will take a, a nice hard think as how to crack this fortress. But. Um, Incredibly dramatic game. Uh, one of the most exciting games, really. Yeah, with ups and downs. Every and move and so on. Let's take a break. <laughs> now, finally. Break for us after the time drop. After the previous break was rudely interrupted by the players. So I think now we can take a nice break. Okay, let's they take should, a nice should break. They should take our skill. They should take us uh, wishes into consideration before plunging into a, a time control like that. But good. <laughs> so... Okay, let's come back after a short break and uh, see the end of this fascinating game. The FIDE World Championship Dubai 2021 is followed by fans all around the world. And in Russia, a chess-hungry country and home of challenger Jan Nepomnichi, it is followed with a special enthusiasm. FIDE, together with the Chess Federation of Russia, have partnered with GUM, the historical department store in Moscow, to create a fan zone right in the heart of the Red Square.
And uh, welcome back, everyone. I believe that uh, now we have reached the final stage of the game, and it's game six of the World Championship match between Magnus Carlsen and Jan Nepomniši. Many things have happened in the time. Trouble was going with ups and downs, and uh, now we are here in this end game. Rook D3 was the last move played, but I think that before we went for the break, uh, we actually missed a couple of moves. So let's go through them. Yes. So. Um Maybe after the time travel, okay. like Bishop F8 was the last move, and yep. Knight C5 is the move that uh, we were anticipating, and it was played. After that, Queen B5. Yeah. So Magnus has to retreat. Knight A3. Three. And now, finally, the knight goes to the golden spot, but then uh, Queen A5, Rook A2, Bishop B4 happened. The problem for Magnus is if he goes for the H5 pawn, suddenly there is no way back for the rook. Um, he could capture this and capture this, but black plays queen b3 and wins the rook, and after that it's a draw. Yeah, you have to be very careful with this a pawn because, yes. uh, well, if so white, white is too much into... have to do this, right? <laughs> and luckily for white, this is probably a draw. But... Um, rook g5, you meant? No, I meant rook f5. And then just rook f3, king g2, and it's a kind of fortress, I thought. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, the exact order I will uh, discuss later, but I, something along those lines. But there's no need for that. Magnus is going to keep the both rooks. He'll make it very hard to... Another thing is that let us make a... Let's throw in a blunder. And then I take here. You take here. I take here. This no, may be just, one for white. We just explained the idea, yeah. which is... Basically, White's main idea, and it's to give uh, the rook for the bishop and the a pawn. And we think that uh, it may be winning for White because the knight on f4 is very stable, and now White can think about different constructions. The pawn on h5 is the vulnerable pawn, which we may win. And uh, White's next plan is to bring the rook to d5. Yes. So, um, black can go here, White goes here. Then... Next move, knight supporting the rook, the rook comes here. Second pawn, then you slowly advance, and you can still win this. Uh, but Jan has, can be careful that uh, not to allow this very easily, because, for instance, if um, I go here... Now, by the way, I think this is a better move than rook a3, but just to illustrate the point, if you do that carelessly, then black will do this and achieve a draw. So um, they will try to maneuver, outmaneuver each other. And uh, White's aim is to get this, sacrifice the exchange for this pawn on a3, and then win the ending slowly. Black's aim is not to let that happen. Black would, I think, even rather lose this pawn, uh, but keep some counterplay here than to, in the other way. And. Uh, Let's see how they go about it. So Magnus has gone to rook d3, and he will take his time and see how to um, break through here. <coughs> you know, I, I actually had a similar idea of giving the h5 pawn, because when, when we were on the break, uh, just how is going to do that? Uh, after knight d3, I think. Yeah. No, 43. I thought about being active. What a surprise. <laughs> Bishop d6 or what? Uh, no, no I... I thought about some idea was queen b1, knight f4, bishop b4. Mm -hmm. But then uh, rook, a rook b2, b yeah? Rook b2, queen <coughs> e1, uh, knight d3, yeah. No, knight d3 you can take on d2, right? Ah, okay. So I play rook e2, and now it's winning. If you go here, I have knight d5 winning. So that's probably mm -hmm. the way to finish it off. Yeah, so Jan did it in a good way. Well, he hasn't done it yet, but... Uh, okay, he has the queen on a5, he's protecting the pawn on a3, he doesn't give his h5 pawn. But I think the point Magnus is uh, aiming for is that now black has to make a move. So he either has to move the bishop, which might spoil things a little bit, or he moves the queen, in which case I take the h5 pawn for free and come back. Or what? Maybe the bishop move doesn't have any consequences because uh, 
But if the bishop moves back, the problem for Jan is that white can go here, collect the pawn with check, and the d2 square is available to the rook to come back. So the bishop has to stay on b4. Um, the queen, as I mentioned, has to be somewhere sensible. f5 is loses, but queen b5 is possible. But if white now captures, we have queen b2, as I mentioned. Yes, I think I've shown this line already. But after queen b5, I can play rook b3, waiting. And if queen c4, I can capture this again, because there isn't an easy fork here. But if queen a4... a4, then uh, white cannot make progress. So a delicate balance and uh, still some way to go. I don't see how the fortress is going to be broken, but um, this guy this built his house in Norway by winning such games. So <laughs> that's where it is. He just bought it. He didn't build it. <laughs> well, he bought it with the, the points he won from this <laughs> these kinds of positions. So. And king h6, uh, well, king h6 is staying under the check. That's why I don't like it. I mean, the check yeah. after rook d5. Yeah, after king h6, it could be but dangerous, but the rook doesn't have a way back. Yeah, but still, the rook is not coming back. Yeah, but because the d2 square is covered. But on the other hand, I don't know what happens after knight uh, d3 or knight d5. I suspect this one is not going to be enough, but... Uh, oof, what a confusing position. Okay. So king h6 might be playable. Uh, still, I prefer queen b5. Yeah. Uh, okay, I prefer <laughs> queen b5. So Jan went king at 6 saying, come and get my h5 pawn with check. So. Is h2 the best square for the king? Or is it better to put it? Okay, it's it's always a problem because uh, on G2 it's under the checks. On G1 maybe it will also be some check on the back rank. Yes, well, that is one of the principal themes here that um, the king, while it's quite safe, if the black queen ever attacks F2, it'll be hard for it to go somewhere. Imagine that, again, we will make some random moves. Uh, he's gone king at six. But let's say he had gone queen c5. And just bear with me here. You go queen c4. And the idea will be to harass the pawn. In this case, white has this move, completely safeguarding everything. But my point is, if the knight were not here, then king g2, I go back with check, come back with check, go back, and you never get the uh, ability to escape from this position. So, um, but king at six is, seems to work tactically. And um, Jan, when he's confident, he's confident. So I don't think he's missed anything here. And let's see what happens now. To be honest, I didn't see Jan being not confident. <laughs> that is maybe true as well. Even when things go really bad for him, he, he still looks quite confident. You didn't play so many games with Jan as you played with Magnus, yeah? Nowhere near. It's like two times, three times more? I, mean, I don't I mean remember, but it's basically Magnus. a handful. With Magnus, we have multiples of that. Magnus is about to make a move. What happens for knight d5 now, actually? What exactly is he going to play for this move? Bishop f8, maybe? Because if knight d yeah, knight takes, I have 
queen f5, a6, but then you have rook d8. And if I go queen f5, again you have rook d8. Does this work? Let's see. King h6, knight d5. How does black uh, defend this pawn? Because black has to move his uh, bishop. If knight takes before, it's game over. So. Yes, but the knight on f6. It might not come back in a hurry, but let's see how that works. Well, I believe. Maybe. Oh no, it's also right. I thought about bishop c5 and then queen a6. Uh, rook d1 was played, in fact. Bishop a6. Then can I take here? Yeah, and then after queen a6, uh, you can uh, play rook d5. And maybe no, the point is then queen c4. Rook d5, queen c4. And the rook c3? Then bishop b4. Bishop b4. Okay, so that might be what uh, gave him pause for thought. Also, maybe queen e6 is possible. Well, it's dangerous to bring your knight to f6. Yeah. Especially when your rooks are not connected. Sure. Okay, so... Uh, Magnus, of course, went rook d1. So he might be going for some very slow plan to get here. What could he be doing? If like I go rook. queen a4... No, maybe he wants uh, to play rook d1, then knight e2, knight d4, knight c3. Yeah. Okay, let's try this. If I go rook b1, where do you go? Bishop d6. See, bishop d6 is nice. Yeah. If Magnus moves his knight, you get a free pawn and you can come back. So, rook b1, bishop d6. And how is white going to break through? I still don't see it, but... Can you try rook a1? Okay, I go here. King G1. Well, I wait. What am I supposed to do? Knight E2. Ah, maybe I can wait in such a way that... No, but anyway, you'll have knight E2, D4. So I don't have any hope. I go here. Knight E2. I go here. Knight d4. I don't know, queen d3, queen a4, I don't know which of the two. Maybe Let's go to d3 for this. Yes, because you need to have bishop c3 after knight c2. But I have it here mm -hmm. also. If you do this, I go here, right? Yeah, then knight e3, you take and queen b3, and you want to say that I can't... Uh, I not only can you not, I think I'm I winning the knight very quickly, but it's a draw anyway. By the way, white has such a good position that it's a draw anyway. He can do this, and then do that. Yeah, and just stay rook d4, and rook f4, the rook, uh, forever. This is a fortress. So white can blunder a lot in draw, so there is no Nepo win happening today. Unless, uh, well, the insane happens. But the question is, can, okay, don't, don't can this work? Yeah. So Magnus has gone rook d a1, and now let's see if he has a winning plan here or not. But what is the other winning plan rather than trying to, to take on a3? Yeah. If you try, okay, it was rook b1, bishop d6, and then queen c4 is coming. What? No, I just thought like rook b1, the, the move you suggested earlier. Uh, now if I try to do the same, like with king g1, queen uh, yeah, queen c4. But I can do this anyway. 
Yeah, but what is the difference? Nothing. I mean, well, you'll have to play queen b3 or something and wait. Yeah. Oh, you, in fact, you're threatening queen c1 check, so it doesn't matter. But Sorry about that move, but anyway, I go here and I wait. But this has happened and this is the current position, so let me promote it all the way up. Yeah, so this is the current position. Okay. He's gone bishop d6. King, King G1. G1. Okay, that's what I that's what I suggested and you refused. <laughs> what did I refute? Like this whole idea. Because ah, I wanted to have this break construction. The knight, but I, I didn't see King how to G1. break through. Yeah, sure. Let's see, maybe Magnus can do it better. So black can just stay with the queen, black can stay with the bishop, and it's more or less the same. You know, I kind of started thinking, what would happen if it was the knight on b5 or the knight on c4? <laughs> <laughs> Instead of having the bishop on d6. But then with the queen, maybe queen could try to create some checkmate ideas. Like bring the knight to f3. Good luck. <laughs> Trying to make that happen. <laughs> and what if white had a light square bishop instead of the knight? <laughs> that oh yes, then it should be simply winning, because if I can, if I can. Unless okay, the bishop is unable to find its way back. H5. Put a bishop on a2 and then a rook on d2 or e2 supporting it and then the other rook is free to attack f7. No? Oh, wonderful. I mean, still there are details. I can keep harassing you here and there, but it, I feel that they're just details at that stage. So we have discussed all the possible well, situations. We have not only discussed all the possible situations in this game, we have substituted each piece with another piece and given it a shot <laughs> as well. So a thorough analysis of all fortresses here. Ah, Magnus once said he doesn't believe in fortresses, so let's see if he can prove it. But it's not a fortress? It's a kind of fortress. Actually, it's a fortress for both sides. If white <laughs> loses a rook, it'll probably be a draw. <laughs> if white wins something, it'll probably be a draw as well. <laughs> no, you know when he saves the game, then he believes in fortresses. Yeah. Okay, so queen b3 has happened. But he said it after the game that he couldn't win. When? I think it was after his game with Karyakin. When he played with black pieces, he had some kind of two bishops, and uh, he thought it was winning. Ah, right, right. And then, uh, like, journalists at the press conference, they asked him, okay, but do you believe in fortresses? And uh, he was so disappointed, he said, no, I don't believe in fortresses. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Leave I, me in I had this. forgotten the background to this, but anyway. I'm not sure, but I think it was that case. Sure, I remember Karyakin pulled off some great miracle saves in that yeah. match, yeah. So uh, he played with the bishop and the knight, and uh, the position was really very difficult to defend. But it was some kind of a fortress, and uh, too many pawns on the board, so it was difficult to penetrate. And uh, by miracle, Karakin managed to save it, and then uh, Carlson, he couldn't believe his eyes. Okay, Magnus. What, what's the idea in this position? Knight, 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 it's okay. Knight, so we far? We, we already have it. We have everything <laughs> already, all the moves already. 
you're watching the future on our score sheet. <laughs> And it's more number 50, so we still have 10 moves until the next time control. Time control. So uh, Magnus has 23 minutes and Jan has 33. But well, now it won't be such a stressful time trouble even if they get there. Oh, new tweet from Matthew Sadler. Uh, looking for something to do while Magnus and Jan take a well-earned rest. How about trying the crystal engine, a fork of stockfish specialized in fortress detection <laughs> and unusual tactics? This video helps you through the technical challenges steps by steps. Or you could get a life. That's also possible <laughs> instead of studying fortresses all night long. <laughs> yeah, thanks to our producer who is helping us and bringing up all the interesting tweets. Uh, that was a tweet from yesterday. But yesterday there was no game. Right. Predicting the future. Major Solder. Well done. So here we analyze bishop b4. But there might be alternate moves, like king at 7 sure. might work and so on. So I don't know if it's so critical now. King h7. Uh, or you said King Jisan, King Aitan, yeah? King Hitzan. So that there is no check on F5. F5, right. Yeah. You see, uh, the knight is still <laughs> 100 meters away from F5 and giving a check, but which is already, okay, let's let's uh, make some prophylaxis against it. I know, I know what knights can do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So the main thing black uh, should be sure about in this position, uh, black should know how to meet this idea knight d4, knight, d knight c2, what to do after that. Queen d3, uh, this we didn't predict. No, uh, we have to erase the entire score sheet. <laughs> but the problem is that after, is it the problem? After knight d4, bishop g3, rook a3. Ah, you think this is his point, but rook a3 must be winning. Three, yeah. Yeah, doesn't work. No, I think he's just, uh, maybe he'll even play king at 7 here and right back where we started. Because his idea is you can always meet that with bishop e5. And exactly now when this rook is overloaded, I can attack the other rook. I thought it's more straightforward with the queen on b3, but anyway. So queen uh, d3 knight has d4 happened, played. knight d4 has been played. And... If we try rook c1 after king h7. Maybe now this bishop takes g3 works. Mm -hmm. Yes. King h7. That is the current position. The good thing is that both of them started to play fast. Well, basically, if one of the sides is in trouble, then this side is usually spending more time. I think they both... So maybe they both understand that it's mm, quite close to a draw. But what a game. It was a fantastic game. The most interesting game so far. Yes, by far. But it, it, 
I think before Rukay C8, it was going in the other direction and suddenly it flared up. And uh, I think Jan's judgment was essentially correct that you can give this thing, but uh, what a risky decision turned out to be because it's so easy to go wrong, it seems. Yeah, let's see what Magnus will play. Mm -hmm. Okay, Rook E1 is uh, safer, but what's the idea? Well, after Rook E1, I can kick you with Bishop B4 maybe. And then we start again all over yeah, again. Yeah, but even if you don't do anything, yeah. what am I going to do? <laughs> if you must go white hide this Rook on C2, uh, then white brought the Rook to A1. <laughs> King, King H2. H2, okay. That's nice. Can I go queen e4? No, I can't. Because of rook <laughs> That would be careless. But I think, let's say, bishop b4 but is playable, right? But bishop f8, bishop b4. Yeah. Bishop b4. Bishop b4, knight c2, maybe? Queen e4. Queen e4, isn't that a blunder? That's a blunder. No, but uh, there is queen Rook h4 three check. And king g1. Well, Bishop g3. Fg3, queen g3. Well, I, I mean, I, this can't have been his idea to allow this. Okay, check. Well, well, let's make sure that we are not missing something here, that maybe, can he take this? No, he can't take this. Is it uh, impossible for the knight to get to e2? If I go here. And if I hang around here, how will you play knight e2, I'm wondering. But that can't be his idea. So it is queen h4 check, king g1. We can also try it. But what about queen no, g4 here? Uh, Though I don't see why he would enter this at all. He seemed to have a fortress anyway. But, okay, we see something we don't. Let's see. Rook a5, then I have h4. Now you can also take on G3 and take on E3 in the very end. Mm. But also H4 is completely fine. Yeah. But this I'm not sure, because if I take here, you take here, I go here. You take here? Are you sure about this, if I take... This and maybe you attack it with the king. King g6, so h4 was king your idea? King g5, yeah. But um, also I could go knight e2 and then I think you're in trouble. Because I will kick you with the other rook and then uh, this knight will protect me for most checks, right? So yeah, the knight is the best defender to the king. The knight is the best. <laughs> <laughs> so is that a real chance? So king g1, we go queen g4, rook a5, and h4. Maybe that is just fine. I still have knight f5, by the way. H g3, knight d6. Also h3. Or maybe h3 didn't work. h3, rook a4. But I think it's going to be mate before that. 
Made for home, sorry. Well. Yeah. Okay, but we absolutely do need that. Is this, uh, uh, this is not a draw either, because I can, but I can well, go here. Yeah. That's what I wanted initially, and then I saw this idea was H3. Okay, here I cannot take anything, so I would have to bring a rook back. Uh, maybe queen h3, is it a better place? Well, I'm ah, sorry, brilliant, you can brilliant. H yes, H2. that's very nice, because if I take this, you take this and you simply take the queen knight back. Yes, brilliant. Very good. So maybe this is a draw, but boy, it's a fun try. They are both quite quite amused by this game. Yes. Will man will Magnus go for it? Or if he will see that uh, it doesn't lead anywhere, he would prefer something else. Uh. The question is what what else? The pawn is hanging. Mm -hmm. Uh after Nothing else. The queen is coming back to d3 on the next move, right? So you can't. No, but after king g1, now there is bishop g3. Mm -hmm. So maybe he can't. Ah, take right. Up. Okay, he can play that position like king g1, bishop g3, f take g3, queen s3, rook f2. Well, then but then better, but then better draw, to yeah. take it. Maybe queen e4 was the most precise move in that position. Yes, maybe, maybe it can. After all, because After now it's all. forcing something. Sure. He doesn't have to, you know, play additional 50 moves and see uh, what Magnus can do with all these pieces. Yes. Not so much, you know. Okay, maybe. Not that uh, rook a3, bishop a3. I'm 100% certain that it's winning, but of course you you lose a second pawn and then you have to try, must be quite painful. So it is queen h4 check, king g1, and then just come back to e4, right? No, we're going to g4 in the end. Isn't that what we're doing in the end? That's what you agree for. You and me, yeah. But then when we come here, maybe we'll find something else. Sure. And then prefer the other option. Can I go for king? example? No, my rook is still hanging, yeah. Queen H. He, he has, has played rook taken. A3. Okay. I mean, Magnus can do what he wants because his position is not running any risk. But nonetheless, um, we'll now see. Well, at least it's a kind of fun finish to this. Okay, queen h4 will be played more or less instantly, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, can we try anything there after queen h4? King, no, king g2, queen a4, knight f3, then h4 is coming. Oh, bishop a3 and h4. Bishop a3 and h4, maybe black is winning. No, it's a draw. Draw? Um, rook a2. 
or uh, I just wait. You play H3, checking H3 takes, and then I come back king H2. Yeah, they didn't have the king to G1. Then just try and rook D2, rook D4, yeah. Then I don't know. <laughs> All the roads lead to a draw. You and me, we're not even, we're not only finding the draws in this game, we're inventing new positions <laughs> and trying to figure out if they're drawn as well. Okay, <laughs> Queen H4, King G1. The good thing is that we are running out of material, yeah? We can't miss much. <laughs> yes. <coughs> the same for the players. Any difference if black plays queen h3 here? Wait, queen g4, why are we playing rook h5? What about rook um, a4? <coughs> is that what we should play? Because of h4, I just move my knight, and then I take on h4 with check. Uh, where? Oh, okay, you can move to sit down. So I think you have to, instead of queen h4, maybe queen h3. But, but then knight f, no, no, maybe queen h3, actually. And then rook a5. And maybe now I can play bishop e5 because it pins it, and then play h4 on the next move. And instead of rook a5, can I have the idea with knight e2, knight f4? Where? Uh, just one move. Yeah. No, before it. No, queen h3. Ah, okay, the rook is high. Yes. So we think queen h3 is probably a draw, because queen h4, rook a4 is very unpleasant. That's very unpleasant, we think. <coughs> or at least we it's not a We can also check uh, bishop, bishop g3 here. Yeah, bishop g3, I think I will take. Take an f1. And uh, h4? h4 or? Yeah. Knight e2. Uh, queen f3. H3. He's going to E4 instantly. Not instantly, but pretty fast. Instantly. Instantly. <laughs> <Okay>. Confidently. <laughs> Wait. But now what happens with Rook A4? Why, the question is, why is Jan doing this? What conceivable reason is there for him to do this? <coughs> if I go rook Kay. a4, why isn't white better? Well, white can be worse. The only question is if there are some winning idea, uh, winning chances. All right, let's put it another way. How what is? Uh, how can you stop me getting what I want? Uh, bishop e5. What is so funny going around? I don't know about that. <laughs> we, we thought this was a simple draw and then suddenly... But wait, rook a4, sorry, with queen e4, rook a4, now suddenly I don't know. Yeah, he's gone rook, rook a4. a4. Uh, 
It's also unfortunate that the king is on h7. Yes, because, because of after h4, h4 every time, yeah. you, even if you have some tricks of like attacking the knight, uh, for example, after knight. Black attacks the knight, but white takes his pawn with check. And so that is the problem with uh, the king on h7. I think now black is in trouble. This is no longer a fortress. He's got to. Uh, I'd be surprised he didn't play queen h3. Yeah. I thought Queen H3 was killing it, right? No, I suddenly thought I'd seen something, but... Uh, wait. So, 12, mo uh, 12 minutes for Magnus for the remaining 5 moves. Well... In the previous time control, he had uh, two and a half minutes for five moves. Now mm -hmm. he has 12 minutes. He's improving. Yes, he's getting much better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really curious for Jan's reaction. When he comes back and sits at the board, he's going to, is he going to realize what's happening? Or? Okay, he's coming back. He writes down the move. And no reaction. <laughs> but a couple of really very impulsive decisions. and bizarre decisions. There was no need for Queen E4 in the first place. King H2, I don't really think White was making progress in any way. I could play King H8 if I wanted. So, and then can it nine? <laughs> can, where is the square? <laughs> yeah. But so this was, I mean, it suddenly changes the structure, but we realize that afterwards that doesn't matter. But even here, there's uh, all sorts of problems. Queen g4 loses to rook a4, bishop g3 isn't convincing, but we thought, and maybe we are wrong, that queen h3 probably did the trick. And then just in his un usual blitz style, he just plays queen e4, and after rook a4, I... And one what question. am I missing? I, I think he's in trouble. After queen h3, uh, could we try knight e2? Oh, that's what we might... No, h4, knight e4, and then queen g4. Ah, okay, you take that. No, I take h4, the rook. Yeah. And knight f4, queen h4. Rook yeah, a3, and, h4, and I get h4, so I'm liquidating all the pawns down, yeah. But now he's in... Okay, bishop, bishop e5. Five. At least that makes some sense. Uh, what to do now? Shall I go knight e2? And? and now there is no h4. Having said that, without a white h4 pawn, it's always unstable. So if I do this, let's say, and you go rook a2, I can still ask you, what is your winning plan? Or maybe I should put my queen in a slightly more active square. Um, perhaps queen d3. Rook a2, and then say, well, what is your winning plan? I don't know, king g7, but... After queen d3, we could play knight f4. Ah, don't okay. know how important it is. S okay, some square in <laughs> queen here, check. Rook a2, queen d1 check, or b1 check, and then... But no, it, it must be lost now. Lost? Oops. I mean, slowly. I just rook h4, knight f4. It doesn't look like Jan is uh, worried. Well, once you blunder, sometimes you pretend you didn't. But I think I 
after okay for i mean this can't have been his intention it doesn't make sense after queen h3 we were out of running out of pawns this cannot be Jan's intention h4 is not available f4 is not available no, everything that, is that stuck it's much, yeah. much easier queen h3 and h4 yeah. very direct yeah queen h3 we thought not a trivial draw but a fairly comfortable draw and uh, here we are So, okay, we'll definitely get to another time control, which is after move 60. Then the players get 15 minutes more, and then they will play on increment, so it's less stressful. So, them or us? Yeah, and uh, Magnus will play this until the morning, I guess. <laughs> so, maybe we should think about our food, bring it here. <laughs> I managed to nibble something. You can as well. <laughs> it's probably a good you can time wait. Yeah, I can I'm wait going. Here. I'll come back. It's good for you that you had some lunch. Which food is your favorite? <laughs> I think you can see from Jan's expression that he knows he has taken a trivial draw and actually uh, made it very hard for himself. There was no reason to do this at all. Absolutely no reason to do this. Okay, so Queen C2 played. Queen C2 and uh, Rook 1 to A2. Well, that's uh, what we had. Yeah. Now very likely queen d1. Yeah. Or maybe queen b1, but it's more or less the same. Maybe queen b1, uh, king h2 and king g7. So this has happened on the board. And you're thinking what, queen b1 check? Uh, yes. King h2, king g2, sorry. King G7. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me go. Rook D2. I wanted some knight f4 h4 trick. Mm hmm. Yeah, you saw it. Yeah, in fact, that's <laughs> why I'm trying to get in rook a4 first. And then... Uh, Queen a1. Okay.
but admittedly you can play h4 now and i'm forced to take with the pawn but and after queen d5 maybe you're forced to play uh, no i mean h4 g g take h4 then queen d5 then i play e4 no or f3 mm -hmm. after e4 queen is no wait actually ah no this is correct i do this queen here i play e4 okay queen d3 and knight g3 maybe I thought queen is six. Okay. But it's more or less the same. Just that after knight g3, I'll have queen g4. Mm -hmm. But maybe you could play f3, or you yes. don't like it at all. No, um, f3 was fine as well. And this is not a. There is just no hope here, I think. Queen C2, Rook A2. This is the current position. Now it's good for Y that all the pieces are protected and yes. there are all these squares like F4, D4, H4. Okay, I think this is going to be a long conversion one. So, Okay, now he's hugging the rooks tight. Not letting one of the rooks escape to H4. So that is very important. And uh, the king is on g2, not yet. I think the first stage of the plan should be to bring the knight around here so that we stop h4 and then try to liberate one of the rooks. But, uh, but now there is a check. Change it to play. Well, might maybe as well he wants to bring check. the queen after queen d5. He wants to play king h2. Still, if uh, king g2, queen d5, king h2, black can play king g7. With the idea of h4. Yes. So white is not on time to uh, to make the move with the knight. I think Jan should give this check on d5. Yes, he can because also start with king g7. The problem with that, but I thought, is that knight g1 f3 might be a. Yeah, but that's why I actually wanted queen d5 and uh, to move the king to h2. Yes, so it's important. I think your, your original idea was this one. And it must be said, Jan has found a good uh, setup with the rooks. The queen sitting on b3 and attacking both of them. Queen so queen d5. Check. Okay, at least he's playing better now. So after the last two or three moves, which I uh, he, he had a, he had a draw after queen h3. It's just time to shake hands, and instead he's working all over again. But who knows? Maybe objectively this is a draw also, just uh, yeah more problematic. Okay, we have reached another time control. At least the rest of the game will be fast because they don't get a lot of time. But we will now... Actually, we haven't reached. Oh, because we've been analyzing or what? It's more uh, 58. Ah, sorry. I, we, I went and analyzed with king g7. Okay. So it's queen b3, queen d2, and this is the position. You wanted to get some food. <laughs> yes, <laughs> no, well. no. Let's erase the time. I control. want to get a break anyway, but all right, we'll wait for two more minutes or two more moves at least. Oh, 
Okay, if he plays king g1, queen b3 is repetition. Uh, all the other moves he can't do. King h2 is the only move left. And after king h2, I am proposing king to g7. And okay, it doesn't look hopeless. No, it's true. Uh, in fact, with this, um, even though he's lost the h-pawn, it's only if white is able to disconnect the rooks. That is, rook a4, rook h4, and the other rook is free, that uh, this can be problematic. Otherwise, um, it's still very hard. But I still think queen h3 was, they would, they'd be home already. So this is quite a... Quite a careless uh, move, actually. At the end of a game in which he played very well in, in lots of areas. After king g1, maybe black is not even a force to repeat. Was queen b3, maybe... Queen d1 check. Maybe queen d1 check, king h2. Queen b3. <laughs> Yeah, Qu quite difficult to win the game. Yes. Okay, let's discuss maybe, I don't know, E4, the more we don't want to do, definitely we don't want to play E4. But at least uh, there are some changes after him. <laughs> but on the other hand, I'll also be able to play f5 somewhere. I don't know. Uh, still, the idea was h4, like after e4, queen e6. Apparently, after 60 moves, uh, they will get new score sheets. <laughs> what was your longest game? Well, I, I crossed 60 moves with Jan once. I don't remember how much further I went in St. Louis. Uh, or the game you won. Yes. I don't remember what uh, my longest game is, actually. And by time? Well, I, I once I played a game 143 moves, but I was still an international master then. Mm -hmm. um, recently, I don't remember. So it was adjourned when we played three days. Two adjourned uh, sessions and one, so very from, long from night. that period. <laughs> yes, I, when you were two. <laughs> I, was I wasn't even born. <laughs> But once I had an opportunity to play in a George tournament. Ah, in Amsterdam World. Yeah. Uh -huh. Otherwise, my longest day, <laughs> uh, well, a couple of times I definitely played more than seven hours. Mm -hmm. So in uh, Gibraltar, there is this long time control, and also in uh, Vacancy. <laughs> so. Yes, he has actually played F3. Okay. Well, F3 is definitely better than E4. So apparently my game with Nepo was 77 moves. Oh, so okay, that's nothing. It's just like a, a rest walk day. In the park. <laughs> a walk in the park. Yeah, it's a 
a bit surprised. Or maybe he pretends to be a bit surprised. But what else? There were not so many options. But after F3, there are almost no positions where you can now play two rooks versus the queen. You, by the time you attack the F6 pawn, uh, you'll have so many worried. checks. So because F3 is such a big concession. So I don't know how Magnus is going to win this, but it won't be easy. But what you know, he's going to continue and he's going to play. Otherwise, he would have a repeat with King Juan. Yes. Okay, let's try to guess the moves. So what is White's plan? King f2 and then disentangle the rook somehow. I don't know how, but somehow. And what should black do? Maybe place the king on g7. I think it's better place there to have h4 idea. Okay, so ma let's make some moves. You go king g7. I go king f2. Then how do you play? Can I come from that side? Maybe it's too long, yeah? I meant uh, queen d1, queen h1. Then you always have this rook I have rook h4. Idea. Uh, well, that's also not true, actually. I, if I go here... I mean, here I actually have rook h4, and that's unpleasant, I think, for you. But let's say I go here. Okay. Queen c2. Yes. Bishop g3 is the strategy. Ideally, I want to play rook h4 and then f4, but I'm not getting it in time. So let's say I do this. You go here. And I come here. You go queen b3. I can also go queen h7. <laughs> I will admit, it's a brilliant move. I did not see that coming. Uh, you can play knight d4 after h4, g4. Yes. But also I was thinking, if I go rook a1, h4, rook g3, uh, rook a5, for instance, or even uh, rook a5. I mean, when you take, I take, and then I get f5 again. But queen h7 is creative, I'm sure. Not easy to see. And currently, where are we? F3 here. Queen D1? Uh huh. So, again, your idea that if King F2 he has uh, Queen H1, but Rook H4, and it's a draw now with uh, Bishop G3, King G3, Queen E1 check. And perpetual so so his idea is to yeah queen d1 is is quite good exploiting this uh, slight vulnerability f4 i don't know what he's going to do bishop d6 i guess rook d5 yes queen b3, queen b3. The beautiful thing for black now is he can actually trade bishop for knight and it's a draw most likely because the pawns have gone ahead and the king can no longer shelter behind them. Anyway, they are here, queen d1. Uh, maybe uh, rook e4. I go queen b3. Oh, well, maybe I should just step aside and go king g7. Then this h4 becomes available again. So something like knight f4, uh, you're going to take? Yes, I mean, it is my... I feel that this is now just a draw. I can keep harassing you all over the place.
Yeah, if I play something like e4 and then. Uh, then I have to G4. just wait. Rook f5, king g6. And exactly when you have rook a6, I'll have the. I mean, here I'll win the rook, but I mean, I'll have perpetuals and all that kind of stuff. By the way, yeah. Come on, guys, give us a break. Rook h4. If we start with rook h4 and then after king g6, we play king f2. You mean what? Rook h4? Ah, okay, rook h4, uh, then queen b3 first. Ah, and I break through in the f this pawn again, yeah. How much time does Magnus have? 34 seconds. Okay, so the move is coming now. Uh, F4. F4. So Magnus passed the second time control. Okay. And Jan has still 10 minutes to, <laughs> to yeah. make his move. But I think anyway, he will just move the bishop to d6 or five uh, sorry d6 or c7 but I think d6 is better because it's coming to c5 so also it's protected on d6 yes okay I'm gonna take a break now <laughs> <laughs> because I'm not gonna wait nine minutes while Jan thinks so we will join you back you're in a so few minutes. so impassioned <laughs> okay we will be back shortly
The FIDE World Championship Dubai 2021 is followed by fans all around the world. And in Russia, a chess-hungry country and home of challenger Jan Nepomnici, it is followed with a special enthusiasm. FIDE, together with the Chess Federation of Russia, have partnered with GUM, the historical department store in Moscow, to create a fan zone right in the heart of the Red Square. Apart from enjoying expert commentary with a professional team led by women's grandmaster Dina Belenkaya and experienced grandmaster Sergei Shipov in an open studio, the fans can also engage in many other activities including side tournaments, classes and casual blitz games. Russia has had a long and illustrious chess tradition with some of the finest players in history hailing from that nation. And now a new generation of children are picking up the game and learning the many values that chess has to offer, including critical thinking, problem solving, goal setting, appreciating how other people think, and making fantastic decisions. The fans will be following the match eagerly from Moscow, but now it's time to jump back to Magnus and Jan as the match in Dubai is heating up. And uh, welcome back, everyone. Uh, the sixth game of the World Championship match between Magnus Carlsen and Jan Nepomnici is still in progress. We have got some food, we've got some drinks. We are ready to commentate for another couple of hours if the game will be still in progress. Uh, we are a bit running out of the ideas, uh, but it's great to see such an intense fight in the World Championship match. So let's take a look at what happened in the game. Uh, I think that before we went for a break, King G2 was the last move. Okay, maybe I'll show the lines a little bit later, but let's see what's going on because now we can see only the live board. No, actually, I think you can see my board, yeah, the analysis board. So, King G2, Queen D5, F3 was played. That That's when the first pawn movement was made. Uh, Queen d1, still trying to keep an eye on the a4 rook. Uh, f4 first. Uh, then we were actually expecting bishop d6, but Jan played bishop c7, which is more or less the same. King f2, bishop b6, rook a1, queen b3, attacking on e3. Rook e4, king g7, a very useful move. We have already spoken about it a couple of times. And uh, rook e8 was sorry, rook e8 was the last move played by uh, Magnus Carlsen, and it feels like the idea is to bring another rook to a8, uh, trying to create some mating threats. How dangerous is this? Okay, <laughs> well, you are taking the topic. headphones. Okay, I'll put you on air. I wish you also live. <laughs> yeah. Okay, he played f5 right away. And I guess it's hard, but now I would try this. And then I would try to check my way. So I'll ma make some random moves just to prove the point. So you want to bring, uh, to to put one rook on g8, then another rook on, on e8, e8 exactly. on e3, and then so try to So let's do something like this, and then what I would try to do is that, and that, so that this rook can maybe come to g5 or something. But I must admit, I don't really see how it's going to work. First of all, after rook a8, I can... Uh, I don't know what's a good square to wait in. Maybe bishop c5, let's say, and then you give a check. Uh, I step here. Oh, okay, then rook h8, uh, another rook to g8. Then this one here. Didn't you want to give the check on h8, check on g8, and uh, rook e8? 
Yeah, ah, uh-huh, uh, that's also an idea. Sorry, uh, what she wants is then to keep the checking process. Check maybe, mm-hmm. and then come here. And if I go here, I don't see the breakthrough, but at least it's some progress. <coughs> maybe now rook e5, and then actually this is progress, isn't it? Then there's rook. G8, G5, and suddenly something has gone wrong. So, rook A8 has happened, and it's not, it's not a draw yet. What are uh, possibilities for Yen? And this game has been in progress already for more than six hours, six yes. hours and ten minutes. So still, with fatigue, some mistake can happen easily. Uh, can you think about the idea of uh, queen d1 or queen b1 and then uh, trying to bring the queen to h1? Okay, let's go for a check. Ah, but I, uh, you're absolutely right. There is this threat as well. You're uh, right. So that is one important counterplay. Yeah, and I thought about rook a6, uh, then we have queen b5, so it's better to have actually the queen on b1 rather than on d1. Yes. And this is quite nice. So queen b1, rook g8 check, king f6, rook a8. And suddenly what we have done is to open counterattack here. But this is still not a fortress, is it? I mean, I have knight d4. Maybe bishop e1 is the most... Uh, no, it doesn't seem to matter. I go queen e1 check, king g2, and now I, I threaten to take that knight off again. And maybe this will finally do the trick for me. Mm, that's a problem. I don't even have knight f5 ideas because uh, at the very least there are checks. Yeah. Okay, so what is Jan thinking about in this position? This is the current position. Uh, maybe Jan is thinking about some prophylaxis like King F6, so that you don't uh, make this. Yeah, but then if I come the with the rook here, and then Yana will think again. <laughs> what to do? Yeah. And if I go back, then I don't know if you bring the other rook or what. Maybe you bring that rook over there. Also, a rather crazy m- suggestion. What happens if I do this? Is this utterly terrible? I don't like it at all. Neither do I, but I'm just wondering, is it lost? Or? I just want to uh, put yourself uh, like on the edge <laughs> and then <laughs> try if you can hold it. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so. We should do like suffering. <laughs> no, I don't like suffering. But I'm not suffering. I know. They're uh. suffering. <laughs> I'm just checking it out, so... Maybe rook e7, king g6, rook h8. Well, then I want to ask you, I want to do that and then say, well, come on, get me, show me. I mean, unless you're able to disentangle in some way, I don't see how this is working for you. If I take the pawn? That would be a good start. (laughs) Um, Let me go somewhere here. I think that doesn't blunt or anything. 
Oh, you know what? Even better. Let me go to F7 and ask the other rogue what it's doing there. Oh, yeah. I didn't like that. I don't know. Should be holdable. It feels holdable, but... Um, but there is absolutely no need to play F6 and do a weakening everything. Giving well, I thought the reason is for the king not to get pushed around. And uh, there's no G5, E5 square and all. And it's also to take away all the squares on the thing except E7 and E8. So that king F7 becomes a positional, well, positional threat of sorts. That was kind of the logic. Okay, if, so this is the current position, and we're thinking how to hold this, but... But still we haven't found how to win this. Mm -hmm. So bishop c5 was kind of okay, queen b1, and even f6. Well, but he will not play f6, it's just... I don't believe he will play f6. When B4. That is interesting. What? Oh, he wants to set it up with Bishop A5. So that uh, mm -hmm. Queen E1 check is being set up from there. Okay. But if Rook E5? Then F6. I know you love this move. But <laughs> what else can you do after this? Rook e5. Or maybe just queen b3 back and then counterattack here. Yeah, that's always a uh, possibility. Because if I do this, defending the pawn like that, you can always step here. And it's holding. No, now there is this move to bring this one here. Okay, so it's easy to get outplayed here. Hang on. But you know, even there, if I played queen c6, where? Like, uh, and that was a queen c6, rook e5, f6. You're allowed to play f6 now. <laughs> Yes, like you take on a five and then no, some but uh, queen. No, this is getting unpleasant, right? <coughs> yeah, that's not what I want. Hmm. So queen b4, rook e5, now what happens? I mean, if you want to play f6, this is not a bad place to do it. Because if you go back, then I do something like that, and suddenly uh, you can't harass me much on the 8. And what about bishop a5 there? Ah, sorry. That was my original plan, wasn't it? And if... Uh, but wait, if I do this... Okay, but... Um Okay, G6, yes. let's say. This may be losing. Wow, brilliant. Sorry? This may be losing. <laughs> this one? Some, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. 
But I'm threatening. Okay, he's going to rook a c8. What is he preparing? I have no idea. Oh, if bishop a5, what's he going to do? Maybe this plan after all, knight d4. Maybe he can uh, give some checks there. And then let's say rook c6, king is 7 and uh, knight d4 after that. King f3, king g2, yeah, queen b1, rook c5, no this is lost, so rook a c8, Maybe let's go queen b3 back. Yes, actually, maybe this is the. Five. But this might be lost, right? Oh, let's check. What? <laughs> I thought about rook c1, but then it's uh, a bit strange way to do it. He could have played uh, rook a1. No? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, this is of course better because uh, now uh, nobody is attacking the pawn on e3. And also the rook is protected on c1. And he's preparing rook e5. But this moment was rook g8. Let's take a look. Okay, rook e5. But oh, really? Let's go there once again. Where? To rook g8. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yes, yeah, so let's try this. And uh, 94, yeah. It's important that uh, a black will not be able to capture on e3 because we have queen f5, uh, knight f5 check. Maybe this? Uh, what's the difference? King f3? Queen d3. Mm -hmm. mm. Rook g8, rook h6, knight c6. Ah, no, it's. That wins, king knight e5, yeah, because so that actually, yeah. Yeah, this is. I'm getting tired as well. Anyway, let's see what's well actually happening in the game. The players. <laughs> Hopefully, they're getting tired, I don't know. Actually, this would be a good moment to play f6. Oh, but he's actually it's white to move. That might be an important factor as well. <laughs> uh, 
Now if he comes back to c8, is there any difference? Or can he try this idea of um, just how to do it? After rook c3, where are the uh, where are the queen is going? Queen b1. Well, I don't see any other move, right? By the way, something like a rook c6 and probably taking on b6 and taking on f5. Mm -hmm. It's much closer to a draw, I feel. But yes. still white can play it mm. for another two hours. Also, I don't know if I'm here, I'm, I can play bishop d8 with the idea ah, you want to You want to avoid it? <laughs> no, I, it's just I feel I should make a move and I don't see one. Queen b3? <laughs> Ah. Okay. Let's try this. Look at five. The only thing is black has only one move. That is queen at six. But it's a good move because I'm threatening h4. I guess that is going to be a draw. Uh, rook e8 played. Uh, the rook was there, wasn't it? Yeah. But uh, the rook was on e8 when another rook was on a8. And then c8. Are, are you saying the rooks have rotated? Uh, I'm saying something is happening, but not so much. <laughs> Although it's much more comfortable for Jan, of course, because uh, he has... Uh, to defend this position. And neither of them is ever going to have a lot of time from this point. And just a second, why? What is the increment, by the way? 30 seconds? Or? 30 seconds, but why they are so low on time? I mean, 6 versus 5. Uh, they should have got an additional 15 minutes after move 61. Or do they get it when, uh, when they run out of time? Maybe they have spent it. They have spent it. <laughs> okay. And even Leonard is now making jokes about us. <laughs> Not good. If we play Rook C C eight. We, we had it, yeah, earlier. Mm -hmm. Or it's not exactly the same position. Because there was, uh, there was one with the bishop on a5, there was one with the bishop on b6, with the queen on b3, with the queen on b1. Uh, rook c8 played. Maybe queen Good. h1 now. Okay, now Protecting my the h-pawn indirectly. Yeah, but now my favorite part with the checks. Please do. With one check. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, king f6 and that's it. <laughs> No, I'm threatening bishop a5. That's also useful. Mm. Did he play queen h1? Queen h1, and then what's happening? Okay, let's try rook g8, king f6, uh, rook h... Uh, sorry. Queen h1 played. Yes. Rook H8? I, uh, I missed uh, Queen H2. Maybe Knight G1. Oh no, then Bishop E3 check, right.
What about uh, Rukh? Uh, Siwan. Siwan. But he can go back. To D5, E4. E4. Ah, and if this, then uh, Rook here, even uh, Bishop uh, A5. And then Queen H1 again now. Queen H1. So five minutes for, for both until the end of the game, but uh, now they have 30 seconds increment for every move. <laughs> and Jan is just, you know, pouring some tea. <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm ready to play another yeah. hour or two here. At least, yeah. But actually, Jan isn't threatening bishop a5. He's threatening queen h2. That's it. Yes, after queen h1 and all this counterplay. So what? Check? No. Yeah, he's gone rook c1. Queen d5. Oh, in fact, uh, rook c check didn't us. happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have as uh, usual done something crazy. Yeah, it's this rook c1 that is actually the main line. Fine, we are at the main line now, and rook c1 and queen d5. Rook c1, d5. queen d5. This position has been repeated twice. Are you sure? Okay, what did we have here? Oh no, this one was with the queen on b4. Okay. Now he's gone rook b1. Oh, we, we didn't have the rook on b1. But now I can I don't know if... No, this is too slow, right? Because I leave him to the knight d4 and rook b5. But I thought I finally get my bishop to f6 and I tried to play h4, but it's not working now. Also, rook e5 maybe? I'm sure many moves are wrong. Queen d3 and h4, but it's h4 itself is not so strong, so... So rook b1 has been played. It's not clear to me what it threatens, but uh, I mean, if I play ah, bishop c7, then knight d4 is very good. What if I go bishop a7, then rook e7? Okay. Actually, it's a good move. Mm -hmm. Actually, maybe black had some other options instead of queen d5. Yeah, but uh, Jan, uh, both of them are getting into time pressure, so it's now going to be a blitz session. Okay, but let's say uh, check. But then king h3, right? King f3, and your queen is kind of uh, trapped. I thought I would play h4, but now I'm not so sure about it. Yeah, because I'll take and bring the knight there, right? Yeah. <laughs> What happens now for rook e5? Or oh, rook e7 actually, what happens for rook e7? Uh, maybe he wants bishop c5 as a temple, but then rook e5? Well, he avoided that the previous move, so he goes rook e5, and now? Queen d3. Oh, sorry. That's no longer working, okay. Rook b7. Looks like Jan is in big trouble, right? Queen c2. And oh, then you can play rook b5. Not that. 
Now rook b5 may be one. Mm -hmm. uh, rook c7 uh, or rook e7. Yeah, so exactly what uh, we were thinking. And now it's very hard to see a move for black. But anyway, the only what move which doesn't lose is bishop c5, right? Otherwise, the other rook comes to b7. Yes. So the only move which doesn't lose, I think, is this one. And we had that, and now I think rook e5. So here we are. The only move which doesn't lose, well, probably doesn't lose, is queen d3. And... Uh, bishop c5 played? Rook e5 will be played. Rook B7 first. No, this uh, Rook B7. Rook B5, E5, sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, Rook e, uh. And then Queen D3 is the only move mm -hmm. which doesn't lose. And now, maybe Rook H1, ah, then Bishop D6. Is Magnus considering some other move? No, or okay, five. Queen this way. Mm -hmm. Now, is there a post win or not? It's good for Jan uh, that right at the moment he has uh, almost one minute more because they are they are getting really very low on time. So what if Rook B seven here? Uh, that's what we analyzed. Okay. Ah, queen c2 is holding on, yeah. It's questionable if it's holding, because after queen c2, rook Then b5. I go rook d, d f thing as well, so that I'm coming with rook d7, d5, and take on f5. But why don't you take immediately? With what? Rook b5 and take on f5. Ah, of course. Oh, then it's, uh, it's over. So rook b7 is now winning, right? He hasn't played it yet, so we'll see, but it's... No, I'm not sure it's winning because after rook b7. Uh, bishop d6, then rook d7, right? Mm Is there any trick, like sacrificing the pawn on f5 and then sacrificing on e3? Don't see how to make it. Me neither. I think, I mean, I'm sure the evaluation is just lost now. How much sure are you about it? Because I'm not so sure about it. No, I, I just, I mean, after a move like rook b7, I simply don't even see a move anymore. Okay, can I try some queen d6? I can't totally calculate it. I mean, for Magnus to invest so much time in this position means that he thinks it's winning and he's just closing it out. He would not uh, drop under a minute like this with the FA. He's willing to just run it dry because he's sure it's over. And I think rook b7, it's over. 
Okay, come on, D6. What uh, am I missing here? Rook B7, okay. In fact, if you wanted to play <coughs> Queen uh, D6, you could do it here. Ah, no, even there I have Rook G. But you could do it here, Queen D6. But anyway, I would have done Rook B5 or something. So now it's resigns, I think. Yeah. Wow. And it looks like Jan is worried. Yes. But he's about to make a move. I simply don't see a move. Queen c2, we assume there is rook b5. What is going to do after rook b5? Rook b5 played. <laughs> so this is the current position. Well, the only real hope is bishop a7. Let's see, rook f5 and then, I don't know, f6. Or what? It's all lost. Bishop a7 played. Ah, oh, no, excuse me. Uh, Rook f5, if queen e4, you can give a check and things. So, but he's, uh, what did he not like about rook f5? Or he's repeating moves to get that one minute. Uh, queen e4 here. Yeah, and then I thought rook g5 check and rook b3. But Maybe Magnus is uh, even just cooler. He just yeah, okay. here By repeating two moves, he gets a whole minute. And so now he's doing fine. He's got two minutes. So now we can close this out. Rook a5, bishop b6, rook b5, bishop a7. Now Magnus has a whole minute and he can take on f5. Okay, yeah, he's taken on f5. Now what happens if I go here? What happens here? Rook G5. Yeah. King F8. B E5. F6. G F5. King G7. I mean, maybe this is winning. F taken on F6 and taken on A7. Yeah. But I actually have a nice trick here, which is... Uh, Rook e7 check, I can go back here. And then you come back and I go back here. <laughs> and maybe, wow. So mm. how is this winning? So if rook f5, bishop e3 checks, that doesn't work. You can give rook g5 check, king f8. Ah, okay, it's taken brilliant. Him okay, brilliant, brilliant. That's and then rook b7 check. Should be winning, right? I don't know. If I get a queen to h1, maybe it's not trivial. Just like a very difficult game for both of them. Can can 
G6, maybe. Mm -hmm. It should be more or less the same. Uh, like King G6 takes. Maybe Queen D5 to try to get H1 somehow. Uh, could he try H4? When? Yeah. Here. You want to take with the king or what? King h5, king h4. He's gone queen d5. I think this is a mistake, though I, as soon as I suggested, because I thought knight d4 is a problem. And what is the problem? Well, that if you come oh queen h1, knight. I have knight f3 and I'm mm -hmm. still dominating you. Where did Yama go? He's got five minutes, so he can make a quick toilet break and go back. <laughs> you know, <laughs> depends how far the restroom is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe it's good for Magnus to make a move here. Like very quickly, mm -hmm. uh, because he can't spoil the position but much. But then he gets time until Jan gets back, and also Jan will lose some time. So it's like double win. Yeah. Check. But I think Jan expects to give a couple of quick checks as well when he gets back and get back his one minute. So. <laughs> and it's already move number. Mm -hmm. Eighty-three. Eighty-three. So today we'll have a hundred moves game, more than a hundred. Yes. Will this game finish today? <laughs> <laughs> we only have 40 minutes before. I think it's finishing tomorrow. Ah, you were serious about it. Oh yeah, it's midnight. It's, uh, it's almost going to be midnight. <laughs> Can a young be active with uh, King F5? It's a it's a nice thought. He didn't think about it. Well, let's see. Could there? Uh, it is a brilliant thought, actually. What happens after king f5? You're right. <laughs> there isn't an obvious way. <laughs> no, this must be it. Check. Okay. Check. Just push him with f5? Yeah. Yeah. So this has to happen. And then Wait, knight uh, here. There is also check on g2. Ah, there's a check on g2. Okay. But anyway, it's. Uh, I step aside and I try to take your other pawn or something. Where are we? We're in knight d4. Yeah, let's make some bets. If they will finish that. No, no, they will finish right, today. Good. No, they're not finished today. They will finish today. Ah, you think in 40 minutes? Yeah, yes. maybe. Has it actually ever happened that the World Championship uh, game, yeah, one of the games of the match, started on one day and finished on the other one? I'm uh, sure it has. Really? No, but uh, I mean in the, in uh, the after same the time. the post-candidate, I mean the post-adjournment era, you mean? Uh, yeah, sure. And I mean in the same time zone, because okay, obviously. Yeah. For some countries, uh, we are all in in the next day, but. 
Maybe it never happened. Maybe they will write a history. <laughs> Well, that would depend on the game. What time the game start? I mean, if you start at four thirty, you have a your uh, chances increasing. You have a slightly better chance. <laughs> Though it's still impressive. They're starting at four thirty, and we are already at seven hours, and it's going to go to seven and a half or eight. Let's do it. <laughs> Wish energy, power. Yeah, <laughs> me, I don't have any. Only these guys have any. Well, somehow, wait. The queen got to h one. Check. Okay, one check. The king goes back. King h7. No, king h7, then uh, the knight of string g 5 It will be under attack. Under the check, sorry. Um, maybe king f7? Yeah. Maybe it will also be under attack. Wait, how many pieces are on the board? No, we can't consult table bases if that's what you're asking. <laughs> I thought of that already, Anna. For real? I I just thought seven pieces we should be able to check, but it's what? And what about eight pieces table base? Do you have any news? When is it going to, no, to be I released? Have, I haven't been checking on that. Okay, can have seven played, knight of three, okay. But do we have table base install installed here? Where? Here. <laughs> I don't know. Yes, we have it somewhere, but we don't know yet where. Yeah. Okay, rook d6. To be fair, it's not. It doesn't look trivial, because uh, white's king will always be a little bit exposed. So I don't. Uh, yeah, know king what d7 very good because here. e4 was coming. Hmm. But okay, rook rook d2 and rook e2, then the queen will step to e4. Rook d5, then I thought queen a2, mm -hmm. rook d2, and uh, queen, queen b1. b1 back. Yeah, check. Oh, now they have plenty of time. They have four minutes each. They have four minutes each. The whole each. blitz game. <laughs> Even if it was without increment. Yes, rook e2 and now queen e4. Mm -hmm. uh, did you see a score sheet starting from move number 121? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I saw 60 and 61. With 61, we definitely have. Uh, but with 100... <laughs> well, the arbiter will just pull out another 0 to 60 and write it on the top there. No, yeah, but uh, just... Uh, just a funny situation. Like a score sheet starting on moon <laughs> number 121. <laughs> and let's go. Ah, queen b6, well... The idea is the same to keep control that white doesn't push e4. Mm -hmm.
When was the last capture? Oh, not so long ago, just 10 months ago. Yeah. So 40 to go. <laughs> Am I bringing good news to you? When was the last one? Rook A7 yeah. on move 82. So we're talking 10 moves ago, right? Yes. Just 40. Just 40 to go. That's 20 minutes each of increment. Mm -hmm. You still up for that bet? <laughs> Magnus kind of looks a bit tired. Rook C2, something new. Okay, Queen B7 or Queen B4 and what did we get? Or queen a7. Ah, it's even stupid, yeah. Queen b1. It's like, you know, it's like a punishment. Yesterday you had a rest day, so today they have to work two times more. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I thought you meant for us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for for me, it's not a problem. <laughs> it's definitely easier than playing. How was your rest day yesterday? It was fine. What did you do? <laughs> Well, I was uh, I gave this class here. Ah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, like on the previous rest day, I had it in the hotel and this uh, time another one. Yeah. I saw some really nice photos because you did it in the plane hall, no? Correct. That's right. It looked beautiful. It was. And maybe you had more students, didn't you? I don't know. I th most of them were in the first group. Maybe there was one person who changed or something. Oh, only one. I don't remember actually. So, what did you talk about? Um, I showed some interesting games. I showed actually Asipenko, Magnus Carlsen from Vikings mm -hmm. so that was a nice one. There was so some tweet of a younger young chest of Duda, but <laughs> I am not so fast at reading. Busy day, the World Chess Championship match start with Chess Abel Academy and with the game. <laughs> ah, look at some pictures. So today, Jan uh, had some lecture, as far as I can see, mm -hmm. uh, for young students, and then a picture with them. Uh, and then a game. Oh, I think he forgot to mention about the the game we're watching now. Yes, I believe he's also watching it. Of course. Okay, maybe not uh, like uh, all the time, but from time to time. He's here even. So. Ah, he's here. <laughs> I heard uh, he came for a couple of days, so maybe uh, he'll have Wait, another. Now if, knight if now if knight f3, yes. even if you play queen b1, I can play e4. I don't know it's that relevant, but maybe it's some decent chances for it. Okay, so at least it's some change. And if he plays a4, <laughs> 450 again. <laughs> Queen but if you play e4, then I start checking, and I think that's also not so. Okay, but the other try. is a way to hide the king. Yes, on the hedge file, right? So yes. 
So let's say queen b2 or queen a2, king f1 or g1. Oh, no, after queen b2, we can't play king f1. So king g1. Can I come somewhere here? Knight f5 check, king e8 or something. And your king is kind of... Knight g5. <laughs> Got a message from my clan. I am still alive. This may end Saturday morning. <laughs> yes. Now, we already discussed that this game may finish tomorrow, but uh, his expectations are even. <laughs> Higher. Okay, do it. Let's play E4. And he's just like, no, no, don't touch this pawn. <laughs> no, no, no. no, just get me a bed. <laughs> <laughs> Sagar Shak is taking some video. Hi. <laughs> to be honest, I starting to look like a draw, doesn't it now? I mean I Yeah, your honest opinion, please. The camera is there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's give two, che two checks to get a minute. Uh, 96, that's even more sophisticated so where is the knight going after let's say Maybe king f7 like uh, but it was there yes two moves ago and the queen was on h1 and queen h1 it's two times yes but two i was time. right Yeah, by now we're so tired we laugh at anything. So Queen H one. Knight F three, Queen B one, and we were there as well two times, so Jantan Tisdal is apparently inter interested in uh, what is the longest game played for the world title. Um, so, and here are some replies. There was uh, 124 more Karpo Kuchnoi, but this was uh, uh, this wasn't the world uh, for the world title. Of course, it was Bagio. I think he's talking about. It was a. Um, a wrong, colored a, a wrong colored rook pawn, and Karpov uh, tried to. Uh, uh, no, I think Koshna was pressing Karpov, but for Karpov knew the fortress that you go back with the king. So I think it was that game that they're talking about. Maybe John will tweet that as well, but anyway, I think. So, like. So, what was the position? King on c4, bishop on b4, pawn on a3, black has pawn on a4, and king on something, and he's trying to cut it off. Why come back to a4 and go back? I mean, mm -hmm. in those days, they had spent the whole team spent the whole night analyzing because they didn't have table bases. Of course, now we do. Uh, once I had this position in my own game, and you know, just before taking the pawn, it was 50 moves. Mm -hmm. And it was so painful. I was just one move away from victory. Didn't this happen in one of Grishuk's games that he was playing Rukin versus Bishop yeah. and he was lost? But he, he had ca checked that the, the winning move would happen on move 51. So you could claim a draw. Yeah, that has happened. 
a couple of times. Even the draw was claimed just one more before. Before resignation. Rook d7, just, uh, okay, hang on. We had the rook on d7, didn't we? Maybe not. At some point in this game for sure, but I don't remember now. Uh, no, no, no. Actually, we have not had a rook on d7 since uh, move 82. Okay. So we're in at 20 moves now. Still only 30 to go. Uh, it's getting closer. Day by day. <laughs> and I mean literally day by day. <laughs> <It's going to laughs> be. And so there are additional uh, two games before the next Thursday. Mm -hmm. We expected it to be the day after tomorrow. But uh, yeah, what happens if this game goes into tomorrow? Do they still continue the same thing? <laughs> <laughs> Why is Magnus consulting a score sheet? I mean, he must know that he has a lot of time left for the 50 move rule to kick in. Ah, but maybe he's checking after rook d2, queen b1, whether it, there's another repetition happening. Okay. Oh, there is the position like after rook d2, queen b1, yeah. But it's, sorry? With the king on g7. Sorry. I think it makes a huge difference. So yes, he can safely play rook d2. And now I play king g7. No, but first you have to play queen b1. He did it. Ah, so right. queen b1 with the king on f6. And it seems like every time Magnus has more than five minutes, uh, please scroll up, uh, then uh, he's just <laughs> leaving the board. Well, the only chance is if uh, white pushes e4 and then uh, there are no checks. So if it's possible to do that. And we see, like, please, no. 30 moves. <laughs> just, just, make, uh, just make 20. 30 moves. <laughs> just make 30 moves and let's bloody go to sleep. <laughs> when do you usually go to bed? Around about this time. Really? Well, by midnight. Okay. I mean, we usually get back around 10, 10.30, so... And when do you get up? Seven. Seven? I can't help it. I mean, I'm getting up at seven every morning. Seven? This time exists <laughs> for a chess <laughs> player? <laughs> I usually wake up... Uh, I mean, it depends when... Uh, when the breakfast, oh, night you want. Okay, I think we've solved all the repetition issues. <laughs> there is no more repetition in this game. Though. So the point is uh, that if breakfast is until 10, then I wake up at uh, 9.40. If breakfast is until 11, like it's here, it's 10.40. <laughs> Good girl. That's the way to do it. I should try it myself, actually. Yeah, but if you're waking up at 7, it's not that easy. And when you were younger, uh, you also woke up so early? No. Easily. Oh, okay. Why are we discussing our thing? They're the ones who are playing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. The commentators are waking up. <laughs> the position is not changing, so. Also, it's a big problem for Yan. If he plays h4, the clock starts again. A 50, 50 yes, moves so clock. Yes, he has to do it without playing h4. Even if h is a good move, he can't afford to play h4 because then it starts again. Yeah, that's always a bit... Uh, <coughs> like, you are unsure what you should do. You know that maybe it's the best move in the position, but then on the other hand, you have spent like 20 or 30 moves playing the same position, the same structure, that you don't really want to go for it. Mm. So now rook d4... Check and queen knight e2 can happen. Nobody's not going to do it. It's going to take his time doing that. After 10 moves. Queen 
queen b3. Let's attack the rook. Well done. <laughs> you know, ten times. Check. <laughs> Check. <laughs> ten times you attack, and maybe once your opponent blunders. Yeah. Okay, king is seven. Let's do it again. Maybe now it's time for king f5. Or it's too active. It's not a bad shot actually. But knight e2, what do you do? Queen a2, maybe. Mm -hmm. No, queen a2, I have king f3 and it. No, queen a2, yeah. You can go here, but you can go king e4 probably. Okay. Oh, but he won't do that. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what Leonard's next instruction is. King g7. I think that was a message for Rishi. Yes. <laughs> ah, right. It's that might maybe they're tuning in to watch me <laughs> fall, see if I'll fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> no, Leonard just wrote that we have more viewers than ever before in this match. A subtle hint to me not to fall asleep, but anyway, here we go. Yeah, Rishi. Brace yourself. <laughs> right. The world is watching you. <laughs> <laughs> They're not so much interested in that game, but they want to see how you will survive that or <laughs> not. So it's already more 108. And it was 82, yeah? With the last capture. What's that? I wanted to check yeah. <laughs> the number of <laughs> viewers. viewers. I wanted to see if Leonard was pulling a one. <laughs> a fast one like, on me. <laughs> okay, it's not the truth. <laughs> I'm leaving. Yes, it's move 82. So because now they're move 108, yeah. So there are 24 moves to go, 132. I so think it's I, m more I, than a half. I, I think I wanted more badly than Nepo. <laughs> <laughs> so. Vichy? Uh. <laughs> You know, after every game, there is a recap. <laughs> you recap. So <laughs> if it's like a 130 moves game. You can do a six hour <laughs> recap. I have no problem. <laughs> so. I think there are many moments we can talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Poor wish. <laughs> <laughs> if Magnus plays e4, we are gone. I mean, <laughs> I'm going to. <laughs> Magnus, do it! <laughs> Just do it! <laughs> I know Magnus, he'll go rook d7 check, rook d6 check, and then play, come back to d4 and play e4, and then it's three moves later even. <laughs> so it'll be move what 163 or something <laughs> by the time he does that. But you know, there is a recap by you <laughs> after this game. <laughs> There's no recap by <laughs> And there is also a recap by Alejandro Ramirez. And he's actually waiting for this game to finish. 
I think he's the one who actually uh, wants it to finish more than you. Who? Alejandro. Alejandro. Ah, yeah, yeah. No, nobody okay. wants it to e finish four. more than me. E four. E four. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, he's going to play E4 now and uh, or remover too, so that's <laughs> inevitable. It's <coughs> not going to finish on move 132. <laughs> it's guaranteed it'll go to 160 at least. Uh, by the way, only 13 minutes till tomorrow. Ah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, 110. We are here on the moon 160. <laughs> and the countdown starts right now. <laughs> And if uh, Jan is going to play Queen H1 and play H4, just to just then we can finally check table bases and find out if there's any hope. No, that, uh, that uh, yeah, that I saw it before. That you, if we trade two pawns, then we have seven pieces on the board. Oh, he, he's getting closer. But we have to find out how to find this table base. Well, you just search for it, and I guess in Google. <laughs> <laughs> there is a table base for seven pieces. No, there is definitely a table base for seven pieces, but I know how to do it. Uh, uh, oh, and Leonard, Leonard has already reminded us for the second time that it <laughs> will show up on the board itself, so good. But where? In our board, not in their board, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> this okay. Check. <coughs> Okay, check. King G8. Then you can think about E5 or King E3. Apparently we have to click but this uh, book function. No, which one is the book function? Uh, that looks like a book. Uh, I mean, where you are going it to It looks press. like a book, but it says Explorer and Table. Oh, that oh is but that it one. is. <laughs> are we done, uh, Leonard? <laughs> but he has to play H4 first, but anyway. Change it. So now e5. H4? E3. You know, I'm a bit worried about my rook on d7. It's unprotected. So uh, every time there is a check on h3. Maybe better king e3. Oh, he does it uh, in a great way. Rook Magnus d4. Magnus does not hurry. H4. Come on, Jan, just play H4. Then I can stop my commentary. I just leave the table <laughs> bases on and we can go to sleep. Check. Okay, King is three. And this end game, King, uh, Rook and Knight with two pawns versus uh, King and Queen. Is it so easy? No. I don't think it's so good to play Which H4. One? Like if you if you trade the pawns here, it's not so easy to hold. I think so. I think keeping them uh, improves. What some counter play against the G3 pawn? Or the knight is tied down to it or something like that. Yeah. Ah, oh, maybe you're right. Okay, for what it's worth, Stockfish says flat zero. So. H4. Okay, H4 on the board. Check. King D2. I'm sure this was part of uh, Jan's uh, training camp. I thought it was a part of his opening preparation. <laughs> Okay, where is table base? Oh! It is a draw. Well, it's a draw with uh, with every move, but uh, well, it's more relevant if we see how it goes. With. So, rook d3. <coughs> okay. Right now, uh, f5 and e5, and we're looking at. Move 215. <laughs> if not 200 and 
65. <laughs> if he does both, it's 265. I'm hoping that by there, <laughs> something will have stopped. <laughs> but if it goes to move 265. <laughs> now just imagine the arbiter all over the left, the place. And if we are both sitting here praying that F6 or E6 doesn't happen, <laughs> <laughs> then I think we'll make it on move 265. Mm. Are, you are you staying till the end, Sagar? <laughs> <laughs> Sagar just woke up. <laughs> so. Can F8? Uh, it's like the most precise way. <laughs> but to be honest, you have to say that uh, this is just incredible fighting spirit by both guys and uh, that they're still here and playing. I mean, we're kidding around because they haven't finished yet, but... Uh, Wow. Yeah, very intense game. Very intense game. So I wonder how exhausted they'll be before tomorrow's game. But it also matters. If Magnus had won today's game, I think that tomorrow's going to be very different. If it's a draw, I think uh, it'll be very different. So, What's the best construction now? Rook F3, yeah, that's what I expected. But how do I want to place our pieces before pushing e5 or f5? Maybe king e3, queen b6, knight d4. Knight d4, queen b4 or c5. <coughs> and then... E5? Yeah. What are you asking me? Can I three played? And there is the confirmation that uh, uh, 124 moves, the game of Karpo, Karpo Korchnoi was a record, was a record, was. And will was, be broken tonight. Will be broken tomorrow because tonight? it's six minutes. Tonight. <laughs> It's not so funny to play it with, uh, with black. <laughs> yeah, it looks very hard, but... Queen a5. King f2, yes, of course. Why? To play rook e3, what? No, maybe knight g3, uh, I mean king, king g2, knight g3, and then if there are checks, uh, it's easier to hide uh, the king on, like on g4 than in the middle of the board. <laughs> the arbiter is coming up with the fourth score sheet. <laughs> <laughs> you, you were joking about whether he has a third one, but I think he's going to get ready with the fourth one because we are already at move 120, so he's waiting with the... But it, it's the third one. No, this should be the third one, third one right. So, so I was track. asking about 121 move score sheet. Sagar, did you ever see like a score sheet starting from move number 121? Because 61, they exist. Yeah, it's not. But 121? Uh, rook is free. No. Leonard asks if you remember Howell's games in Riga. <laughs> uh, but in Riga, you know, we didn't stay until the very end. And we knew we wouldn't stay until the very end. But here we know that we will be staying until the very end. <laughs> Sorry?
Okay, new score sheet, please. Yes. I mean, I'm sure we can break this record tomorrow by ma making McShane and Howell play a match with each other. Why McShane? Look, McShane and David Howell, if they play a match, then yeah, mm -hmm. they'll break 180 <laughs> moves easily. But uh, for a World Championship, I think this record is going to stand for a while. Okay, 93. Queen did two. Um... I think king f3, queen d1, oh no, but king g2, and then after queen d2, there's rook e2. Mm -hmm. That's the way to do it. King f3 play, now king g2. But to be honest, I can play rook e2 first if I want, and go to g4 also, so. Oh, yeah. Actually, it doesn't look, to my eyes, it doesn't look easy at all. Uh, because yes, because the if I, is very good. Yeah. just e5 is coming, and then f5 is also coming. But uh, I mean, I this construction is great. With the knight on g3 and the rook on e2. Queen b3, king. Ah, king g4, queen g8 check. So yeah, but already, king g2? Uh, at least Ian is uh, wide awake if we are not. Or at least uh, I'm king not. King g2, maybe queen b7. Yeah, let's stop, let's stop this pause. Let's stop them before they promote. Queen B7, good. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> good technique. <laughs> With every pawn move, Vish is not happy. But it's too early to push the pawn. I mean, Why, 20, moves, 20 moves later. Erg D2. Away there. Okay, it was 115. Now it's 125. So the record is broken? Yes. Congratulations to both players. Uh, Magnus and Jan. Fantastic job. Now let's break another record. I mean, the one that, that will stay there forever. So uh, to push E5 or F5 after 20 moves. Queen B3. E5. <laughs> Isn't that premature? <laughs> I mean, 114. You can you can play E5 on move 164. <laughs> and if you play F5 on move, <coughs> what is it? 324, <laughs> 225, I've lost track, 224, <laughs> and we're all set. Happy birthday to anyone who was born on the 4th of December. <laughs> 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 it's Saturday. It'd be nice to have some fireworks now. I saw beautiful fireworks yesterday on the celebration of That's right. a, n a national day. Yes. <laughs> 50th anniversary well. of United Emirates, United Arab Emirates. A wonderful firework yeah. for two minutes. Yep. You were there? Well, we, we were somewhere else, but we saw it from there also. So. Oh, okay.
uh, rook d5. So maybe he's going to maybe he's going to bring the king to g4, then the rook to f5, and then e5, and then trying to uh, play rook f6. Well, it's like any move before uh, white starts pushing the pawns uh, should be a draw according to table base. Uh, but still, I mean, the players, they don't know the relation. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it l to me, it feels like it very easily could be lost. I wouldn't know, but you would try to harass white as much as possible. But you can see Magnus is still very sharp. He's playing rook d5. So that queen g8 check is not available. And he can maybe go king h3 g4. Mm -hmm. So he's he's still trying. He's still trying. Uh, come on. He'll keep on trying until move 200 yeah. at the very least. Undercutting my case. But anyway, yeah, allowing so queen g8 again. But rook e5. So the king goes back to maybe king f7. Let's be a bit more active. But with the king on f7, uh, we cover the diagonal. And there is no check on g8. So maybe king f8. No, he played king f7. OK. Also, it must be said, if king h3, what there happens if I sit on f3 with my queen? Yeah, that's unpleasant. How easy I don't is it allowed. for you to adjust? So rook f5. If a king is seven and e5 now, uh, okay, still black can play queen d5 and then bring the queen to f3. Mm -hmm. This queen will be a nine on f3. Well, it's actually meant to keep pinning. So what uh, what I think it'll do is you can go here as you point out. Well, but king h3. Queen f3, pinning the thing. So uh, I can rook wait. f6. So I wait. King h4. King h4, queen f2. King g4, queen g2, and I keep rotating like this because I do not want to allow your knight to jump out, I think. On the other hand, the computer says every mo legal move is a draw, so <laughs> except the blunders. So. What am I doing? This has, in fact, happened. Oh, it's a, sorry, it's a king on e8. Uh, maybe then we can try pushing f5 yes. with the king on g4. So let's say queen d5, king h3, queen f3. Mm -hmm. King h4, queen f2, king g4, queen g2. And then rook f6, rook g6, and king f5. I Good I plan. I I've lost track of what position you're talking about. Okay, let's say queen d5, <laughs> king, h3. king h3, uh, queen, queen f3, f3. Queen h4, queen f2, queen f2, king g4, mm -hmm. queen g2, then rook f6, let's say king e7, uh, rook g6. Mm -hmm. And I want king f5. And if king f7? F5 and E6, mm -hmm. and I am moving forward. Yes, and I am excited about it. Good for you. are you. not. <laughs> Good for you. Uh, what is happening here? I wonder. Okay, Magnus is uh, is about to play Rook F6. So 
Oh. And if I was small number 129, a bit premature, but um, he's not doing it badly. <laughs> so now king g4. What about knight h5? I, I saw it, but I didn't want to, to go under the pin. Ah, he played it, yeah. I, I want rook f6. Six. Ah, I didn't e see that. Five, King G5, oh, very good. Yeah. You woke up. <laughs> Wait, something happened. Oh my god, the position's now lost for black. According to table basis. The only move to draw after king h3 was queen b1 or queen c2. So, in fact, I was just thinking how the hell is the computer going to save it after rook f6 and turns out actually it was lost for the last three moves. But I mean, it looked very unpleasant uh, since the very beginning, like after h4. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, table base even suggests e6 here. Yeah. Like e6 is the best suggest, the best move. Yeah, it's already lost in 15 moves, so. So it's, it's apparently the only way to draw is queen But to you, I, uh, during the game you'll never, I mean after the yeah. game, even if you spend here uh, one hour, you'll never figure out why queen b1 or queen c2. It's well just let's just see. Queen d1, and again, it's, so it's only the spinning mechanism which works. Only queen e1. That's okay, the rook f6. A king e7 is the most logical move. Fair enough. Or queen f2, it says. Um. King g4, then queen g1, yeah? <coughs> yeah. Ah, but okay, let, let's do it. No, maybe after king g4 or queen d1. Because if you play queen g1, I I have this idea with rook g6, which I wanted to do. Let's see. No, it's still, still a draw. draw. Why? You're asking me. Okay, king... F5 is still a draw, because even though I have no checks, queen g1. Apparently this position is a draw. So all these rook g7, f6, uh, leading nowhere? Mm -hmm. I'm amazed why. I think he's uh, found e6, yes. He played e6. He's, uh, he's unbelievable. After, uh, what, eight, uh, almost eight hours? Yeah. That's incredible. Alejandro, ready for recap? Very ready. Very ready, okay. But this is the second table base thing in Magnus's games. His uh, sixth game against Fabi was also this great table base with, uh, you remember, the night oh, G1. Uh, yeah. Night G1 in the when Petrov, nobody so could understand exactly. why it's winning. He remembered something like night G1, then the bishop had to go to H7. Mm -hmm. I think queen b7 will be play. With the idea to check on h1. Oh no, but then. Isn't rook f7 clinching it? Yeah. So it's over. And now it even looks fairly human.
Yeah, that's going to play some something. What is going to do? Queen G6. Uh, rook up seven. Wins. Tactics just resigns on the spot after rook up seven. No, just sign is sign is gone. Yeah. And if queen h6, uh, you're in f5. Rook f7 played. After queen is 6 there is knight g7 and the pawn and game is lost for black. Yeah, we can just show that. If you take a knight g7 check. And white has the opposition, so. Can do it. Okay, can do it makes sense because after a night of six or night seven, it's not a check. But f5 should be winning, right, or not? Um, knight f6, knight f6, queen h6, and then queen g6. Yeah, f5. f5, uh, queen g2 or queen g1. Then uh, e7 check. Can eight. Uh huh. Knight uh, f6 uh, might might not be the best. He played f5, queen g1. Ah, the Knight king will just go to g8, and then it's just over. Yes. Oh my god, what a game. Okay, now it's clear. Magnus realizes he's winning it. I think... Well, Jan must have realized it a while back, but... Uh, You know what will be interesting to know uh, and uh, to ask Magnus, uh, like what he thought, yeah, resignation, uh, what he thought about this endgame from the very beginning when there were just two pawns? Uh, like, what are the odds, uh, like, what are the winning chances? Okay, let's yeah, listen to the players. No, but in general, yeah. Okay, I mean, in the, in the, in the blitz game. Yeah. I think instead of going to take the queen five, I'm going to just going to say eight five. I'm going to go. When you're defending, you're going to have some things. I'm going to take the queen five. I'm going to take the queen five. I mean, basically everything falls with it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, king h2 is too much. Right? Just the value of the time. Yeah, should be fair. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
it's okay. Uh, okay, the game that started yesterday and finished today <laughs> ended uh, in a favor of Magnus Carlsen, who is now leading in the match, the first win. And uh, we can see Magnus, uh, Magnus is really happy about this achievement, of course, after uh, almost... Uh, how well, just shy of eight hours. It's like uh, eight, almost eight, eight, eight hours. Eight hours. It'll be 4.30, so it'll be in... 12 uh, minutes, so it'll be seven eight minutes hours. and uh, uh, seven hours and uh, 50 48, minutes. 48, 48, 48 minutes. minutes. Just a crazy game which lasted 136 moves. A very intense game uh, with uh, many, many critical moments, uh, with ups and downs in the time trouble. But uh, really exciting, I hope, for the viewers and of course for us. Yes, uh, and Jan defended and defended and defended, but. Every time he was closest to a draw, he would uh, lose. He would get back into trouble again, and I think the only reason Magnus won is because he never stopped. Uh, he had every reason to stop at many moments, but he never stopped. He kept on going, 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 and finally, uh, a breakthrough happened. So a dramatic moment for the match, but uh, incredible, incredible play by Magnus. Sheer, sheer just determination. Uh, yeah, I don't think that uh, Jan will be forced to go to the press conference, but we'll definitely have a press conference with Magnus Carlsen. Uh, after the game, the players had a little chat. Uh, we couldn't, uh, we heard what they were talking about, but we couldn't understand what uh, exact mo moment they were referring to. Uh, the only like uh, clear conclusion was that uh, uh, both players thought that it was kind of a draw for a long period of time, uh, maybe even before the final phase, before this uh, end game. Uh, but uh, but yeah, Magnus kept on pressing, posing the problems. Yeah. And uh, and in the end, when uh, both of them were short in time, uh, they agreed that it was uh, quite difficult uh, to defend this position at the very end. Yeah. I'm out of words. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of words. It's uh, he went round and round with his rook and knight, never found the right way, and then he still tried one more time. Nobody could have blamed him when he stopped. He just managed. He rotated the knight to e2, brought the rook to d4, and thing. And all he never had had a decent think. He had to think on the road, so to speak. He had to think, uh, make a couple of moves, grab a minute of uh, thinking time. Uh, work out a new plan, try it. He did not have the time to work out any details, but uh, he still kept posing problems at the end. Putting the knight on g3, taking the king to g4, putting the rook on d5, all these things. You think the position is drawn, but uh, if you don't try like he does, you're not going to win it. So, um, yeah, just blown away. Yeah, I do think that Magnus, uh, that Jan really made a mistake when he um, uh, didn't change that pawn structure. I think uh, when he went for queen e4, then taking the pawn on h4, he didn't really have to do that, what we thought. And if he just kept on having uh, the same uh, type of position, uh, he would have drawn perhaps. Yes, but as it turned out, queen e4 was not even bad. Because he could have played yeah, queen h3 and it's a d still a draw, I think. But Jan kept on slip. You could see that his concentration faded when he allowed rook a4. After that, that he still has a draw is a miracle. But uh, when rook a4 happened and this h4 thing was getting controlled, that was already bad news. Luckily, he still, but with his queen, he could probe till f3 happened. But uh, it is so... You just have to sit for one minute, concentrate and break it through. And exactly one of the weaknesses of Jan is that he sometimes blitzes when he should be when he should have stopped. 
So, uh, well, I think he has improved a lot in this direction, mm -hmm. and we can also see it in this match and also earlier in the candidates. Uh, but still, sometimes, yeah, that happened because uh, Queen e4 he played very fast. Uh, then uh, also missing this moment was Rook a4. Yeah. Uh, not playing Queen h3. Maybe we were missing something because we were analyzing without the mm -hmm. engine's help. Uh, so it's also possible that we made some mistakes. But uh, we thought that uh, there was a way to to simplify the position, like an easier way. Yes. And um, as you said, he's improved a lot in this area. And in this match, he's actually uh, shown a different side. But that weakness lurks somewhere. and. Several moments he would swi after uh, achieving one kind of structure which holds, he would switch it for no reason. And this constant changing then means that you never know when it slips out. But um, I would have to admit that against there's only one player in the world against whom Jan would have lost this game today. And that, unfortunately for him, that guy was hitting opposite. Um, because as late as move 100 and something, Jan still had the draw. Yeah. But this guy just wouldn't stop. And that's the reason he won. Yeah, so you are, if you are chasing, uh, changing the pace and if you are changing the structure, uh, then it's actually more and more difficult because you have to adjust to new ideas. And uh, yes, you have to look for the new opportunities from your opponent's side. And uh, that's extremely difficult. It's like you solve one problem. Uh, then he, uh, then uh, you're getting yep. to another one and another one and another right. one and of course after eight hours of play uh, it's not just the uh, it's not a surprise that uh, he couldn't hold it unfortunately because the moves uh, which were in the end we actually I check the table base and the moves like queen c2, queen b1, why they were drawing and the move that he, he played was not a draw, it's completely unclear. So basically not to go until the, this edge when you have to make the only moves, better to try to, uh, let's say, uh, make it easier earlier. Yeah. Having said that, he, he saw one idea earlier, which was that king h4, queen f2, king g4, queen g2, king h3, queen f3. And sometimes when you don't have time to think, you just have to blindly follow one idea. Uh, easy to say, of course, but I mean that you don't know if it works or not, but you cling to that one idea. It worked, then I'm going to cling on to it. And, uh, but to do it again and again and again, people eventually doubt themselves and uh, change it. So, uh, as I said, Jan made these mistakes, but... Um, Today, he would have escaped against anyone else. I, I simply think that. Uh, okay, we will not go through, <laughs> through this game today. And uh, just, uh, Vishu, what would be your uh, suggestion, tip for Jan? What should he do? Tomorrow, he is playing with white pieces. Uh, should he try to bounce back immediately? Or should he kind of calm down, play according to the position? Uh, trying to pose some problems, like for example, he did in uh, in the previous game the day before yesterday. I don't know. The situations changed dramatically because his whole match strategy of um, uh, <coughs> not hurrying suddenly looks bad. He has to hurry now. So if he gets a quiet edge like yesterday, can he be happy to just roll along trying to converse this? This is nice on an even even score. It's not so nice when you're a point behind. But um, on the other hand, if you can fall to pieces now, you, if you uh, get angry and you try to come back with a bang, you could lose a second and third and then very quickly then it, it uh, ends. Mature. So it's a delicate balance. He has to have the faith that he has done his work. He can pose problems and uh, keep trying. I mean, even even Magnus, when he lost to Sergei Karyakin in game eight, in game 10. He went for a talent. He actually went for, the, went for the slightest uh, thing. It takes amazing courage to do it at that uh, point. And uh, even now I would take, I would put money on Sergei rather than Magnus for that game. But he did it. So. Yeah, though you know if he didn't win uh, the next game and uh, if uh, Sergei found this uh, repetition, the draw repetition, mm -hmm. then everybody would say, oh, why didn't he choose some uh, sharper yeah. opening uh, Why he decided to play for this? There is no way you can judge these things afterwards, but um, the only thing you can do is you can... 
but maybe he should sharpen his play or, or do something drastically different also because uh, the course of the match has already taken a very bad turn. I know because uh, in a sense my strategy was dramatic. I mean I lost a drawn game in round five in the uh, fifth game of my match. Suddenly I, fe I fell apart and uh, maybe he has to change the attitude. It's unpleasant for him that he has to do it tomorrow. But I think it'll be today. tough for Magnus. Well, that's right, today. <laughs> but it'll be unpleasant for Magnus as well. Uh, I mean, th there is no longer any chess advice or any coaching advice or any experience you can give. Now the only thing that Jan needs is courage. But maybe there is one positive thing about it. Uh, because now he shouldn't be so much afraid to make a mistake. So maybe the pressure released a little bit or not really? I mean, for Jan. How does it feel like? When I don't know. You can say you're released from the pleasure of the pressure of making one mistake, uh, making a mistake, but you still but you know still that. still want to win the, to win the match. Uh, but you don't have, um, in a tight match like this, against an opponent whose open who's openings are also quite unbreakable, um, there are not that many chances left. So I would say now the odds are hugely in Magnus's favor because the match was very tight. Uh, very disciplined, very tight. Again, very close to the Sergei Karyakin approach and the. I think that even here, Yandere might It's not a game; it's not free flowing. Uh, whereas for me, it was much harder to think of how he's going to come back against Gelf and then against Topalov. Because Topalov, I thought, actually, what could go wrong is that he, I could be lose more times, but I knew I would have chances uh, because he was trying in every game. Uh, here, the, the match is not giving that many big opportunities. I don't know what he's going to do. He'll have to be, he'll have to show qualities that he doesn't know he has, and that's how it is. Yeah, it's not the same playing the tournament and playing the match because no. in the tournament, uh, in the tournament at least you are facing different opponents and uh, mm -hmm. the strategies can be different. But here in the match, when you are basically playing against uh, uh, one opponent, so it's not like you are playing uh, 14 different classical games, but it's like you are playing one game yeah, <laughs> 14 over times over and over again. Yes, and um, but you know things can happen, he, but he has to. He, it won't happen unless he tries. But the rest is really up to him. You, I mean, it's pointless uh, pretending that there's some formula for this. You have to make up, make one up, right there. Sure. Uh, any expectations tomorrow? First move, which one? Today. Today. <laughs> 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 Uh, I don't know. I think uh, Jan will have to have a cold shower. He can't check anything. And if he can summon up the courage to play something. Otherwise, uh, another quiet game. And then he knows that from round eight onwards, he has to do it. Both strategies are valid. Uh, there is no right or wrong strategy here. But he'll have to figure it out on the way. I think that mainly depended on what they prepared yesterday. Because uh, if yesterday they were going to play, let's say, continue with e4, and now just because he lost one game, they are going to change it to d4 or c4, it's very unlikely. I think yes. that if, pre if they prepared e4, then they will go with e4. If they prepared, uh, like if they were at, uh, thinking about uh, changing the openings and uh, playing something else, then they, they would do something else tomorrow. Sure. So this uh, result will not affect... Uh, the opening choice, in my opinion. But of course, anything can happen. Maybe Jan wakes up tomorrow and then he says, okay, let's just do something else. Uh, yes. Today. <laughs> <laughs> we have. That's been the toughest thing to follow. Which day it is. Uh, do you have any updates about the press conference? Is it happening today? Oh, here we have the view. Oh, the journalists are already there. So it's not only we who are staying, but there are also journalists. Mm -hmm. They're on their way, yeah. They are on their way also. Magnus is coming. Yeah, tough day for everyone. Yes. But I enjoyed it. Sure, this kind of intense experience you don't, uh, you don't have every day. <coughs> this was uh, drama all the way. The only disappointing thing is that uh, there is no one there. Okay, Morris is here. Good. Good news. Uh, 
uh, Jan came to the press mm -hmm. conference. Well, okay, well done. Really, credits to Jan. After such a game, after the loss, he came to the press conference. So let's well, actually. Everyone, we will begin the post-game uh, conference after this Titanic cheer struggle. Cheer him up. Uh, simply incredible. The applause are is certainly deserved. Okay, now let's listen to the press conference. Thanks for watching. I see you not tomorrow, you know, but today. To stay out of the way of the cameras. <laughs> And also for the journalists, as a reminder, when you ask your questions, please keep your mask on uh, and do not touch the microphones at the side of the room. Uh, first question for you, Magnus. Uh, this, were you aware of the fact that this is the longest world championship game in history? Uh, and how do you feel at this moment, breaking through, winning this game after not having won uh, a game in, in over five years? Um, yeah, I think um, I had the previous record as well, probably, against Anand, uh, although that wasn't nearly as many hours. And uh, Actually, it was Korchnoi Karpov. Uh, it was Korchnoi Karpov still. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, the, um, the one where he tried to win with the bishop and wrong pawn, is that mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, okay, anyway... Um, um, that's um, yeah. Somebody told me after after the game. Obviously, I'm elated to um, to get this this um, result. Um, it was never easy, um, nor I mean, frankly, should it be. Um, uh, and uh, there was a lot of the same emotions as um, as the the game that I uh, that I won against uh, Kayakin, where it was just um, uh, a marathon there as well. So. Uh, but um, yeah, <laughs> obviously, um, obviously huge. Were you surprised in the opening? It seemed like he played this move B five, and you you froze for some time. Yeah, I did. I couldn't remember the lines properly there. So um, um, I, from from there on, I had to kind of uh, invent things uh, over the word. Um, any case, I, I think after that. Um, he was fair, fairly balanced um, most most of the time. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, congratulations on a tough fight. I know this is not the result you wanted, of course. But can you contextualize the struggle uh, that the game was and your feelings about it? Uh, yeah, well, basically, I felt like I uh, should try to play for more than a draw uh, after the opening because I felt like okay, the two bishops is nice, but uh, are nice, but I mean somehow I. Uh, thought like maybe five and d four instead of ninety four would would be interesting, but uh, it would be like very very unclear. So I mean in general it was pretty equal game, yeah. But uh, during the uh, first time trouble, I guess uh, you know it started to go a little bit wrong for me. And then of course uh, you know this uh, queen e four was unnecessary, just like taking g six king b seven, and this is like. Uh, very likely a draw, but I mean, uh, anyway, I would say that uh, Magnus managed to capitalize on very few chances he got. Uh, he, he, he got this game, so that's like um, uh, very nice of him, but uh, in general, uh, I believe even this queen against uh, knight, in, uh, knight in rook and two pawns should be a draw, but yeah, once you play it's basically blitz, uh, it's, you know, if you don't know the correct setup uh, as black and uh, if you uh, maybe misplace your queen a little bit, it becomes tricky already. Can you speak to the level of fatigue that you feel at the moment after such a long game? Well, uh, obviously it wasn't the most pleasant game, but uh, I mean, uh, anyway, uh, life goes on, so that's not a big deal. Magnus, you're, you're famously fit, but this definitely tests your endurance. Um, sure. Um, but um, I think that's that's the way it is. As I said, it shouldn't be easy in a world championship match, and uh, um, you um, you have to um, to try for every uh, every chance, uh, no matter how how small it is. Um, and uh, part of it is it was uh, by design at some point that I, I thought I should um, I thought I should make the game as long as possible, uh, so that we would both be uh, as tired as possible when the critical moment uh, moment came and yeah that turned out to be a good strategy don't want to ask about too many moves but there was a moment in the game you played rook d1 when you could have played rook c2 
to C2, uh, which is after he played Bishop B2, uh, did you see this move uh, as a possible winning chance for you, or, or you, did you think about the move? Sorry, so sorry, what was that? So I played rook d1. You played rook c5, you played queen d6, you played rook d1, and you had rook c2 attacking his bishop, and and uh, you had a chance after bishop a3 uh, to play for uh, knight f4 and rook d7, etc. It was a, was a strong attack. Not, not f4, if he takes on b4. Uh, the queen's on d6, so his queen's under attack after knight f4. Yeah, so... Uh, and then rook d7? Take rook d7. the queen. Yeah, okay. Uh, rook d7. Yeah, it could no, be. Uh, that was not, not on my, my radar. Mm. I was trying to play. Um, no, I mean, I, as a matter of fact, when when I uh, when I went for, for this uh, uh, rook d1, I just missed queen d7. Uh, and then takes. I, I thought I would be in time to go rook d4 and and eliminate those pawns. So um, that was more an, o an oversight than anything anything else. Um, maybe if I'd seen that that didn't work, I would have gone for the uh, for the other option. But yeah, it was far far from obvious just to to give up your whole uh, queen side like that. But yeah, maybe it was. I don't know. All right, we will go to the questions by the journalists. Please. Hello, uh, Rakesh from chess.com India here. Firstly, congratulations, Magnus. You're the first player in recent history to win a world championship game over two, two days, because the game started yesterday. And my question is, this was your 51st game at world championship like in a match. So how much of that experience helps in these long games and wins? Mm, I, I feel like... Today was more about experience from from playing long games in, in general, but uh, um, yeah, I would say um, uh, the game today, yeah, it had little to do with uh, world championship experience or or pressure. I, I don't don't particularly think so. Ulf from Chess24, congratulations to Magnus, you won game six today, also against Vichy, uh, two times you won game six, and historically in world championship matches, game six has seen a high, unusually high number of decisive results. Is there something about getting to this point in the match that pushes these decisive results, do you think? Well, that's uh, news to me. Okay. <laughs> so, um, Yeah, I think it's pretty random since a lot of matches have been have been a lot longer as well, um, and so it's not about be it being a midpoint of of the match. Um, maybe it's uh, yeah, I I don't know. I think it's pretty random. Okay, thank you. My client with chess .com. My question is primarily for Magnus, but Jan, you can step in if you'd like. Um, this game was almost like its own mini series, and the first episode was that first time control where you didn't have an ink permit. What was the mood like inside the room? Could you feel a little bit of extra tension, you being in this situation for the first time, Magnus? Oh, for sure. Um, but I, I think that's the way it's supposed to be. Um, there should be that al added element of uh, intrigue with um, with the clock. So obviously, it's not it's not entirely pleasant, but um, yeah, I think it's. Um, I think it's appropriate. Um, yeah. Uh, Nicolas from Aftenposten in Norway. Um, this was a very long game. Does it give you extra pleasure, minus to to win in su after such a long time? Yes. <laughs> Required a lot of precision. Uh, how much were you able to calculate, and how much were you? Uh, did you need to rely on intuition in a position like that? No. Yeah, I would say the last few moves before the time control, I was mainly guessing. Um, I, I mean, I I had three minutes left, and then I was hit with a with a bit of a nasty surprise, and that I hadn't hadn't seen. So there was not much time. My question is for both the players. One of the most critical moments of the game was when Yan played Rook C8. 
and Magnus took on c8. Uh, there was also a possibility to play b4 at that point. Jan, why did you decide to play rook c8 there? Uh, and did you think the position, that was a good decision? And Magnus, what is your opinion on that? Well, rook c8 was, uh, I believe, a little bit unnecessary, but uh, I guess uh, Black has a very nice play there, so it, uh, at some point it became quite chaotic, but uh, I guess uh, rook c8 is a nice way to, I don't know, to complicate things a little bit, because I don't think Black is taking any serious risk. Uh, yeah, but uh, once it came to the time trouble, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I believe it was a many ways to improve, so clearly rook c8 is not, uh, is not a problem. Um, in this game. Um, yeah, I, I was happy to see Rook C8 in general. Uh, as you said, B4 was a move. Uh, there were probably probably others as well. I uh, didn't particularly feel that I was uh, that I was better. Um, and uh, Rook C8 gave me at least a, a target. Uh, I I felt like we were both risking a bit, um, but I thought maybe Black was risking a bit more. Um, and um, it meant that we would um, would get a serious struggle, which I was happy with. And in the final position, when you had rook, knight, and two pawns, it, the table bases show it's a draw, but did you feel like you would win that anyway? No, I thought it was more likely to be, be uh, a draw. Um, but once I got the knight to g3 and the rook to d5 f5, I got very optimistic. Um, probably it was still a, was still a draw, um, but yeah, generally it's 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 a draw. But uh, um, it's easy to um, sort of be lulled into uh, a, a false sense of security there. Uh, as you saw in the game, things can can e easily go awry. Chess.com again, this question for both players. We can start with Jan, please. Uh, how much will you review this game tonight? There's so many moves that are worthy of attention, or will you review it at all? Uh, well, uh, I guess, uh, me, it, you know, it wouldn't take long. So, obviously, uh, I think uh, from both sides, you know, play was really far from excellence, from excellency, but, uh, yeah, what to do? Uh, um, there will be... Uh, there will be a time and a place for, for that, and I don't think it's today. Just two more questions, please. Hi, um, Theo Waits for Lee Chess. Um, first of all, congratulations on such a grueling win, um, and thank you both for taking the time to, to be here. Um, I have a question about uh, how, how late this game has ended, and in particular, whether you both have um, a kind of daily schedule that this late of ga lateness of game will have impacted, such as, you know, we will be going to sleep later today, essentially, uh, putting you out of a routine. Yeah. Uh, could I please pass, uh, you know, the first, uh, the first answer to Magnus? Um, yeah, uh, I think um, um, such a long game um, sort of messes up everybody's schedule. Um, but it's um, it's why we're here, so it's fine. Sure, thank you both. The question is to Magnus. Uh, I'm Amrita from Chessbiz India. Uh, very similar on his lines that how, d uh, I was very hungry when your game was going on, so how do you manage this food thing, you know, uh, for seven hours you can't have dinner? Can you elaborate? Yeah, I was running on fumes at the end, so <laughs> it's not easy. In lieu of a question from Twitter, I'll ask the players one last question. Jan, is it just one game, or, or and how do you bounce back? Uh, hopefully in style. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, well, uh, I mean, sometimes you make mistakes, and uh, sometimes it's, you know, that's pretty human, if you, you know, that's a pretty human thing, so uh, I don't think uh, you can um, aim for... Uh, playing, let's say, four consecutive games without winning or losing. Yeah, it's like a part of the game, so let's see. And final question to you, Magnus. Your experience, how significant is a win like this? Um, I, I mean, the match has been deadlocked so far, so any any win that I can 
What I can get is great, um, but it's it's far from over. Well, we are over now, and thank the players and thank you all for your patience. Next game, game seven, will be tomorrow at 16.30. Thank you all, and have a good night. It's Expo 2020, and the world is here as well. If everybody in the world loved everybody in the world, what a glorious world this could be. It's the culture. It's Expo 2020, and the world is here as well. If everybody in the world loved everybody in the world, what a glorious world this could be. It's the culture, it's the music, the artwork. If it's the people. Deutschland by night. I was just looking for myself and then Expo came and it makes me emotional. Come on and join us. A new world is just beginning. And it's right here at Expo.